the LV, I'm a Raider. Ain't shit you can tell me, I'm a Raider. Ain't shit you can tell me, I'm so nation. No matter the location, from OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Ain't shit you can tell me, I'm a Raider. Ain't shit you can tell me, I'm so nation. No matter the location, just got the 83 feel, it's time to run it back. We struck gold, we in gold, and I'm running back. Josh Jacobs, Jack, he a specialist. He personifies commitment to excellence. He our next Bobo, he our next Allen. I'm watching receivers drown on Mullen Allen. <laughs> yeah, y'all know the trail was Littleton in the middle. This shit just got real. Look, we Super Bowl bound. I'm just an honest man. Chuck you back to return us to the promised land. Rest in peace, Al. You the GOAT, bro. In the field, had Jerry West, you the logo. In the mall, I pledge allegiance to Oco, LA Coliseum, and the Legion. In the mall, I pledge allegiance to Oco, LA Coliseum, and the Legion. From OAK, LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Ain't shit you can tell me, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You are watching the Raiders Report, and today's show presented by my good friends and the best workout supplements on the market, Panda Subs. If you're trying to get into better shape, hey, I don't blame you. I mean, it's we're almost in beach season, right? So go to pandasups.com, but you gotta use code Raider Nation because if you don't, I don't really know what you're doing. Because if you don't, you're not gonna save 40% off. So again, pandasups.com. Code Raider Nation to save 40% off. All right, y'all, let's go back to school. How would you rate the Raiders draft so far from a scale from 0 to 100? You're watching the Raiders report, and we're going to be live literally the rest of the 2021 NFL draft. The Raiders have picks in rounds 5 at 162, 167, a sixth round pick at 200, and then since they decided to trade up for Trevon Merrick in round 2, they also have a pick. 230 overall in round seven. So we're going to be breaking it all down for y'all on today's episode here. So how would you grade it? And I want you to rate it. Zero to 100. I got NGDV reverse says a 90. Clint Stabe's going to go with an 86. A 94 from Baby Yabama. 90 from Freddie Osanya. 25 from Christopher Lucero. 85 from Carlos. 75 from Vortex. Hank Moore is going to go with an A minus. Chris Rodriguez, 85. Esteban Narajo is going to go 82. Jay Avilia, an 80 grade. If this is the first time you guys have ever come across the Raiders report, we do have 333 people watching right now. We are an interactive YouTube channel. I am not one person. We know damn well if you go to the Coliseum, which I can't wait to see what the heck the Raiders Allegiant Stadium is going to be like, the atmosphere. When you get 80,000 people screaming, it's the loudest stadium in the NFL. I don't care what anybody says. That's how I want these comments to be. So when I ask you to go down in the comments, I want you to be act like an actual Raiders game. I know that you guys can be loud. Alright, continue to spam the chat here. Who do you want the Raiders to draft next in round five? 162 overall, and then again at 167 overall. If you're looking for some names to potentially think about, I mean, right now we're sitting there at pick 138. It's the Dallas Cowboys, at least that's what I'm seeing. Actually, it's the Bengals. They ended up going with Deonta Smith, ECU offensive tackle at 139. But if you could, Jeremy, can we go through Tom Downey's best available players? That way some of the people watching right now have an opportunity to see who exactly could be on the board here for the Las Vegas Raiders? I mean, you got somebody like Hamza Nasir Deleen, safety from Florida State. I know some people were worried about his size. I don't see the Raiders going that direction. Deonta Brown could actually be an option here for the Raiders if you're looking for a potential, we'll say, Richie Incognito replacement in the future. Brevin Jordan is actually a tight end that I know the Raiders are high on. They met with him before. Kenneth Gainwell, if the Raiders decide to go a running back, that could be the end of somebody like Jalen Richard. Davion Nixon, still out there. He's a little bit of an undersized defensive tackle. I knew a lot of people had some round two hype on him. I thought that was a little bit too high. I actually thought he was going to go in round three, round four, but he is still on the board. Trey Smith, another offensive guard that I know the Raiders are really high on. And anytime you get Tennessee... That's that John Gruden type of connection there. Jamar Johnson, if you guys have watched the Raiders report, you know that I love me some Jamar Johnson. And the fact that he's still available here, getting close to round five, that's some phenomenal value. Marvin Wilson, defensive tackle from Florida State, a name to keep in mind. Ardarius Washington, he's a good safety from TCU. A little bit undersized, but could potentially you pair up Merrigan Washington. It's not the route I would go, but it is something to consider. Stone Force over here, offensive tackle from Florida. David Moore is a good offensive guard from Grambling State. And then Quincy Roche, edge rusher from Miami. 
Also, shout out to the new guy, Jack. I want everyone to go down in the comments section and spam Jack because he just hooked me up here with some fresh new brewskis. And we're ready to get the party started. I hope you guys are too. Day three. So I want you to like the video if you love the Raiders draft so far. Currently, we're at, uh, what, 107 likes? 107 likes, 400 people watching. Let's get the 500 likes on this video. So the reason why we always tell people to like the vid, because I get it, not everyone can super chat, but there are ways that you can help the show, and the ways that you can do it are by subscribing, by liking the videos, by commenting. The reason that I can keep this show 100% free, and I want to be able to keep it for free, because let's be honest, like the fact that we get to talk Raiders football, interact on a daily basis, that's what life's about. 2020 was a shitty year, and the fact that I couldn't be around some people, the fact that it's been almost two years since I've seen some of my best friends that are Raiders fans, because, like, that's what tailgating was all about. That's what going out and meeting people was all about. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and like the video. Appreciate the fireball just brought in here by my man Harrison Graham. So let's continue to walk through some of the other picks that have just happened here in case you guys are just tuning in and don't know what's happened in the draft. At pick 137 overall, the Seattle Seahawks, they ended up going with the cornerback position, which shouldn't really surprise many people. Cornerback was one of the bigger needs for Seattle, considering the fact that they ended up losing some of their starters here, especially a guy like Shaquille Griffin, who I did like a lot. He ended up going to the Jacksonville Jaguars, but that's the Seattle Seahawks pick at 137. Then you got Josh Ball, offensive tackle from Marshall. Round four, pick 138, headed to the Dallas Cowboys. The Cincinnati Bengals, they selected East Carolina offensive tackle. Deonta Smith, who, again, you're just trying to add a little bit more depth here, and this is day three, so I will just say this. Not that there can be bad picks, but I'm not going to knock really any of the picks at this point. This is the part of the draft where you're looking for extra depth. If you find somebody who you think has some higher upside, then that's the route that you go, or you know, you're looking for somebody that can contribute on special teams right away. But those are the most recent picks that I personally have here in the NFL draft. So let's hear it here. Which has been your favorite pick so far? Was it Alex Leatherwood at 17 overall? We'll give shout outs, by the way. Was it Travon Merrick at 43 overall? Maybe it was Malcolm Kuntz at 79 overall. Could have been the pick 80 and Divine Diablo. That's probably the best name so far. Or... No, well, I guess those are all the picks here. So who's so far your favorite pick? I want you to comment it below. And if you don't know how to spell the names, we got them right over here. We got Leatherwood, Merrick, Kuntz, and then Diablo. If you just want to type AL for Alex Leatherwood, TM for Trevon Merrick, MK for Kuntz, or DD for Divine Diablo. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the double Ds, but I love the value of Trevon Merrick here at 43. Sure, you had to trade up. Sure, you didn't have your fourth round pick anymore. But if you're looking for value... I love Divine Diablo, and I love the, the value here of Trevon Merrick. Those are so far my two favorite picks. Let's start giving some shout-outs here to the people. What do we got? We got um, Trevon Merrick from 604 Videos, Alex and Trevon from Freddy. We got Gabe is going to go with O-R or Z. I don't know what that means. Uh, Malcolm Kuntz from Untouchable 1960. That's my dude. And he's going to go Trevon Merrick. Trevon Merrick from Hank Moore. Great picks from Lil Baby Surge. TM again from John Jones. CJ Jones also going to go TN. We got a TM from King Beast. Go down in the comments section below and let me know what has been your favorite pick thus far by the Las Vegas Raiders. So this is the name of the game here. The longer I can stay live for is if we get some viewers and if we get a lot of likes on this video and if we go ahead and super chat. If you do super chat, we will do our best to show you all on screen. So for a $5 super chat, we're going to drink some beers. A $10 Super Chat will spin the roulette wheel. And then a $20 Super Chat, I'll take a shot of Fireball. I know we got a bunch of different things. At least I think that's what the values were. Whatever the values are, um, Jeremy, I want you to cut the prices in half because it's day two. So find that listicle. Find what the prices are. I want you to cut all the prices in half because I'm trying to get weird here on day three. So subscribe. If you guys are looking for everything going on around the Las Vegas Raiders, hit that big red button that says subscribe. And if you already subbed, take the link that you see below, youtube.com slash Raiders Report, and send it to your friends. The more subs we get on the channel, the more wild and crazy things we can do. And I'm hoping that there comes a time where we can actually get – to like two videos a day, three videos a day. I mean, you guys can see right now when there's big time sporting events, we do sometimes do two, three videos a day. I mean, I was here until like 2.30 in the morning last night. I dropped a, a Raiders video probably at like 1.30 a.m. and then got up at 7, took Chuck out for a walk, and then I came in here to work and I was here by like 8.15, 8.30, ready to rock and roll. 
We love we love what we do. We know we have an awesome fan base here, and we're committed to excellence. If you're committed to excellence, hit that big red button that says subscribe. So we got 609 people watching right now, 260 likes. If you guys could, please go ahead and like the video. There have been actually a few picks that have come across, and I'll just shout them out so, Jeremy, don't even worry about it. The Rams, they took UCF wide receiver slash tight end Jacob Harris. That was the next pick that ended up going off the board, which now means – that the who's on the clock the Green Bay Packers that pick 142 are on the clock so we have 20 picks to go until we hit the Raiders pick here I got King B spamming Raider Nation for life Zach Bergen says yo what up my man Bruce Davis appreciate you watching can I get a Raiders in the comments can I get everyone watching right now to just start spamming Raiders Raider Nation for life because we are also live on our chat sports live channel over there and they're doing pretty solid numbers but I want to try to compete okay what I'm trying to get here is the more people that just spam Raiders that tells YouTube that this is a fun show. Uh, I got Omar spamming daddy. If that's really what you want to go ahead and spam, that's up to you. But if you go ahead and spam Raiders right now, I'll give you guys a shout-out because I appreciate you watching the show. We got <clears throat> Mike Goody, James Moore, I-I-E-X-W-X-V-Y, Chris Rodriguez, King Beast, Lib Surge, Mike Goody, Grizz, Hank Moore, 604 Videos, Edward Sabia, Raider Bain, Aaron Raider, Gabe Busio, Vortex, Christopher Tolbert, Tim Durante, Chris, Carlos Spencer. Keep them coming in here. We got Freddy Garcia, Bob Carosa, Esteban Narajo, KC the Sledge Storyteller. One more shout out here is going to go to Juan Hernandez. Appreciate you guys watching the Raiders report. And perfect, right on time there. Drog Bear sending a $5 super chat that just said, Raiders. Every $5 Super Chat, I'll drink some beers with you guys. If you're over 21, don't be afraid to crack one open with me because everyone knows if you go to a Raiders event and you're the only one drinking, you're doing it wrong. So cheers to uh, D-Rog Bear. appreciate you guys watching the show. We also had actually another Super Chat come in, which we will get to here in a sec. But the next pick was Royce Newman, offensive guard from Ole Miss. He ends up going to the Green Bay Packers. What you guys will be able to see on the bottom of the screen is also the last two picks of the NFL draft. So if you're trying to stay up to date what's going on, that's what you see down there. The roulette wheel also $15 will spin it. You can uh, basically just get me to play a whole bunch of different games here. $20 Super Chat is Clout Shoutout, which is basically like if you have an Instagram, if you have a Twitter that you really want to be able to push, maybe you have a company or a product. I FaceTimed with uh, someone like two days ago. They have black kitchen knives, and they're going to start, I think, sponsoring here on the Raiders Report. But they found out because I told them that. So if you guys have a product you want to get on the show, please go ahead and do it. If you want to come on the Raiders Report on Tuesday, we are keeping that one at $250. So we had four people send $250 Super Chats on on day one that show got absolutely wild so if you want to come on the show like literally like zoom in and we're going to talk Raiders $250 super chat that's the offer I've been given by my bosses here at chat sports and as always we got the fireball shots ready to go but you know what Jeremy let's make it 25 bucks for a fireball shot I think that's a little bit easier and more attainable and I'm trying to trying to loosen up the the, the pipes here a little bit all right the next super chat coming in here is from Cole Cook what up my man what's up Mitch is Ferrell or Crosby gonna start um, I actually think you're going to see a little bit of a rotation here. Obviously, it's going to be Yannick Ngakwe. He's going to be your main starter. And then I don't really, I think I'll still bet money on Max Crosby having more snaps than Cleveland Furl does this upcoming season. But I'll also say this. When Max is on the outside, you can also bump somebody in like Cleveland Furrell on the inside of defensive tackle because he did really well last season in terms of run stopping. The Raiders, though, with a Gus Bradley style of defense, they're not really going to blitz all too often. So they're really going to try to keep those guys up front but they're going to try to keep them very fresh. Like That's why Bradley doesn't blitz all the time because he wants to have a lot of depth on the defensive line, which then when guys are fresh, they're a lot more you know, prolific pass rushers. So I think you're going to see a lot more snaps from Crosby. He's still the better edge rusher, but Furl's the better run stopper. Super Chat coming in here from Jay Perez. What's up, my dude? Um, what about Marlon uh, of USC in the fifth round? So at this point, again, you're looking for solid players, and that's what he is. Can he contribute on special teams? Potentially. Let me try to pull up some of my, my um, draft notes on him because Tom, Tom and I, we went through, we looked at a whole bunch of different prospects. We try to give as much analysis as we possibly can on some of these guys. So once my computer loads, I'll give you some more analysis on Marlon because we do have a, a lot more information to be able to give on some of these players here. Let's go to Tim Durante in the meantime while my computer loads, and it's just really, really struggling right now, which is 
you know, pretty uh, pretty upsetting, actually. We got Tim Tim Durante. Who? The Raiders, they just traded up. All right, the Raiders, they're on the clock, so they just traded up. The Jets swap with the Raiders. The Jets end up receiving 162 and pick 200 with the Jets. So the Raiders here, they're actually they're going to go with a cornerback, and I actually like the pick a lot. It's a pretty interesting player from top to bottom here. So, again, what we're doing right now with the Las Vegas Raiders, they are officially on the clock after trading up with the New York Jets. So, let's go to that real quick. This pick here is presented by Panda Subs. The Las Vegas Raiders have traded up, and uh, we'll see who they ultimately go with here. They're, it looks like they're going to go with a cornerback, but this pick, once again, is presented by Panda Subs. If you guys are looking for the best workout supplements on the market, the one place and one place only to shop is pandasubs.com. Use code RaiderNation where you can save 40% off. With the 143rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders have selected Tyree Giuseppe Safety from Missouri. So if you're looking for somebody that can play in a lot of different styles right here, that's what you're going to get in him. He's a little bit in terms of a more of an undersized safety compared to somebody that you just went with Divine Diablo, but it's pretty clear here. The Raiders are trying to for find a little bit more depth, especially in that secondary. Now he can play safety. I believe he can also play a little bit of nickel here, but when you're looking at for the Raiders defense, I don't really think this is very good news for somebody like somebody like Amik Robertson. That's glaring. It's also another major red flag for somebody like a Tanner Muse. But if you're the Raiders and you're really just trying to continue to be able to build here, that's what this pick is. Height, 5'11". The weight, 207 pounds. Also, a pretty good athlete. When you look at the numbers, 46 tackles, 4 pass breakups, 0 interceptions, the 58.3% completion percentage. The Raiders had this guy pretty high up on their board. I know this is somebody that they were intrigued by, which is why they decided to go up and try to get him. So the Jets, they swapped picks with the New York Jets. The Jets ended up getting now 162 overall and 200. So now the Raiders no longer have those two picks. So now you have somebody like Tyree Giuseppe again who is going to be able to fill in here, get a little bit more roles going in, and we'll see how he ultimately fits here with this defense. I think he could also be a pretty solid special teams player. So you had at pick number one, Alex Leatherwood. That's kind of what started all this off. But then I really like the value in Trevon Merrigan. From what it looks like right now, the Raiders are really trying to find some versatile players because Merrigan's going to be your starting free safety. I know there's reports out there that he could split some time with somebody like Jeff Heath. But he's going to be the starter. Malcolm Kuntz is an edge rusher that I like a lot. Excuse me. A lot of good bend there from the guy from Buffalo. Mayock said he has a comparison of Yannick Ngakwe. If you get another Yannick, it's a phenomenal pick. Divine Diablo. I've heard a lot of comparisons of Cam Chancer. That's a little bit too high for me. But if you're looking for how the Raiders could use somebody like Diablo, I do think it would be very comparable to the way that the Seahawks use somebody like Chancellor, which is also now going to give you the ability to have Jonathan Abram come up in the box a little bit more and play a Jamal Adams style of role where he's just going to blitz, blitz, blitz and really try to get after the runner. So in round four, pick 143, the Las Vegas Raiders decided to trade up, and as a reminder, they don't have picks 200 anymore, so it's just 143, 167, and then round 7, 230. So they no longer have that round 6, 200 pick, which you guys do see on screen. So again, they ended up going here with Giuseppe. Uh, Giuseppe, I believe is how exactly how you pronounce it. But he's a good safety overall. So what do you guys think about this pick? The Raiders were aggressive. So again, you're looking at back-to-back -back drafts where the Raiders saw a player that ended up sliding down the board. They ended up trading up for somebody like Tanner Mews last year at number 100. This isn't quite as high in terms of a uh, pick, if you will. But what I want you to do, go down in the comments section right now, and I want you to grade the pick. A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know how y'all are feeling. I'm going to give it a B grade. I like the aggressiveness here of the Raiders. I also like the fact that they're trying to fix their secondary, which is where a lot of the problems are. One more time here. Grade the pick A, B, C, D, or F. All right, y'all. It's Super Chat time. Do you thunk we could make a play to take Jabril Cox? He's already gone, man. He, he went to the Dallas Cowboys. I was hoping that he would have fell, but unfortunately he didn't fall far enough to the Las Vegas Raiders. So a pretty interesting pick there by, by the Raiders. I do think that. And I'm definitely curious to see, you know, what y'all have to say about it. But once we get the trade details, we'll be able to show you. But again, that you're looking at another safety here 
for the Raiders. And not that I'm ultimately too, too surprised. I mean, we anticipated them to do a lot of different things in terms of really trying to be able to build that defense. And I want to be able to give you guys some more notes on him before we get into our actual cut here for, for the channel. But let me let me get situated here. Let me get Jeremy situated as well. And then we'll give you, you know, a little bit more information, if you will, in terms of what the Raiders could potentially do here at pick number, you know, 20, uh, what is it, 143. But, Al, I appreciate what's going on. Go down in the comments right now and get your grades in while we get set up for a nice little cut action and that we can put here on the Raiders channel. So I want to get a few more notes on Giuseppe. So you took care of offensive tackle. We're going to get into a cut, yes. We have a safety. Then the Raiders also, you know, you could potentially look at a cornerback defensive tackle or a center. I don't really know if that's the route I potentially would go with, but for the Raiders here, you got a player who, let me pull up my notes. Man, my computer is just not working. It's pretty frustrating at this point. I got Henry Gonzalez also just sent in a super chat. It said, can you explain what happened with Davion Nixon? I'm just simply going to guess that teams are a little bit worried that he's undersized because, let's face it, that's what he is. And in a Gus Bradley style of system, yeah, we just had a $50. So you know what? Let's go to the $50 super, and then we'll get into the cut. I think that's the way to do it because it's from Alejandro, who's just one of the wildest dudes in the game. I mean, you want to talk about dedicated. Alejandro, you, you got my number, so if you want to come on the show, you can do it. What it do, my boy? Uh, B-Day on Monday turning the big 27. Everyone go down in the comments, start spamming happy birthday to Alejandro, who is definitely one of the MVPs on this show. And you know what? I'm, uh, I'm totally down for some shots. I'll take one. We did a, a news break one. So we're about to get into a cut now for the actual channel. So Alejandro Martinez, what to do, my boy? Everyone spam HBD. Show my dude some love. Uh, we got 604 videos. Reserve card drummer J. Ray McLaur also says happy birthday. Hawk Majorum, King Beast. Continue to shout out my guy. Cheers to you, Alejandro. Uh, you got to message me, though, because you sent in a really big super chat on Monday, and I want to be able to get you on the show. So we're going we're gonna to Skype you in if you don't want to do it. Got some red solos. Oh, nice. Yeah, thanks. Uh, used to play baseball. Not anymore. But I am going to be practicing with some uh, Raiders guys in terms of softball. But, again, Alejandro, appreciate you. Jeremy's going to come on here and take a shot here. So we're going to let him get in, and then we will talk a little bit more about Tyree Giuseppe in terms of uh, – the overall pick but I am curious what you guys have to say go down in the comments and let me know here's Jeremy oh so Jeremy's gonna take some fireball with me which I'm happy because I had to take two shots of vodka on our chat sports channel and that just absolutely ruined me it killed me I can't do it Raiders. <laughs> oh man he's all he's all swagged out with his Adidas stuff I absolutely love it Chugs is one of my guys here at Chat Sports. There's uh, no doubt about it. Uh, Jack Kenya, we will get to your super chat, and we'll get to some more super chats coming up here in about eight to nine minutes once we get the game plan here going forward. But I would say, you know, if we could pimp out Panda Subs, pimp out, you know, Black Sunday a little bit because they're guys that have helped us out a bunch here on today's show. Unfortunately for them, I mean, we've just been making trades left and right, and it's been really, really chaotic here at Chat Sports. But you know what, man? Sometimes that's what you're going to get. We got Mike, Ace Ortiz, Edward Sabirio, Navy on Let Black Lion Supreme, all spamming HBD. And then again, if you have a super chat that you want to be able to get on the show, we'll get to it here in about 10 minutes. I just want to give you guys a little bit more analysis on the Tyree Giuseppe pick and why I thought the Raiders decided to trade up for him. So when Jeremy gives me the thumbs up, we'll get into a little bit more analysis here on the Raiders report. Raider Nation, what's going on? You are watching the Raiders Report, and this show presented by my good friends and a diehard Raider fan who owns Panda Subs. Head on over to pandasubs.com where you can use code Raider Nation. Can you remember that for me? Code Raider Nation to save 40% off. So the Raiders coming into round five, they had picks 162, 167. They also had some other picks in round six and round seven. But you know what they did? They saw a guy that they liked a lot, and they decided to trade up with the New York Jets. So they gave up pick 162 and pick 200 to trade up into the fourth round to take safety from Missouri, Tyree Giuseppe. So you can look at the height here. 5'11", 
weight 207 pounds. According to Tom Down, he had him as 111th overall, so this is very good value here. Safety, the number nine overall. When you in terms of grade, again, a fourth round grade. The numbers, 46 tackles, zero interceptions, four pass breakups. I also want to break down what he did in 2019. 50 tackles, four tackles for a loss, a sack, seven pass breakups. 2018, 48 tackles, one and a half tackles for loss, a sack, and one pass breakup. So when I think about this in terms of age, only 22 years old, he is a senior, but he is about to turn 23 right before the season. He played a lot of free safety at Missouri, some box, but not a ton. If you're looking for somebody who can also potentially be that backup to somebody like Trevon Merrig, that's what you're going to get here. Not sure if he's a single high in the NFL, but I do like him as a split safety because he's going to be able to give you a little bit of versatility. I liked him more in slants, okay, and the stat sheet suggests, but he's not enough as a deep guy, so maybe you want to move him around a little bit here. In terms of a uh, testing, just above average testing, what you can see on screen, the 40-yard dash time at 4.42, which I actually do like it. Somebody that's 5'11", 207 pounds, the arms, the hands, the wingspan, pretty solid overall. The 4.4340 is great. Not the best vert at 35.5 or the cone drill. They were definitely poor. His 900 broad, that's very, very bad. The shuffle is also poor. He flies down to hit, which is definitely, I think, one of his best thing here. When I think about overall in terms of how he can fit, He's going to be a very good special teams player. Now, do you trade up to round four to find somebody that's a solid special teams player? No, maybe not. But he is going to give you a little bit of versatility, again, at the safety position. So when I look at the Raiders and I really think about how they were trying to get better on defense, they did not like what they had at safety. And it's really as simple as that. I also think these type of moves here are a bad thing for a guy like Daniel Levitt. I don't know if it's a bad thing for Jeff Heath because Heath is still going to get his playing time because he's a veteran and they like what he can do on special teams. But his playing time hits a little bit. I think a guy like Amik Robertson, this is bad news for him. It's also bad news for somebody like Isaiah Johnson who when the Raiders drafted Johnson, they wanted him to play corner, but there was some uh, rumors out there that he could also potentially line up as a safety. I do think that's bad news for him. But when you look at how the Raiders have drafted, drafted so far, I mean, they've taken three safeties with their first five picks. So a lot of people were hating on the Alex Leatherwood pick, which I was included. But if you could tell me right now, you could take Leatherwood and Merrick, and those would have been your first two picks. Dude, I'm totally okay with that. So I am going to give Mayock, I am going to give Gruden a lot of credit for going with the guy that they wanted and rolling the dice on somebody like Merrick, who ended up falling to them, trading up actually at 43. Malcolm Kuntz is a very good edge rusher out of Buffalo in terms of high upside. His floor does scare me a little bit, but the upside is definitely there. Divine Diablo, this might be one of my most favorite picks here in this draft. He's a big old dude at safety, who's kind of the exact opposite of somebody like uh, Tyree Giuseppe and then round four 143 the Raiders traded up with the New York Jets to take the safety out of Missouri so what do we do here at the Raiders report we are an interactive YouTube channel so I want you to go down in the comments right now and I want you to grade the pick a, B, C, D, or F I'm sitting somewhere around an A minus grade because when you look at Tom Downey's big board 111 overall the fact that he slid 30 picks past where Tom thought he could potentially get drafted that's eye-opening to me do I think it was maybe the one of the biggest needs you know maybe not because you already drafted two safeties however it, this is a type of safety that's a lot different than Divine Diablo in fact I would almost argue almost polar opposites but in terms of being aggressive that's what he's really good at. So zero career interceptions, that's not very good. But too fast downhill sometimes, by the way, 15.4% missed tackle rate, which obviously isn't great. But if you're watching the show right now, go down in the comments section and let me know, A, B, C, D, or F. Now, if y'all are looking for the best Raiders coverage on YouTube, I don't like to brag very often, but I am very proud to say that we work our freaking asses off here at the Raiders Report. I'm also very happy to say that we have the most interactive audience. I'm not just going to say in terms of YouTube channels like for Raiders content. I'd actually put us up in the argument, pound for pound, we are one of the most interactive YouTube channels out there because... Raider Nation knows how to get down. Raider Nation knows how to have a good time, and this is a fan base that is not afraid to express their opinion. So if you bleed silver and black, if you love the Raiders, if you're walking down the street and you see some random guy wearing a Raiders hat, I honestly was driving down the road the other day, and there was a Raiders truck, and he had one of those big stickers on his back. I tried to roll down my window and started like waving at him like, yo, Raiders, what's going on? If you're that type of dude, subscribe to the Raiders Report. That's what we're about here. Growing the nation, giving you a voice. Hit that big red button. It's YouTube.com. 
Facebook.com slash Raiders Report. All right, so let's continue to go in here on Giuseppe here a little bit more and maybe how he could actually potentially fit with this defense here. I mean, he's a good player, and I was pretty excited about the pick. Did I anticipate them trading up? No, I didn't. But from what I've seen, the M.O., of Gruden and Mayock is if there is a player that starts to slide down the board, then they're going to be aggressive and they're not going to be afraid to go out and get them, which I respect the hell out of because with Giuseppe, who again is the number nine safety overall, and we are actually starting to get a lot more people starting to pile in here on the live show over 11,000, well not 11,000, uh, 1,100 people watching. And if you're excited about the pick, I do want you to go ahead and like the video. I know a lot of people were worried when the first pick was Alex Otherwood because it was an offensive lineman and you know we've been team defense 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 but guess what man that's exactly what they've done they've continued to go defense 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 and leading up to the picks here I want to show you a few of the other guys coming off the board you had Jacob Harris 141 overall he ended up going to the LA Rams the Green Bay Packers they went with Royce Newman but it's interesting to me that the Raiders decided to jump a team like the Kansas City Chiefs and their rival where one of the biggest chief needs still is at the safety position. I don't know if the Kansas City Chiefs would have went with them, but if the Raiders wanted to jump up that much to go up and get their guy, it is pretty interesting here. I do want to go through and show you guys some of the other picks. And as a reminder, it's 167 left. You don't have number 200 and 230 as well, so just keep that in mind. In terms of the trade value chart, let me uh, let me figure out exactly how well this trade was for the Raiders because. That's really important to me. I mean, we talk about trades all the time here on the show. So let me scroll on down. Let me try to figure out if what the Raiders got is a really, really good deal. So you gave up 162, and you gave up pick number 200 there, and you went and got somebody like, where are we at, one, what was the pick, 143? I'm looking at the value. It actually equals out. So I think it's a good move for both sides here. So the Raiders saw a guy that they wanted, went out and got Tyree Giuseppe. If you want to let me know in the comments who you think won the trade between the Jets and the Las Vegas Raiders, the Raiders traded up to 143. The New York Jets get 162 and 200 overall. So you add an extra fifth round pick. You also get an extra sixth round pick. And instead, the Raiders get all the way up to round four. But for Las Vegas, you still have a round seven pick. You still have a round five pick. But unfortunately, now you don't have that sixth round pick. So what do you think about here? Would you have made this trade? Type A for accept or D for decline. Would you have just sat back at 162 or at 167 and waited? Or were you trying to go up and get somebody? Because the pre-draft process was this. Raiders were looking at a lot of players that they could use in multiple schemes. I know we talked a lot about Javon Holland. I think the fact that Holland went 36 overall to the Dolphins, that really started to boost up a lot of these safeties in terms of, all right, guys are going to start going quick here. Also, somebody like Elijah Molden was another player that the Raiders were high on. He actually slowed down the board pretty far. That was actually a dude that I was trying to figure out whether or not they would actually end up trading for him. So would you have made this trade? I want you to type A for accept, type D for decline. Go down in the comments and let me know. Jeremy's talking to me in my ear. You can finish your statement my man we're, we're all good here so seriously let me know a for accept or go ahead and type d for decline here would you have made this trade tyree giuseppe safety from missouri i believe that we're getting close to the end of this cut here he is again 5 11 207 pounds a 40 yard dash time of 4.42 the arms 31 and a quarter the hands nine and a half wingspan 75 you know what we should do though can I give some love to Panda Supps real quick? Can we give them a nice quick little read here because they are the sponsor on today's episode and I want to be able to give some love to them. So if you could, head on over to Panda Supps and go to pandasupps.com. Use code RAIDERNATION where you can save 40% off. Plus, Jeremy, if we could pull up maybe some of the protein, I would appreciate that and show the people some of the awesome deals that they have going on. Like if you spend over $100 right now at Panda Supps, you can get a free Panda Supps hat. The protein, best in the game. And I promise you, that this would be something that I'd be willing to trade up for. And again, 30 grams of protein per scoop. That's 40% off. And if you spend over $100, you're going to get a free Panda Supps hat. The guy who owns this company, he is a die-hard Raider fan, which is why he hooked us up with the 40% off Raider Nation code, and he only gave Chat Sports 35%. But hey, don't tell them that there. So it's, again, the first 100 people to go ahead and spend 100 bucks, you get a free hat. No added sugar. I literally eat this protein all the time. It tastes like the cereal. It tastes like Fruity Pebbles, like the milk after you get done eating that. That's what that protein tastes like. And if you mix it with milk or almond milk, dude, look out. High quality protein from Panda Supps. Shout out to them, pandasups.com.
All right, we're going to continue to go through some of the picks that actually just ended up happening here. Joshua Kando, Luke Farrell, he went number 145 overall to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jamie and Sherwood, safety from Auburn to the New York Jets. And then here we go, Brevin Jordan, tight end from Miami, Florida. There ends his fall, which actually is a pretty good value here for the Houston Texans, who, in fact, do need a tight end. Then you got Taquan Graham, defensive lineman from Texas. He won 148 overall to the Atlanta Falcons. Evan McPherson, kicker from Florida. I believe that's the first kicker off the board. Remember, kicker, they are people, too. Round 5, 149 overall. Kenneth Gainwell, running back from Memphis. This is one of those guys that's got some sneaky hype. Sure, he's a little bit undersized at 5. 5'8", 201 pounds, but Tom had a round a grade three on him, and I'm actually kind of in agreement with you. He was my number four running back overall. I thought he was a little bit better than Michael Carter, but for Tom, he said, hey, this guy could go somewhere around 76, so this is pretty good value here for the Philadelphia Eagles. You'll be able to see the next two picks which come in from the Chicago Bears and the Denver Broncos. They are on the clock. So now what we're going to do is we are going to react to the pick here, and Cruiser Tims goes, how does our defensive depth chart look like? So, I mean, if you guys, I don't have the graphic built, unfortunately. Uh, we're, we got a lot of different moving parts here from the team. But in terms of safety, I'm going to say Trevon Merrick's the starting free safety. Then it's Jeff Heath, and then it's going to be somebody like Giuseppe, who you just saw go off the board. Now, he's not the best coverage guy, but he can also come up. He can also probably play a little bit of strong safety as well. So, like, if Jonathan Abram, Carl Joseph, if that doesn't work out, he can come up and play there. Divine Diablo is also going to play strong safety. You can also line Divine Diablo in the nickel role. I will say that I do think it's pretty bad news for guys like I do think it actually hurts the value of somebody like Damon Arnett where I don't know exactly where he's going to play now because if I'm the Raiders, I start with Sol Douglas over Damon Arnett and I'd actually also put a guy on the field like Divine Diablo over Arnett because I think he's just be a better fit here in Bradley's defense. So I'm curious, but a lot of the guys that were drafted in round one on defense should be pretty nervous because Gus Bradley, these are very Gus Bradley-like picks here. Let's go to the next one coming in. Jack Kenna, did I get that right? What was the trade details? Is Heath cut? Four million. I actually don't think Heath is, and actually, in fact, Mayock said today that him and Merrick are going to compete. Now you could still end up cutting him to save some money, but the Raiders do like him. He could actually be a captain this year in terms of special teams value. But five dollars super chat, beer cheers to you. If you want to get on the show, go ahead and send in those supers. What up, Alex D? Did you catch the fifty dollars super as you sent it back to Chat Sports? Um, I did actually. Now that you said that, so as soon as we ended yesterday's show. You did. You sent in a $50 Super Chat. So you know what? Uh, now that you mentioned that, I do I do remember. Because I, I remember I replied to your comment, and I said that, hey, man, we're, we're live on Chat Sports. I don't remember the comment, what it was exactly. So if you want to throw it in the uh, down below, I'd appreciate it. But I do remember the $50 Super, and, yes, it was right before we went to loop. So cheers to you, man. <clears throat> All right, let's go to Zornell Malone. We, got, we still need a defensive tackle or linebacker. Who are the best left? So it, if you could pull up maybe the best defensive tackles or best linebackers on Tom's board, that would be great. So the Raiders do. They still have pick 167. So if they want to take one of these guys that end up falling there, could definitely be there. So no. So defensive tackle, linebacker. Who are the best left? So that's the route that we're going to go. DT or linebacker. So first we'll look at the best linebackers available. This is according to Tom Downey. Cameron McGrone, linebacker from Michigan. I'm actually not the biggest hype guy on him. I don't really like Dylan Moses. However, at 167 overall, I actually start to like that as well. Tony Fields, the second linebacker from West Virginia. Isaiah McDuffie, another pretty solid guy from Boston College. I'm curious where Tom has somebody like Garrett Harrell, TCU linebacker, who I like as a being a more of a pretty solid player. Well, I guess we can go to edge rusher as well. Quincy Roche is a pretty solid dude. But I don't really know if the Raiders are going to go with edge rusher after taking Kuntz there at pick number 79. So if we could pull up the top DTs, defensive tackles, I think that would be probably the next. So there's no defensive tackles left. That's what you're telling me. Okay, so how about we go to best available here. And then we got Davion Nixon, who's a defensive tackle, who is probably the best DT left available. Marvin Wilson also, who I've literally mocked to the Raiders at 167. I'm going to say like three times, and if Marvin Wilson ends up going there, he's the type of player, though, that you can take in round five because the upside is there. There's just no doubt about that. Also, Marlon, who we ended up talking about a little bit earlier on, who I actually uh, – we had a super chat coming around him, and I said I'd get more information, but then the Raiders ended up trading up. So give me a second. Let me get my notes pulled up here on Marlon, 
who uh, I know is a player that you guys have asked me a ton about. So here's the good. Growth over each of the past three seasons, which anytime you're looking at a prospect, you want to see that he's coachable, which a lot of these USC guys are. So perfect. Good job here uh, by Chugs. Jay Perez setting this in about the fifth round. You're looking at it now, 167. I mean, if you're going to go ahead and take him, this is kind of the opportunity to go ahead and do that. Very powerful hands. This is how he wins. Is he going to be able to win like this in the NFL? That still remains to be seen. He can shed blocks, which is good. He's going to be a solid run stopper in a 4-3. Tom doesn't like him so much in a 3-4, which is good for us since we run a 4-3. The bad, no 40 in terms of like average testing. Kind of an average athlete, limited in pass rush. He's a three down player that doesn't have that. And he had a back injury in 2017. And then he washed out a few times on plays, which you don't really like to see. You want a little bit more in terms of consistency. So Marlon, so pretty, pretty solid. Um, so again, go ahead and super chat. We would be uh, appreciated if you could go ahead and do that. So go down in the comments right now. Let us know what you're thinking. We can uh, go to the next Super Chat coming in here. It's from Still Will. Knowing our quarterback situation, what is Gruden seeing we don't? Is he going off stats? Should we be excited he's back? I mean, we, we will see what's happening here in terms of, like, the quarterback situation. But is he going off stats? I don't think he's going off stats. I mean, he's going to go off the terms of who's the best quarterback available in terms of Derek Carr. So, um should we be excited that he's back in terms of Gruden? I mean, we still got to see Remain, but he has improved the team each of the each of the few years. It's just we got to hit on free agency, we got to hit in trades, we got to hit in the draft as well. All right, last super chat here until I believe we get into maybe some more in terms. Also, if you guys look down below, you can see the next last two picks: Larry Borum and then Caden Stearns were the next two picks in the 2021 NFL Draft. So let's go to the next one coming in from Lil Rafters 101. Oh, a little crafter. Okay, what's your Chucky heads on us trading up the rest of our picks at this point? Because Mayock said that Gruden wanted to trade all of them. Uh, again, I can't sit here and tell you that I know what they're going to do because the Raiders and Gruden have just proven that they are so unpredictable. If there's a guy that they like, I mean, I'm totally okay giving up pick, you know, and the round seven pick and round five pick, because that's all you have left at this point. You have 167, and then you have 230 overall. Those are the only picks that you have left. So if there's a guy that you really like on the board and you want to be able to move up and get him, you know, that's pretty interesting to me. But, I mean, we'll see what they end up doing. All right, y'all, I owe you guys a few drinks here, so give me a sec. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... With the, uh, again, if you guys want to get your questions on the show, you can go ahead and super chat or you can use hashtag greater. We'll pull in a few more. As always, remember that we go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific. So please hit that big red button and subscribe. Join us. We're always trying to stay up to date on everything going on around the Las Vegas Raiders because I'll tell you what, he's uh Gruden's an interesting guy, and we're always trying to stay updated here. Hell, I got my shirt from Black Sunday Black Sunday Shop. So if you guys are looking for an awesome Raider shirt, you can go to blacksundayshop.com. <clears throat> we'd, uh, we'd really appreciate it. So who are some late-round sleepers that we should look at? Go down and comment below. If you give me a name here, I can go ahead and start pulling up some names because I know we got some Super Chats that we still need to be able to get to, like I see Rubik, Nicholas, Raider, Youngville, LC Raider, and then Ari. So... Excuse me. So that's the beer catching up to me. All right, Rubik, what up, my dude? We got, uh, since we didn't take a cornerback, does that mean we'll go for Sherman? He did mention St uh, Stephen A. Smith. He talked to the Raiders. I mean, we know that he talked to the Raiders. We also know that Gruden and him sat down during a, a podcast and basically broke certain things down here. So when it comes down to it, pretty solid player, but I don't see Richard Sherman going to the Raiders because it's just not – personally what I see them doing. I think they went out with a cheaper option with somebody like Rasul Douglas because, I mean, let's face it here, he's a, he's a good player. But if you can, if you can get somebody who's a little bit cheaper, that's the route that I think they go. So no, I, I'm actually going to say no, Sherman. If they are going to get a veteran cornerback, it's going to be somebody like um, Casey Hayward. So what's actually going to happen here, we're going to go back and we're going to give you guys a little bit more on Tyree Gus uh, Gillespie. Okay, so 
I would say then we'll go back and give you guys a little bit more insight on Gillespie, and we'll be able to break it down for you uh, here on the show because I think that's what people are asking for, that we can give you guys a little bit more uh, insight on Tyree Gillespie. So we'll see ultimately uh, what happens here. So we're going to go ahead, give you guys a rundown again, another nice little 10 minutes here on Tyree Gillespie and why the Raiders decided to trade up for him. Raider Nation, what's going on? You are watching the Raiders Report, and today's show is presented by Panda Supps. The Las Vegas Raiders, they were really excited. They wanted to be able to trade up into round four, pick 143 overall with the New York Jets. It's exactly why they did. Maybe they were feeling strong. Maybe they were feeling fit. Maybe they went out and had some Panda Supps. If you're feeling a little bit, I don't know, slouchy, you want to be able to concentrate better at work, you have a big test coming up, or if you just want to get in the best shape of your life, go to pandasupps.com. Use code Raider Nation where you can save 40% off. So here's the player that the Raiders decided to trade up for, Tyree Gillespie, for safe Gillespie from Missouri. He's a safety, 5'11", 207 pounds, number nine safety overall, number 111 player overall, grade a fourth round pick here, 46 tackles, zero interceptions, four pass breakups. So I am curious to see what happens here, but uh, in terms of overall fit, but in terms of like what he was able to bring at Missouri, I mean, you're not looking at the most athletic terms of a player at 5'11", 207 pounds. The 40 time, though, that is definitely really, really impressive, which is something that I know a lot of Raiders fans like to see. But the fact that this is going to be now the third safety that the Raiders have drafted, and let's go back to his uh, 2020 stats here, 46 tackles, Four pass breakups, zero interceptions. The completion percentage of uh, 58.3. Also in 2019, he had 50 tackles. Four tackles for a loss. A sack, seven pass breakups. 2018, 48 tackles, one and a half tackles for a loss. A sack and a pass breakup. He is 22 years old right now. He's going to turn 23 right before the season. So I want you to grade the pick. A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know down there in the comment section below. How do you feel about the Raiders trading up? and taking Tyree in the round four, pick 143 overall. It's a lot more depth in the secondary. I mean, that's what Gus Bradley's trying to do. I will say I think it's some pretty bad news for some of the other guys on the team. I'll break down for which players that is. But A, B, C, D, or F, go down in the comment section and let me know. All right, so the Raiders kicked off this draft with Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle from Alabama in round 117. People started to get a little bit nervous, which, you know, I can understand. It wasn't the pick that people thought, but I need people to understand this. Calm down. Maybe Mayock, maybe Gruden knew that certain players like Merrick, maybe people knew like Jeremiah will score more, we're going to slide down. Because when slides start to happen, it forces other players down. When you saw the run on offensive tackles, like, I'm okay. Like, if you were to straight up tell me we get Merrick at 17 and Alex Leatherwood at 43... Good value. Leatherwood is one hell of a run blocker, and he's going to be able to really add a lot to this offensive line. Merrick, one of the best picks of the draft, I actually think so, because he was the third safety taken, and the fact that you were able to get him 43 overall, you needed to be able to trade up to get him. Malcolm Koontz is another solid edge rusher out of Buffalo. Mike Mayock compared him to somebody like, guess who? Yannick Ngakwe, long bendy. Who does that remind you of? Somebody like a Max Crosby. Divine Diablo. This is also a very good pick here by the Raiders of safety, who's a little bit over. Sized. He's a big dude. He's got some Cam Chancellor in him in terms of like how the Raiders could potentially use him. And then in the fourth round, this is the way that the board fell, and the Raiders saw an opportunity here where they wanted to trade up and get some more picks. And the guy that they ended up going with here, Gillespie, <coughs> Gillespie, I'll get it right sooner or later, at round four, 143 overall. Also, again, they decided to trade 162, and they decided to trade 200 to jump up here and get the guy. So now the Raiders only have 167 overall and 230 overall. But from top to bottom, the Raiders needed to be able to go ahead and get some extra picks here in terms of really being able to figure out how you solve the defense because it's not just me when I say this, and please feel free to chime in. When the Raiders had to watch the defense last year, and I know a lot of players got mad at for us saying this, but you gave up 6,200 yards last season. That's the worst, or I should say it's the most yards ever given up by a Raiders defense. You could have made a serious argument that the Raiders defense last year was the worst in the history of the franchise, and they still went 8-8. Eight and eight. If you can get a top 15, hell, a top 20 defense, you probably made the playoffs. You probably go 11-5 and five if your defense doesn't absolutely collapse in the last a minute 40. So I really like the fact that the Raiders saw, okay, 
We're going to protect Derek Carr. We got Alex Leatherwood. And now you go out and get somebody like Merrick. You go out and get somebody like Coons. You go out and get somebody like Diablo. And then in round four, pick 143, you also get a player like Tyree, safety from Missouri. So I was pretty animated a little bit earlier on. If we could change this here, let's move it a little bit. I would appreciate that. But when you talk about what the Raiders are doing, they are building around the defense, which is something that every single Raider fan knew that they needed to do. Now, if you want to stay up to date on everything going on around the Las Vegas Raiders, please go ahead, hit that big red button that says subscribe. We are the number one most watched Raiders channel on YouTube for a reason. It's because we got the diehard fans here around Raider Nation. So today's sponsor is Panda Supps, and I want to give them a little bit of love here. Go to pandasups.com, and if you purchase anything over $100, so let's say you get like four tubs of protein, which I guarantee you this, once you try it, you're going to be like hooked, absolutely. In fact, I just bought six tubs of protein the other day and uh, waiting for my hat in the mail. But you get a free hat with a $100 purchase at pandasups.com. The first 100 buyers, you get the hat, which is a value of $25. I'll tell you what, it's slick. It's really, really clean. If you like new hats, if you like snapbacks, you're going to like this a lot. And in terms of the protein, it's going to sell itself. And here's a like, little wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If you go to chatsports.com slash free protein, you can actually get protein for free. You get three packs. You just got to pay shipping. And I promise you this, once you try it, you're going to be hooked. The vanilla ice cream, the fruity cereal, all phenomenal. If you're a gamer on YouTube, their new tropics, also great products. Please go ahead and try everything that they got to offer. Again, that's at pandasups.com. Promo code is Raider Nation because there is only one nation. The guy who owns the company is a diehard Raider fan. 40% off pandasups.com, code Raider Nation. So the Raiders saw a need, and I want you to really look at the overall value. So what does that mean exactly? That means Tom Downey. Had him rated as his 111th player overall, round four grade. The fact that he slid all the way down to 143, that's really solid value. In terms of what type of player you're going to get, he's uh, in terms of like, we'll say, testing, just above average. The 4.43, that was great. The vertical was uh, okay. The three cone drill was poor. The broad jump, not great either. The shuffle is also not too good at 4.39. He can really fly down and hit. His best thing, though, he could be a really good gunner on special teams, and it's important to find solid special teams player. Bad, zero career interception, so I don't know how much free safety he's going to get. Now, if you guys want to go ahead and subscribe, I would really appreciate that. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers before the season starts. Now, we're the reason why we're the number one most watched Raiders channel on YouTube, we keep you up to date on everything going on around the silver and black, right? Literally a new video every single day. I was making videos last night until 2.30 in the morning. I mean, we released our Raiders grades video. I think it came out at 1.30. I stayed until 2.30, had to clean up a few things around the office, and then woke up at 7, took my dog Chuck out, made sure you guys had another video bright and early this morning. So if you love the Raiders, you want free videos every single day, hit that big red button that says subscribe. All right, let's go to Nicholas J. Can you show the depth chart on offense and defense with our draft picks on it? I will be able to do that probably on Tuesday. Unfortunately, guys, like we have very limited people in the background that can help us with our graphics right now. It's simply like this. like We got 10 other shows going on. So I promise you, once I look at some of the players a little bit more in depth, I will give you in terms of depth chart. But in, if what you're looking for is offense, Alex Leatherwood, he's the starting right tackle. You're going to bump Brandon Parker behind Colt Miller. I can tell you that right now. So it's going to be Colt Miller, Richie Incognito is left guard. Center is going to be Andre James. Starting right guard is going to be Denzel Good. And then somebody like, uh, again, uh, who's the name? Alex Leatherwood at starting right tackle. And in defense, I'm going to say the starters are Rasul Douglas at starting left corner. Your nickel cornerback is going to be, I think, a mix between. Uh, honestly, I think Divine Diablo could really compete for that position. Damon Arnett could be a solid option there as well. Starting free safety is going to be Merrick, going to compete with Jeff Heath. Safety is going to be Jonathan Abram, but he's going to play a little bit more of a linebacker box role. And then you're starting main cornerback, Trayvon Mullen. So here's the offensive line depth chart. So shout out to Chugs here, Jeremy, behind the scenes. This is what the starting offensive line is going to look like. The reason why they wanted Leatherwood is because they wanted somebody who could beat people up as a right tackle in terms of wanting the football because I know we talk a lot, a lot about, you know, passing game, Derek Carr. John Gruden wants to run the football. That's why they went out and got Kenyon Drake. That's why they went out and drafted Alex Leatherwood in round one. All right, Super Chat coming in here from Raider Luco. So you're saying you want to take Cox. You know what? I would have loved to have Jabril Cox in the uh, fourth round. I saw what you tried to do there. You almost got me. So I am like the king of Ron Burgundy in it. So if you guys put something on screen, chances are that I go ahead and drink it. Cheers to you, Jeremy. I appreciate you, man. All right, man. Next one's coming in here from Youngville. 
Three safeties is Abram, a linebacker for Chucky Heads now. No, but I mean, if you guys remember, I've been saying for weeks, months, maybe even a, month, a year and a half, that I would put Jonathan Abram more of a linebacker slash safety role, and that's what he's going to play in a Gus Bradley system. I want you to go watch the tape in terms of how the Seahawks use Jamal Adams. They don't ask him to drop back into coverage. They ask him to get after the quarterback and stop the run. That's what you're going to see from Jonathan Abram. That's the role he needs to play because, no disrespect to him, he's not a good coverage player. But he brings the fire, he brings the intensity, and if you use him the right way, you're going to be very, very happy in his production. Let's go to LC Raider next Super Chat. Man, I want more online, O-line now, options. I mean, in terms of the best offensive lineman available, do we have that graphic? So Jeremy's saying, yes, we do. So we're about to pull up the best offensive lineman available, and then we can also show you probably excuse me, some of the best players available. In terms of offensive tackles, I don't really see the Raiders going with any of these guys personally. I mean, I know they also interviewed somebody from uh, UMass and during the draft process, but I don't potentially see the Raiders going OT. If they're going to upgrade on the interior, maybe on the interior offensive line, like a Deonta Brown actually could be a pretty solid option here. Trey Smith, if the Raiders want to go with an offensive guard, those are going to be the top two. And then we actually got another one from Ari who just said, guard in the fifth round. I mean, if you're going to do it, I like Trey Smith a lot. He's actually a player who had a round three grade and also Brown. I mean, if you're trying to build a solid interior, you need to have some chemistry there. Maybe you go two potential uh, Maybe you go two potential guys from Alabama. So I'd say Deonta Brown or Trey Smith would be my two options at guard. Let's go to Papaya Man. You're the man, Mitch. Appreciate what you do for the nation. Much love. But see, like, Papaya Man, like, I love what I do because uh, we have an awesome fan base, and you guys know that. Like, if you've been a Raider fan for just a day, for a month, for a year, this is the fan base that knows how to get down. So uh, I love what we do here, and I love the chemistry that we've been able to build. But I also, like, appreciate people like Jeremy in the background working, who you guys don't always see. Sam's always busting his tail here on the show. We got guys always working behind the scenes to make sure that we can provide you guys with as much content as possible. So I know you guys always see me, like, I'm the, the face of the show, but... Like, the amount of people that are behind the scenes, like, they, they work their asses off, too. So, uh, we'll, we'll see. All right, let's go to L.A. Raider for life. Jeremy's crying in the background. I was nervous after that first pick, but feeling much better now day after day two. Raider Nation, Stan, love y'all. Everyone, type Raider Nation for life in the comments because I'm with you. I was pretty damn nervous, and, I mean, I had a had a little bit of a breakdown. I did. I had a mental breakdown after I saw the Alex Leatherwood pick because – I like Leatherwood. He was a good player. He was my number 32 over on my board. It was a little bit of a reach, but I, I didn't want the Raiders to reach because I was like, man, you got Joke on the board. You got Merrick. He even had a guy like Christian Barmore. I believe that the Raiders knew something that the common people did not know, and that was that some of those players were going to slide, and they were going to be available at 43. So for that reason and that reason only, I'm going to say that, hey, good job, Gruden. Good job, Mayock. I like the draft so far. I'm, I'm excited about it, and you guys would know that if I don't like it, I would tell you about it. All right, Raider Luco here. Also, you guys can see the picks that end up happening underneath. Davion Nixon, so back-to-back -back Iowa players off the board, one to Minnesota, one to Carolina there. Do I use my stimulus check for Raiders tickets? That's up to you. I do know that I'm going to have a video coming out May 12th once the Raiders schedule is officially released. If you have an extra ticket and you want somebody to sit next to you, at Mitchell Renz 365. Let's go to Stumbling Upward here. Uh, should we take the Ohio State left tackle Personally, I'm going to say no because I am confident with the Raiders and what they have. And the other reason is this. I know the Raiders like Brandon Parker as being a solid backup option to Colt Miller at left tackle. So that I don't really see happening. Plus, Mayock was hyping up somebody like Jared Jones-Smith, who, good backup player, but that's all he's ever going to be. So at this point, you're not going to take somebody who you think could start over those guys. At least I personally don't think so. Plus, also Lester Cotton, he could play inside and outside. But I'm going to say no. Let's go to Zornell. So Taylor Muse is cut now. You're not going to cut somebody who you traded up for in round three. It's going to cost you way too much money. But, I mean, like, we have to face the fact here. Muse is a fun player on special teams, and he's going to be a solid player on special teams. But it's a loss. He's not going to be a fit in Gus Bradley's system. And all the picks that you saw today just go ahead and prove that, guess what? Tanner Muse is not going to see the football field on defense. It was another waste to pick in the 2019 draft. And, unfortunately, the more and more I look at it, not 2019, 2020, the more and more I look at it, the 2020 draft, I am a believer, is going to go down as being one of the worst drafts that the Raiders had in quite some time. Now, if you guys love what we're doing here on the Raiders Sport, if you want to go ahead and get a shout-out, hit me up on Instagram, at MitchellRenz365, because we're going to stay live here as long as we possibly can. We actually might cut to uh, the main chat sports broadcast so you guys can see what's happening over there. But, hey, 
If the uh, super chats keep coming in and you guys want me to stay live, we will stay live. But this is what's going to happen here. Um, I am going to go on Instagram, at MitchellRens365. And if you go ahead and give me a follow, I'm going to shout you out. It's pretty as simple as that. So the last follows that I've gotten is Rendini88, G underscore Boardling, Smoke Out Loud Official, Pete Boy 522, James D underscore Hicks, and then underscore D period La Elysia. I believe I got that one right. So if you guys want to shout out here on the Raiders Board, give me a follow on IG at Mitchell365. And then I'm also going to be here tomorrow because um, – we're going to be doing some UDFA stuff as well. So if you want to shout out, it's at Mitchell Renz 365 on Instagram. Hold on. I got Eliza, Clarkdale, DeVitia, Faze for Mox. Those are the last people that gave me a follow. All right. Which fast food has the best fries? Go down in the comments and let me know. So Jeremy and I, we're getting hungry. We haven't eaten anything all day because uh, we, we went from Chat Sports Show and we came over here to the Raiders Report. And uh, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting excited here. So here's the other thing. Some people don't like this, and I know my girlfriend definitely doesn't either. So it's it's funny because when I order food, I don't eat fries. I'm, I'm actually think fries are very overrated. I, it's not the part of the food I'll get. If I go to a fast food restaurant, instead of me getting, you know, like the burger and fries, I'll just get two burgers instead. But uh, my girlfriend, Alex, she's always like, well, just get the fries for me. So, like, it kind of works out when she's there with me because then she just ends up eating my fries. Because anytime we go out to eat, she's always like, oh, I'm not hungry. Or she'll be like, no, oh, no, I'm good on fries. And then she'll just sit there. And she'll just pick at my food, which I don't mind. I mean, I love her, but it is what it is. All right, y'all. So go ahead. Let me know which fast food has the best fries. So uh, California says In-N-Out. I will say this. In-N-Out has trash fries. Um, <laughs> I know that for a fact. Juan Castro says McDonald's. Nathan's? Okay, Nathan's I can get on board with. I do think McDonald's actually has some pretty solid fries there. Uh, Gruden does suck. I don't know if that's a fast food restaurant, but I don't think I'm going to eat there. We got Rallies. I don't even know what that is. Fries go first. I just don't have one. Uh, somebody said, you have a girlfriend. Yes, yes, I do. In and out? No, sorry, that's not it. Jack in the box, wing box, onion rings. See, if, if I'm gonna get something like that, I'll go sweet potato fries or I'll go onion rings. Like I did, a, I did a show about some of the top places to eat in Las Vegas, which you guys can actually check out if you go to chatsports.com/raidersbars. Where I went to Vegas, I checked out my top 15 favorite places to watch a Raiders game. I ate a lot of food there, but I am always team. If you can give me onion rings, some jalapeno poppers, some mac and cheese bites, like hell, almost anything besides fries. Yeah, I'm never, I'm always about it. So if you guys are looking for more food takes, um, you can follow me here at the Raiders Report. Now, if you guys are looking for the latest news and rumors, I want you to go ahead, hit that big red button that says subscribe, and turn on those notifications because when there is breaking news, we're going to be able to break everything down for you all here. So what we're waiting on now is the Raiders' 167th pick in round five. So again, they traded up to take the safety out of Missouri Tyree. Um, and I'm curious to see what they potentially do here moving forward so never miss a video on the Raiders report subscribe and that way you guys can uh, stay tuned and keep the party started so here's with the next pick round five 160 overall Sean Wade so I know a lot of y'all were asking me about Wade I didn't like Wade too much as a prospect and this is kind of where you know Tom and I expected him to go he uh when I think about overall players okay and if you guys want a Damon Arnett comparison Sean Wade was better than Damon Arnett in terms of overall production at Ohio State. Wade was the cornerback two, Jeffrey Okuda was the number one, and then Damon Arnett was the number three. So just think about the idea that Sean Wade played over Damon Arnett and Wade's going here in round five. Now, I think that Arnett was a round three, round four type of player. I wouldn't have taken him in round one, but here's his old teammate going in the fifth round, 160 overall. So if you want to get your questions here on the show, let's keep them going. Use hashtag Raiders or Super Chat. The longer you Super Chat, the longer we'll stay live. So obviously we'll be live here for pick 167. But if, um, unfortunately, if we don't see, you know, any other of the picks or the Super Chats come in here, then guess what? We will go ahead and, you know, do something different. So what do you guys uh, think about here? Use hashtag Raiders or Super Chat. So... Go down in the comments, and please let me know. So we had a few Super Chats come in, which we will get to here in a second. And uh, appreciate everyone watching the show right now. So we got, um, who else? We got Vincent Zamora, Elias Amador, Gay Busio, Robert and Andre, Hank Moore, Jonathan Marino, Randy Bristol, Jason Sanchez. We also got uh, Cliff Mike Aguilar. 
We got Jason Sanchez. And I'm being told if we get a $100 super chat, Jeremy and I are going to shotgun a beer. $100 super chat. Jeremy said he'll shotgun too. Trying to get Liddy. That's funny. So uh, I heard beer and I started typing beer to Jeremy, which I thought was uh, kind of funny there. So but we got a uh, super chat coming in here from Jack Kenna. If these players fall, Trey Smith, Brown at offensive guard, Dylan Moses linebacker, or Sean Wade slot corner. So Sean Wade literally just got picked with the next pick, if all available. So I'll be honest with you all. I had a guy like Dylan Moses going round five, and I know that was a pretty unpopular opinion, but it's because of the medical. After he tore that ACL, people were afraid to take him. But in terms of Excuse me, some players available here. Opson, Nasir Delane still on the board. That one's pretty surprising to me. Tom has, has his overall 72 overall player. Deonta Brown, another solid offensive guard. I think one of the reasons why you're seeing a lot more players slide more than usual is because shortened year, not as much tape. Some guys opted out. So I think that's one of the biggest reasons. And no NFL combine. So like I think that's why you're seeing a lot of these guys slide. Trey Smith, another good offensive guard. Gruden's got a lot of connections there. Jamar Johnson, safety from Indiana. He's still on the board, a player that I actually had going in a mock draft in round three. Marvin Wilson has been the player that I've mocked to the Raiders literally three times at 167 overall. So if, uh, if that ends up happening, I would laugh a little bit. But a guy like Wilson is the type of player that you end up taking in the fifth round because you're looking for that high upside. In 2019, his tape was exceptional. Like, I mean, he actually probably could have been a top 50 pick if he would have came out in the draft in 2020, decided to stay, and looked a little bit lazy at times, but he does have the athletic ability, so we'll see uh, what he can do ultimately there if he would be a Las Vegas Raider. Some other players still left on the board. We got a Semi, who's a wide receiver I love from Stanford. He'd be a pretty good value pick here, and if you wanted to take a flyer on somebody in round seven, hey, uh, I definitely wouldn't be opposed to it. Cameron McGrone, I've had a lot of people asking me when he's going to go. And then Quincy Roche, here are the top 12 players available on Tom Downey's big board. So we got 1,239 people watching right now, 582 likes. If you want to get on the show, you can go ahead and super chat, or you can use hashtag Raider. But I want to get to 1,000 likes. So I don't know if we got anything planned for 1,000 likes, but if you guys could, I would appreciate it here. Tommy Doyle just went to, um, he's an offensive tackle from Miami, Ohio, so I know Tom's probably freaking out right now. But Raider Nation, stand up, smash that like button, 597 likes. Let's get to 1,000 likes, and then uh, we'll take a shot of Fireball because why not? It's day three. We can let our hair down here a little bit. We've been working hard at Chat Sports. I am so excited to be able to sleep in tomorrow. That's 100% of a fact. But let's get some likes. If you've already gone ahead and liked the video, then please comment like below. That way I can see who's uh, doing what. Ross Sports says 167 overall. Jonathan Marino says, I like the video. Appreciate you, my man. English first. Wait, English fish and chips. I can't read. Uh, appreciate it from Terry. Much love to you, my man. We got uh, Ali says, what happened to pick 162? We traded it away. So we traded up 162 and 200 to take the safety from Missouri. His uh, first name's Tyree. So that's that's how we ended up going with that route. So Gillespie. It's it's a weird name for me to say. I don't know why. I'm really struggling saying it. Gillespie. I It's maybe, geez, I'm not good with geez, I guess. So. All right, so here are Super Chat specials. So what I want to be able to do is slash some prices. So you know what, Jeremy? This is what I want you to do. For the next, let's do, let's do for the next 10 minutes. We'll keep beer cheers at 5. I want you to put roulette wheel to 10, clout shout out to 15, fireball to 20, and if somebody wants to come on the Raiders report, we'll do one for a one. Eh, we'll do a $100 Super Chat. If we get a $100 Super Chat, you can come on the Raiders Report. What does that mean? So on Tuesday when I go live, and I go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be able to zoom you guys in. we got four other people who are going to also be joining you all. So when we have the opportunity to ask questions, talk a little bit of Raiders, I want to be able to give back. You guys have been in an unbelievable crowd for probably the last two days here at the draft. So once we get that updated, we'll show you the new deals here at the Raiders Report. We're going to keep this around for a little bit because I want to get the interaction going. I want to get the Super Chats going because the more Super Chats we get, the longer I can stay live here on the Raiders Report. And I don't got to go back out there with chat sports. So I, I want to stay in here personally. So we did have a few supers come in, which we will get to. Just everyone, you know, we had Zornell, Daryl, Tony, and then John Harrell. Much, 
Much appreciated to you. So bang, here's the new Super Chat special. So if you want me to spin the roulette wheel, it's a $10 one. And I owe, I owe some beer drinks here, so just give me a second. I don't know how much I've drank this week, but I'm definitely not drinking next week. Um, that's, uh, that's a fact. Um, so also, I love Jeremy too. He's committed to this. Every time I drink, he's literally taking a drink. And I wish you guys could actually see what he's doing back there. So you know what I'm going to do? I want you guys to go give Jeremy a follow on Instagram. I'm going to take a picture of him and just so you can see all the craziness going on behind the screens here. And because we got all these different things going on, and it's kind of hard to be able to see but you can kind of see in the background, he's got all sorts of crazy things. So what I want you guys to do is go give my man Jeremy a follow on IG. And I want you to see what he's freaking doing back here. Because he's got all sorts of just craziness going on. And I wish my phone would be able to load a little bit. What's your IG? J-I-B-96? All right. So... I'm going to put him on here on IG. So go give my man a follow. If you follow him, he's going to give you a shout out on Instagram. He's going to put it in the chat. <laughs> uh, appreciate that. So if you guys want to see Jeremy working hard behind the screens here at Chat Sports, go give him a follow on Instagram. It's on my IG story at MitchellRens365. If you get a new follower on Instagram, Jeremy, I want you to go producer Mike, and I want you to give a shout out. And uh, if you guys, he wants to, he wants to get some Twitter followers too. So go uh, go ahead and show him some love here. So Ji Beedling is him on Twitter. If you follow him on Twitter, if you follow him on Instagram, we'll let him give some shout outs here in a little bit. But we are getting ready for the Raiders pick at 167. The Chiefs they're on the clock right now, and you guys can see like down below they actually already picked Noah Gray. My mistake. Tight end from Duke. You'll see the picks down below. So once we uh. Once we get a few followers there for old Jeremy Chugs, and then we'll go through some of the other super chats that ended up happening. So again, from Zornell, from Daryl Lunnan, from Tony, and then from John Harley, we will get to, I promise, your guys' super chats. Just please stay patient here. In terms of picks by school so far, I think this is pretty interesting. Ohio State's at 9, Alabama's at 8, Georgia's 6, Notre Dame's 6, and then Florida at 5. All right, so Jeremy's got some Insta followers. So Jeremy, go give some people some shout-outs. <laughs> All right, so go give Jeremy a follow on Instagram. It's on my IG story. You just click it, give him a follow. Also, give him a follow on Twitter. He does a lot of hard work for us. And I know he's not the guy that's on screen, but I promise you he's just as much a part of the show as I am. All right, let's go to these other Super Chats. We already showed that one. I don't know if you remember that. Or did we? Oh, no, I don't think we did. To whom will be a deep threat this year for the Raiders and the Raiders defeat AFC Division Raiders are playoff bound? Burger, I am, or Chick-fil-A? So, okay, so Burger for, what is Burger, I am? It's a restaurant? I've never heard of it. All right, Chick-fil-A, I'm always down to go get some Chick-fil-A. Who would be the deep threat this year? It's still going to be Henry Ruggs, also a stinky name, a sneaky name, not stinky, is uh, John Brown as well. I think he's that your Nelson Aguilar type of replacement. Let's go to Zornel Malone. Who are some players that the Raiders can sign after the draft? So I'll be doing some UDFAs in terms of like a UDFA tracker on Sunday, so I actually also will be working on Sunday as well. That way you guys can stay up to date going on there. But if you're going to go veteran corner, I still think it could be somebody like Casey Hayward. I don't think Richard Sherman happens at this point. If the Raiders want to go with an edge rusher or somebody who's still out there that I like is Justin Houston. But it's really going to come down to how much money the Raiders are going to be able to spend. But, hey, cheers to you. Let's go to Darren. Let's get a running back to replace Richard. That could actually be a pretty interesting option. Somebody to keep in mind, and I know I've said this name a bunch, is JV and Hawkins. I like him a lot. It's also a player that I know the Raiders also like. I am team cut Jalen because you can save $3.5 million. Here are some of the top running backs left on the board. I also think Elijah Mitchell could be a pretty sneaky name. Uh, Khalil Herbert as well. Kylan Hill. Also a running back that I really like in terms of value. Maybe he's there in round seven. Jarrett Patterson. I mean, if you tell me right now in terms of value, would I rather have Jarrett Patterson in round seven or Javian Hawkins at in round five? I'd probably go Patterson just because I still think the Raiders have other needs here that they could, you know, potentially address. Let's go to Tony Pereira. What up, my dude? Great job, Mitch. Love the show. Best draft coverage. Awesome shirt. Yeah, so the shirt actually, perfect timing here. Let's go give uh let's go give some love to the people over at Black Sunday Shop. So I absolutely love the Chucky shirt for, you know, obvious reasons here. It's for Chucky. He has to believe a baby. But 
Hang on, I got to burp, and I don't want to burp while I'm telling you guys to go get a shirt. All right, we're good. So if you're looking for some like high-quality Raiders shirts in terms of like the best graphics out there, we've had a lot of shirt companies on the show, and you know I think all different ones you know have their specific values of what they really bring to the table. What Black Sunday Shop brings to the table, though, is awesome. Jeremy, the graphics are in photo, if that helps you, um, out photo old. Also, in, uh, you can look at the lower thirds and Fanatics as well. That's how you can get it. But in terms of, like, high-quality shirts and designs, Black Sunday Shop absolutely kills it. They actually were also a sponsor on our show last year as well. But if you guys go to blacksundayshop.com, okay, the photos aren't there, so you might just have to move them over from either the Raiders report or the main NFL draft talk. We'll get to it. We'll talk to you guys about it here a little bit. But the the link in terms of what Black Sunday is, if they could show them the link and then the discount code, that I would really appreciate because then we could continue to the, you know talk about the show. But So if you guys want to get hooked up here with this shirt and a whole bunch of the shirts that they have over at Black Sunday Shop, it's blacksundayshop.com. Use code DRAFT to save 20% off. That would be really helpful, so let's move that over. Perfect. BlackSundayShop.com, code draft. I know they have a Charles Woodson one that they just released. The Bo Jackson one's really sick. My girlfriend's always telling me, you know, hey, like, try not to wear so much Raider stuff because I, I don't know about y'all. I literally wear, if I'm, like, chilling at the house, Raider stuff on. When I go out in public, I got my Raiders mask on. She's always like, man, that's all you do is wear Raider stuff. But, I mean, I have so much gear, like, I'm going to rep it. The one thing that I love about Black Sunday Shop is this. Their gear is, like, stuff that, even my girlfriend is okay with me wearing. Like, I'll put on my jean jacket. You throw on one of their awesome shirts. Like, they have a sick one with Ice Cube. Uh, they have a really cool one with uh, Marcus Allen as well, which is the one that I personally am a big, big fan of. But all tons of amazing Raider shirts, which we'll show you here when we get everything loaded up in a sec. We were kind of scrambling a little bit, trying to get the show ready, and, uh, you know, missed maybe a few things on our part. So that's my bad. But 20% off at BlackSundayShop.com. Code is DRAFT. This deal is only valid for a short amount of time. I believe it's until May 3rd, so you have until May 3rd to do it. But I was also told this. It's like first come, first serve. So if you want a shirt, you better go ahead and take advantage of the deal right now. BlackSundayShop.com. Code DRAFT. So we'll continue to be able to roll through a few of these shirts. And uh, I can I can probably get it. So. If we can continue to go through some other super chats, then we'll we'll be able to figure it out, and then I'll get you guys the, the shirt deal here in a little bit. So, so the super chat is Five Guys Burgers and Smash Burger. Love and respect the show, Mitch. Well, I'm glad that you guys like the show. I mean, I know we we really work hard around here, and I think anytime that we can have you know food takes, we can talk about certain things that are going on. You know, it's always appreciated. But we asked earlier which had the best fries, and I don't know who has the best fries. So how about this? Let's go to a comment driver. I'll try to get the comments up here a little bit. Whatever you want to put on, uh, Jeremy, I'll leave that one, you know, kind of kind of up to you. But in terms of, like, <clears throat> the Raiders, okay, who's the best Raider ever? I'm probably going to throw out Charles Woodson, Bo Jackson as being potential names there. I think also, you know, somebody could be a pretty sneaky name. Oh, man. We're also at pick 164, so the Raiders pick is about to, is about to come up here in just a little bit, so keep that in mind. I'm um, getting a little bit nervous about who they could potentially pick. I mean, you could go a few different routes, no doubt about that, but I'm hoping uh, hopefully we get somebody. All right, so go down to the comments right now. Let me know who is the best Raider of – best Raider available. Who's the best Raider ever? We got Janikowski, Tatum. We have uh, Charles Woodson. No, somebody said you wanted Sean Wade. Nobody wants Sean Wade. I'm telling you that right now. He's not a good football player. He's, uh, he's not really going to bring too much value to uh, any organization, at least that's what I personally believe. So, Jeremy, is it in photo, like the draft doc, or no? Um, okay. Interesting. So, I'm looking here. Who's the best Raider ever? I got some Jim Ottos from Jack Kenna. We have James Sullivan is going to say Rich Gannon. Howie from Foxy Scorpio. Lyle Zotto. Another Howie has been thrown in there as well. <clears throat> oh, man. Can you send me the draft doc, like the Excel sheet? So, Tim Durante, we will get to your super chat in just a second. Let's continue to shout out some of these people. Marcus Allen, Howie Long, Gene Upshaw, Janikowski, Madden, Tim Brown. We got Cliff Branch, more Howie Longs coming in there. Tim Hendricks, Darius Moore, Jim Otto, a.k.a. Mr. Raider. Art Shell, Madden, Rob Stabler, 
Continue to get those uh, coming in here. Zornell Malone said that the Black Sunday needs an NWA shirt. I mean, that's up to them. I already know that they have high-quality shirts, though. Again, BlackSundayShop.com. Use code DRAFT. <clears throat> oh, man. It looks like they were deleted. So let's go to the next Super Chat here from Tim Durante. What do you think Tim Brown's number would have been, okay, if he had the quarterback Jerry Rice had, Brown's best was Gannon, and Rice had him too. So I mean, I, I don't want I, Tim Brown's a great receiver, but I I am a big believer that the greatest of all time is is one Jerry Rice. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Brown what he did, but I do think in terms of like overall ability, in terms of like what he could have done, maybe it would have been comparable to somebody you know like a like a Jerry Rice, but. I can't sit here and tell you that. But what, Jeremy, what's $10 Super Chat? I already forget. If you could please uh, bring that up for me. And then I'm also trying to import some stuff here on my end, which I know I don't normally do. But I uh, want to be able to show you guys some of these awesome shirts here from Black Sunday Shop. So $10 is a roulette wheel. And we're absolutely killing the roulette wheel. So these prices are normally double this. But I wanted to be able to show you guys some other things that we can do here at the Raiders Report. So I'm going to spin the roulette wheel after getting a few things on my end set up. And then once I go ahead and do that, we will be ready to rock and roll. So, Jeremy, what I want you to do is go into photo and then check out the graphics that I just put in there by Black Sunday Shop. Perfect. BlackSundayShop.com code is draft for 20% off. So I really like this shirt here, which uh, you guys can see is the Ice Cube one, one I was telling you about, which can fit great in terms of uh, – being able to be worn with a jacket because I think, you know, being able to stay up to date on your Raiders gear, that's important. Also, their box game, that's what she said. They have collectible boxes, blacksundayshop.com code draft to save 20% off. The Charles Woodson box, like, and if you want to, like, open something up and feel good about it, plus collect something Raiders related, Black Sunday Shop gives you that ability here. If you just need something to be able to wear, I don't know, when you're going out to eat with your girl or if you want to have awesome Raiders gear, I mean, I like these shirts a lot too. It's high-quality gear as well. Like, if you're looking for good graphics, right? Like, look at this skull shirt here. BlackSundayShop.com, code DRAFT for 20% off. I have this shirt. I have the Chucky one. I believe, and I don't don't quote me on this, I think I have 13 or 14 different shirts from Black Sunday Shop. I, I think that they have the best logos in the game. I think they're the most creative people when it comes to designing Raiders shirts out there. Now, I absolutely love what you can get, and you can, if you want to collect something Raiders-related, BlackSundayShop.com, code DRAFT, and their sweatshirts are Carhartt, so they're very, very high quality as well. I want to also mention that. 20% off, code DRAFT, deal ends May 3rd. All right, let's go to Ox3131. What best schools who have players going late rounds in the draft, just like Alabama and Clemson in the early rounds? So, again, I actually don't like to look at the um, terms of, we'll say, um, players in terms of the school. Like, you look for the player, not not the school. But there's some actually some solid players out there from Alabama that are still left on the board. So, all right, we got uh, Ox31. I got to take two beer sips, spun the roulette wheel. So the Panthers pick is actually in, which means the Las Vegas Raiders here are on deck. So what I want you to do is this. Go down in the comments section and let me know who you think the Las Vegas Raiders are going to take here. I am uh, I know they can go a few different ways. Pretty, uh, pretty curious to see how they could end up shaking this pick out. I'm a little bit nervous. I always get nervous right before some of the Raiders picks. <laughs> so who do you want the Raiders to draft? And when we get into the pick, it will be presented by Panda Sup. So just keep that in mind. Who do you want the Raiders to draft? I want you to go down in the comments section and comment it below. I'm uh, I actually think they could go offensive lineman here. I think there could be a few different options. So how about this? Comment who you want. We'll go through Tom Downey's best available players, and then we'll go back to giving some shout outs here. Because I'm uh. I'm curious what you guys have. So in terms of Tom's best players available, the Raiders pick is actually already in. So we'll see what they end up going with here. I'm uh, not really sure which route they are going to take. So once we get the pick, I'll be able to shout it out for you. They're actually going to go with a cornerback. So pretty interesting move there by the Raiders. They're going to go with somebody a little bit unknown. Its name is uh, Nate Hobbs. So we will be able to break that down because, again, this pick is presented by Panda Sup, so we'll keep that in mind here. I got some notes on him. We'll see what Tom had to say about him as well. But um, okay, it's actually uh, I don't think it's that bad of a pick here. 
Again, not really a player that I knew too much about, but the Raiders have done a pretty solid job at least trying to get some extra picks. So, the Raiders report is presented by Panda Supps in a, with round five, pick 167 overall. I wanted to give some love to today's sponsor. Without them, today's show would not be possible. If you guys are trying to stay in shape, if you want to get some new tropics in you, which is basically like this way to stay high-level energy all the time, I take a scoop of new tropics literally every single time before I come on a Raiders Report show. So if you guys want to show them some support, show them some love, I would really appreciate it. It's pandasups.com. Make sure that you guys are using code RaiderNation to save 40% off here. So the Raiders, remember, they ended up trading up a pick, and that's why they have 167. They don't have pick 200 anymore. So I'm waiting to get the uh, cut rolling. So once I get the thumbs up here, we'll, uh, we'll be able to get things rolling. But for, for, the, for the Raiders, the pick, again, is presented by Panda Sup. So I want to be able to see the graphics before they come up on screen. So we got we to gotta get that before we do anything else here. But if you guys are trying to stay in shape, trying to stay in the best shape of your life, again, pandasups.com, code Raider Nation. All right, y'all. So today's show, no, we got to go into the cut right now. Nate Hobbs selected number five overall, 167, cornerback from Illinois. He is the Raiders' fifth round pick here, 5'11, 196. Cornerback 40 overall. Tom had around seven grade on him, so this actually is a little bit of a reach here. 31 tackles, one interception, two pass breakups for the kid from Illinois. I'm a little bit curious why they decided to go at this pick. I'll be able to break a few things down for you all here, but for the Raiders, this is actually going to be their only pick in round five after trading up for uh, safety from Missouri, 31 tackles in 2020, one interception, two pass breakups. I want you to look at the arms, 31 inches, hands, nine and one quarter, wingspan, 75 and a quarter, or 75 and a half, the 40-yard dash time of 4.46. His 2020 snats at Illinois, 31 tackles, two pass breakups, an interception, but the completion percentage, not great. 86.7% in 2019 and 13 games. 67 tackles, 5.5 tackles for loss, 10 pass breakups, 1 interception. I do think the tape in 2019 does look a lot better. And then in 2018 and 9 games, 22 tackles, 3 tackles for loss, 1 pass breakup, 1 interception. He turns 22 before training camp. Maybe he could play safety. Probably going to be a special teamer mostly, but Tom has a great, or around 7 grade on him. But... Not something that's, uh, I guess, too good of a value here. So I am curious to see what the Raiders have to say and what Raider Nation has to say about this pick. Let's look at some of his pro day results here. The 40-yard dash time, 4.46. The 20-yard, 2.56. 10-yard, 1.58 seconds. The agility, 4.7. The three-cone drill, that's actually pretty damn impressive, which is maybe why Gus Bradley decided to go with this route. 17 bench reps, the vertical of 40.5 inches. The broad jump, I mean, in terms of vertical, Jumping ability, that's some high-quality stuff right there. So those are the pro day numbers here for Nate Hobbs, cornerback out of Illinois. So grade the pick, A, B, C, D, or F. Please go down to the comment section and let me know. I am genuinely curious what you guys have to say about this pick here because I'm. Uh, it is a little bit of a reach if I look at Tom's grades, which you guys know I do in actually very much value Tom's grades. So A, B, C, D, or F, please go down in the comments and let me know. Let's continue also to roll through the other picks here by the Las Vegas Raiders. So in terms of picks that they had today and today only, they're not shown yet on screen. Alex Leatherwood at round one, pick 17. Trevon Merrick went 43 overall. Malcolm Kuntz, 79 overall in round three. Divine Diablo, round three, pick number 80. Round four then, uh, we went with the safety from Missouri. We had Tyree Gillespie, Nate Hobbs was round five, pick 167 overall. Now the Raiders still have pick 230. They do not have pick 200, so hopefully we can get that updated here sooner rather than later. But again, the Raiders traded 200, and they traded 162. They ended up giving that away to uh, go up and get Gillespie at uh, from Missouri. So again, today's show, we had a lot of different people watching, which we appreciate. But if you guys could, go down in the comment section right now and let me know what you guys have to say about the Raiders pick here. So what's going to happen now is we want to give some shout outs here to the today's sponsor, Panda Supps. Go to pandasups.com where you can spend $99 and get a free Panda hat. The free hat is with a $100 purchase code 
Raider Nation to save 40% off if you want to go ahead and get the best protein in the game. If you want to go ahead and get the best fruity cereal protein in the game, like that's what they have here. If you also, I don't know if we have the new tropics, if you could show the new tropics in there, that's also a very high quality product because I know we got a lot of gamers out there on YouTube. I know we got a lot of people who, I don't know, watch a lot of videos, which I totally get. If you want to know new tropics, what it is, it's a better replacement than coffee. And if you want to be able to stay focused, maybe you're a teacher, maybe you're a student. I don't know, maybe you got a big time test and you need to help remember something. That's what Nootropics is very good with. So it's going to help you focus on what you're doing. It's going to have that memory and energy. Like I always have people asking me like, Mitch, how do you make so many videos? Or how do you make a video at 2 o'clock in the morning? How do you work 60, 70 hours a week? Honestly, it's because of stuff like Nootropics. You take a scoop and you're ready to rock and roll. So again, you can get this. It is at pandasups.com. But remember, the code is actually Raider Nation and you can save 40% off. So 40% off at pandasups.com. Code is Raider Nation. Code is Raider Nation. So Nate Hobbs, cornerback from Illinois, round five, 167 overall. He's a 5'11", weight, 196-pound guy. Tom had a rate as his 40th overall cornerback, 278 overall. So actually, Tom didn't even know if this guy was going to get drafted around grade seven. I'm probably somewhere around a grade D in terms of overall value, but we'll end up seeing what ultimately happens here with a guy like Nate Hobbs, who he's a good player, but I am hoping that you know a little bit more comes in fruition. Maybe the Raiders see something in him that we personally don't see, but I am looking right now at the live chat, and, uh, well, a lot of people aren't too happy about this pick here. So I don't blame him. It is a little bit of a reach in my personal opinion, but we'll be able to break a few things down and see uh, you know, what, what ends up happening here. But... We, uh, we, we got everything figured out, and some people are asking me some weird questions on the other show, but hey, that, that's all good here. So I think what we need to do here is get a uh, nice little, I will say, cut. It's probably the, probably the way to do it, and we'll have to uh, figure out a way to get a cut. So Jeremy, if you want to go ask uh, James how he wants to get the cut, I think we actually already got one for uh, pick what? We already got one for pick 143, right? All right, so if we already got one for pick 143, what we need to do now is get a cut for pick 167 overall like we have to get an eight minute cut for that so let's just get that set up and that's going to be panda sup so let's uh we'll stick to our guns we'll stick to our plan here i know you guys are probably listening in the background we got a lot of different moving parts happening here so i want to be able to get everyone who has helped today's show get what they deserve so rate the pick don't hold back please let me know down there in the comment section from a scale from zero to 100 that would be greatly appreciated here lucas rojas says um we got 55. Also, Robert Wright says all these professionals in here. I mean, but that's okay. Like, give your personal opinion. Like, that's totally, totally fine. Um, I doubt Nate Hobbs will make the team. He might actually not make the team. And I'm going to be honest with you there. I mean, that's going to happen here or there. So go ahead. Rate the pick. We're about to give you guys a little bit more analysis on why they decided to go this route. And, again, this is probably going to be for the next eight minutes. And then we'll go back to answering some super chats, go back to answering some of your questions. Raider Nation, what's going on? You are watching the Raiders Report, and today's show presented by my good friends Panda Subs. Head on over to Panda Subs where you can save 40% off using code Raider Nation on the best protein. Nootropics, if you're trying to lose a little bit of weight, they got some also fa awesome fat burners there as well. So remember, the Raiders used to have two fifth round picks. They decided to trade up and take somebody in round four, safety from Missouri, and now round five, pick 167 overall. The Las Vegas Raiders have gone out and selected cornerback from Illinois, Nate Hobbs. When you look at the height, 5'11", weight 196 pounds. Now, in terms of grade, Tom had a seventh round grade on him, so I'm going to sit here and trust Tom's analysis because I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I didn't watch too much Nate Hobbs tape. He says that he's a seventh round type of prospect and number 40th cornerback overall. Had him going potentially 278. For those of you that don't know, that's uh, basically a UDFA type of player here. In 2020, 31 tackles, one interception, two pass breakups, which is okay type of production, especially in five games. But let's look at his pro day numbers now. The 40-yard dash time, 4.46. I actually think like that's pretty, pretty solid there. But also, the vertical, that's good. The broad jump, that's really good. The three-cone drill, also pretty productive there for somebody who I think plays corner. But... Also, you still want some numbers that maybe are at least a little bit better. The shuttle is okay. The bench, I don't really worry about that all too much. So I am curious here. What do you all think of the pick here by Hobbs and round five, 167 overall, A, B, C, D, or F? And remember, in round five, I don't know if there's no such thing as a bad pick, 
But if you see a player who you think has upside or who you think can fit in a certain scheme, that's why you go ahead and make the pick. Do I think Hobbs would have been there in round seven? Yes, I do. But I was also, I think, wrong on the Alex Otherwood pick because Merrick ended up falling. Maybe the Raiders know something that we don't. That's all I'm saying. So go down in the comments. Let me know. A, B, C, D, or F as it stands right now. I'm probably going to give this a C, maybe C minus type of grade because I do think it was a little bit of a reach. All right, here are the 2020 stats by Hobbs. 31 tackles. I'll also walk you through what he did in 2019 and 2018, so please be patient. 31 tackles, two pass breakups, one interception. The complete percentage, though, is definitely something that worries me a little bit. 86.7%. And that's in college football. That, that's definitely something to be a little bit worried about. 2019, in 13 games, 67 tackles, 5.5 tackles for loss, the 10 pass breakups, 1 interception. Also 2018, 9 games, 22 tackles, 3 tackles for loss, a pass breakup, and 1 interception. He will turn 22 years old before training camp. When you look at some of the other picks that happened right before him, Sean Davis, a safety from Florida, which is actually a guy that I've talked about a few times on the Raiders report. Keith Taylor, another cornerback from Washington. I do think, though, you're starting to see some players really fall down the board that maybe shouldn't be there because of pro day results or having no NFL combine. When I look at where he could potentially fit here for this team, maybe a safety, but he's probably more of just a special teams player in my personal opinion. And if I'm being really real with y'all, I don't even know if he's going to make the final 53-man roster because he's a good, he's a, he's a special teamer. And I, I think it was a little bit of a reach. All right, so let's look at some of the other picks here by the Raiders. And as a reminder, they don't have pick 200. So if the graphic still says that, please do not show it. Alex Otherwood in round one, pick number 17. Merrig went 43 overall. Koontz, 79. Divine Diablo. Also, Nate Hobbs went 167 overall. And then Tyree Gillespie also went 143 in round four. Who the Raiders, in fact, actually traded up for, which is... Pretty interesting. I was hoping for maybe a little bit of a different result in round five, but that is where it stands right now. So the Raiders have only one more pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, and it's going to be round seven, 230 overall, which they actually ended up getting from the San Francisco 49ers in the trade to go up and get somebody like Trevon Merrig. So he was a senior at Illinois, the cornerback, but again, you're looking at 5'11", 196. I'm going to go through here and real, read some of my uh, notes that I have on Hobbs. 35 career starts, which is something that you like to see. He tested actually pretty pretty well, which is kind of fits into what John Gruden and Gus Bradley like to see. That 40.5 vert, the broad jump, very impressive. Also the bench, the uh, 40 time, very good. The cone drills, the shuttle, also pretty productive there. He returned kicks during his time in, as, uh, in Champaign where he had some pretty good numbers there. He played corner uh, back three, also played a lot of cover three. So that could actually be a reason why you see him bringing him in because Bradley's going to run that cover three scheme. Strong run support guy, was a senior captain, which is obviously something that I know John Gruden likes to see. Coaches speak very, very highly of him. So you're going to see a leader on and off the field. Some of the bad, though. Not a lot of special teams coverage reps, which we'll see if that happens because if that's the truth, then I don't know if he is going to be actually be able to be a special teamer. Pretty raw as a cornerback, just gets beat way too much. Brash play style will lead to excessive contact, so that's something again on Tom. So he's got seven penalties over his last two seasons. Not what you like to see, and he definitely missed some time as a senior due to a shoulder injury, which happened in November 2020. My last, thing, uh, last note here, served a three-game suspension as a sophomore for violating team rules. So it's kind of interesting how you violate team rules, and now you're being looked at as a captain. So we'll see what kind of player we get in Nate Hobbs. So rate the pick, rate the draft so far, 0 to 100. Go down in the comments section right now here on the Raiders Report. And if you're watching this live, we got over 1,200 people watching. So those are the type of numbers that I like to see. So rate the Raiders draft so far from a scale from 0 to 100. 0 being that you don't like it at all. 100 being that you do like it. I'm probably somewhere around this like 88, 87 range, which is a good grade. I'm not going to drop the Raiders draft grade so much because, of, I don't know, I don't like a pick in round five. Maybe they know something that I personally don't, but we'll ultimately see what happens here for the Las Vegas Raiders. All right, y'all, so we're going to be doing this now. We're going to be going through some more Super Chats, and as long as you keep Super Chatting, I can stay live. As soon as the Super Chats end is when we're actually going to send it back over to Chat Sports, and then I'll be back for round seven pick here by the Las Vegas Raiders. But, hey, if you continue to Super Chat, we can continue to stay live. It's, uh, it's pretty simple. So let's go to Tim Durante. If Brown had Montana, Young, and then Gannon, Brown was a top five when he retired. Sorry to beat the rug. 
I've uh, already had some fireballs today. You don't need to apologize for that. I'm, I am team fireball, so I, I totally get that. And if you have an opinion and you want to get your, you know, name out there, or you want to get your opinion, like, that's why we do these shows. Because far too often I met way too many Reddit friends that felt like, that, hey, man, I don't have a voice. You have a voice. You just have, you know, have an opportunity to get on screen. So, Tim, it's all good. Cheers to you, my man. So you send in a $5 super chat, which means I got to take a sip of beer and answer your question. If you have a $10 super chat you want to get on the board, we'll spin the roulette wheel. We'll get the drinking games going. $15 if you have a company, a business, a Twitter, an Instagram, anything you want to promote, it's a $15 super chat. $20 super chat, we'll take a fireball shot. And if you want to come on the Raiders Sport on Tuesday, $100 super, and we'll get you on the show. Raiders draft Nate Hobbs. Cheers. So, Rico, I appreciate you, my man. You're always watching the show, always super chatting him. Just know that I uh, I definitely definitely appreciate you. All right, we got what else here? We got Mike Lopez. Let me uh, let me read this the way it should be. <clears throat> Why the Raiders didn't draft Brevin Jordan, a Vegas native, could have been used as a tight end, halfback. Also, what do you think of Demetric Felton, running back, and Dylan Moses? So, I'll be honest, Brevin Jordan has already been drafted. I'm pretty sure. So I think he went a few picks before the Raiders did. So that's why. And then a guy like Demetric Felton, I don't really see the fit there. He's he's a good he's a good player from UCLA, but he's more of just like a college football player to me. It's not the type of a prospect that I would use for the Raiders. Dylan Moses, the reason why he's falling is the knees are scaring people, and they should. I saw some people want him going round three. I always had a round five draft grade on him, so this is actually where I anticipated Dylan Moses going. Let's go to Ignacio. What up, my man? We got two more after this. Merrick, a future pro bowler. I'm turnt right now. Family barbecue. Laugh out loud. Love the show. Uh, absolutely love that you're watching the show at a family barbecue. Tell the family that I say what's up. But I agree that Merrick is going to be a future pro bowler. Like That's how confident I am in him. And he's just got to be overall fit. And I think he's going to fit well in the cover three. Cheers to you, my man. Much love. All right. We could grab BYU Tonga if he keeps falling. You don't have any opportunity to grab him if he keeps falling. Like, if he falls to pick 70... And then you have an opportunity, right? But you can't trade up anymore because you just don't have the, the, the picks there. All right, this is a different one? You sure? Merrick, a future pro. We just did this one. Isn't it? Love the show, Mitch. Oh, it says go Lakers, go Raiders, go Fresno. All right, yeah, no, you're right. It is a different one. He kept he kept the very, very beginning, but then just put go Lakers, go Raiders, go Fresno State. He said he's turning up. All right, man. Well, Ignacio, if you want to turn up on the Raiders sport on Tuesday, Send him that $100 super, and we'll, we'll really get turned up. All right, we got Ron Staley here. Think Deonta Brown or Dylan Moses in round seven. We'll see how far they slide. Excuse me. But I would be surprised if they slid that far. Now, if one of those players wanted to, I don't know. I mean, if they're on the board in round seven, love that value. Absolutely would you know, adore that type of value. But when you look at the overalls here, I mean – I personally would have liked Devon or Deonta Brown instead of, you know, the guy we just picked in round five. Uh, what's his name? Hobbs, excuse me. Trey Smith, offensive guard from Tennessee. And then Marvin Wilson probably would have been some other routes that I go. But you're seeing some of these players fall down the draft board because they didn't have the combine. So a lot of times, like, they didn't have that opportunity for coaches to, you know, talk about certain players, figure out which prospects ultimately end up happening. So... If, uh, if it does happen, I'm okay with that. All right, y'all, so we got 1,000 people watching, 786 likes. This is what's going to happen. I am going to give you guys, I'm going to transfer you over to our main chat sports broadcast, and then when the Raiders are back at pick 230 is when I'm going to come back, so I'll probably come back at around 220, 225, and really get you guys hyped up here. So, yeah, when you're good, I mean, we got plenty of time. So contact them, let them know what's going to happen, but that's going to be the game plan here. And uh, I might actually have to go do some drinking over on our main chat sports channel as well, where you guys can find us there at youtube.com slash chat sports TV. But a, lot, a thousand people watching, I don't want you guys to go anywhere, but you know we can stay more up to date on everything going on around the draft. So when I get the AOK, -okay, I mean, if you guys want to continue to send in supers or if you have any questions, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, we're sitting here waiting to see what the Raiders can do. If you want to actually bring up a question, Jeremy, if you can find one, if you guys want to use hashtag Raiders here until we get everything set up on our end, you can please go ahead and do that. So if you use hashtag Raiders or Super Chat, we will get them on the board. We got 796 likes. So how many games will the Raiders win this year? And I like that you put in 17 games because I'm not going to lie. There's been a few opportunities where I, like, I've been like, all right, how many games? Like 8-8, 9-7, 10-6. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. So how many games will the Raiders win this year? Go down in the comments and predict it. How many games do you think the Raiders are going to win, Jugs? Uh, I, like the, I like what the Raiders are doing. Um, it, for me, it all depends on Carr. 
Okay. Gotcha. Yep. I think the Broncos have had a good offseason. Chargers have done a good job. Okay, nine and eighteen. Okay, no, I, I think that's uh, very, very fair. Uh, what people are thinking, I'm seeing a lot of tens. I'm seeing some twelves, seeing elevens in there. I'm kind of with Jeremy. I'm with, I'm with you know this like nine to ten range, and I think they've gotten a little bit better each and every season. But until I see the defense improve, I can't say this is a ten-win football team. So I'm actually probably in agreement with you. I'm probably going to go nine and eight. And once the Raiders do release their schedule, we'll also be able to probably give you know. A little bit more analysis on how many games they'll win. I'll also be able to break down the entire schedule, and I'll also give my predictions on that regard. So we just got a super chat come in, and then we will wrap this bad boy up. I was getting real upset at the draft, but maybe 2020 was the bad draft, and this year's corrected. Good picks, but not positions we need. Six safeties and cornerbacks. I mean, it is positions that we need, though. Like they they wanted to be able to address the cornerback position. Like I think this is bad news for a guy like Keyshawn Nixon. Gus Bradley wanted to totally reamp this defense which was really bad last year so it's okay getting rid of the worst defense in the league and getting a whole bunch of new faces but um, uh, I'm curious to see what the Raiders do going forward in the offseason maybe they go out and sign some free agents as well but Robert I appreciate you let me get a sip of beer here before I'm going to send you over to the chat sports team which is basically going to be a simulcast where we're going to be live here on the Raiders Report and our chat sports YouTube channel so you'll see the guys over there breaking down every single pick that's happening here in the draft. I want you to go ahead and subscribe to the Raiders Report youtube.com slash Raiders Report so go ahead and hit that big red button that says subscribe. Alright y'all we're going to simulcast right now. Much love Raider Nation. Start spamming Raiders in the comments. I put him as an edge. He might be a... Th uh does he move maybe more back to a 4-3 scheme? I'm going to call him a defensive end no matter what scheme he ends okay. up playing there. Good run stopper. Five-second flat 40 is not great at his size. I don't think he's going to bring you much in the pass rushing game. It's just not what he's good at. But as a potential run stopper, I think there is some other. I had a seventh-round grade, but we're almost to round six, so it's fine at that point. This super chat coming in from Grayson Lanning. Where do you predict Jamie Newman and Sam Ellinger go? Two quarterbacks. I think they go at some point within the next, you know, before the end of the draft. Uh, Newman was a tough eval for me. Uh, the highs oh, were great. Out, right? Yeah, he opted yeah. out. Good arm strength. I have him at 210 overall, a sixth round grade. So we're getting into his range here. Really surprised how early Ian Book ended up going. Uh, Sam Ellinger was 260, a seventh round grade for me. I think both those guys are backups. I think Newman's got a higher ceiling because of his top end athletic ability and his arm. But he opted out. He wasn't good at the Senior Bowl. And without Sage Surratt, he struggled at Wake Forest significantly. So he's a massive wild card. He shouldn't be taken until around this range. So I think the NFL has got him judged pretty right on that front. Yeah, so a couple of quarterbacks left. Jamie Newman, Sam Ellinger, Shane Bouchel out of SMU, not far from where we are headquartered here in Dallas. Felipe Franks, a guy who I think improved his yeah. game a little bit by going to Arkansas. Sam Pittman did a hell of a job in 2020 kind of bringing Arkansas football back. Shout out your favorite candy in the comment section. Tom, what is your favorite candy? Two answers, Reese's and then any type of like gummy bear. Okay. So we have some gummy worms yeah, in the studio. The sour, Do you like those or I no? don't mind it, but not for like doing this stuff on air because I'm gonna get my mouth's gonna get dried out and I just don't want that right now. Oh, but James Yoder, are, CEO are is gonna like this one. Uh, Twizzlers. There's some Twizzlers over there. James I see is them. a big Twizzler guy. Uh, Twix, Skittles, Crunch, Skittles, Jolly Rancher, Sneaky Good, um, Ben DiNucci. Not a candy. Not a candy. Terrible quarterback. Not a candy. Uh, broccoli. Weird. Hershey. I'm from Pennsylvania. Shout out, Hershey. Nice. Well Kit done. Kat, Twix, uh, Gummy Bears, Skittles, Starbucks. Starbuck, or, uh, Starbucks Starbucks is a coffee. Starburst, pretty good. Starburst, that makes um, sense, yeah. There's I some would, Starburst yeah, over there, too. I would have to we go Reese's. Reese's is my number one. And let me say this. During Easter time, the Reese's eggs, so much better than the regular Reese's. More peanut butter. And also the Big Cup Reese's, next level. I'm just going to say that. I also like Starburst, but for some reason they make me sweat. I don't know why. They, they make me like it's sweat. Weird. I, I, Starburst make me sweat, yes. For some reason, like candy, especially if I eat like sour stuff, mm. makes me sweat. I don't know. I I'm need, a weird guy. I need to be your guys. Baby Ruth. 
That's interesting. I need a beer. Picks in for, for the Jets, nice. Chase. All right. Pick in for the Jets. With the 175th overall pick in round five, Jason Pinnock. Pinnock. He's in our database. I didn't watch him. <laughs> and We're that's stumped. very rare. So, okay. Kind of, hey, sort of. This is really funny because who's the cornerback that Dallas drafted last night? Uh, Nashawn Wright. He was your 278th I literally almost prospect. didn't bother watching him. And, like, that is further clarification as to how much work Tom Downey puts into his draft evaluations because he still had his 278th ranked prospect and was able to break it down. But Jason Pinnock, haven't watched him, but cornerback he's, out of Pittsburgh he's going in to our, the New York Jets. in our database – we know he exists. I didn't watch him. So if I didn't watch somebody, which I watched like 350 players or at least studied them and research whatever. You're a baller. I'm drinking for it. If they're not in our database, I'm just doing multiple shots. Like our database is so deep. I'll make producer Brett do one with me too. We got like 600 names, but I didn't watch Jason Pinnock. Good athlete. I do know this. Good athlete. And that's probably why he got drafted special teams guy. Yeah, let's get to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers pick here in round five. K.J. Britt, linebacker out of Auburn. I'm not sure if he's got any relation to Kenny Britt. I don't believe so. Who was a decent wide receiver, but K.J. Britt going to the Bucks, round five, pick number 176. I, I did watch him. Uh, throwback, run stopper, linebacker. That is what Kenny Britt is. He's, he's, uh, he, might be, he, he might be a one-down guy. That's my concern there. He does play with violence. And... 10, 15 years ago, he might be an early round pick there. But he's bad in coverage. I don't love the athletic ability. Coming off an injury here uh, for, for Auburn, but I had a six this round grade, so not too much of a reach there in the end. But honestly, I don't love the Bucks draft, but that's okay because, you know, they just won the damn Super Bowl. I'll tell you this. So for the Michigan Wolverines, they haven't had a lot of success in previous years in terms of compiling wins. But throughout the 2021 NFL draft, they have had a bunch of players selected and some good ones at that. Cam McGrone going to the New England Patriots, linebacker with the Wolverines, rocking the maize and blue, continues to rock some blue going to the Patriots oh, yeah. at pick number 177 in round five. Tom Downey, what do you think about this selection? Really good upside here. Now, he tore his ACL in November 2020. That's why there's no testing for him, but he's a fantastic athlete. I think the medical helped him slide here. I had a fourth round grade on him. I thought he showed a lot of promise in 2019. He is a gifted athlete. He's going to Michigan with Josh Uche, Chase Winovich. The New England Wolverines are all out there right now. Unproven. <laughs> significant upside though for the New England Patriots I like this pick a lot I'm a big fan of this one great value here he still needs work in coverage but he has the athletic ability to grow in in that area great range good tackler when he when he reads it correctly which he doesn't always because he's young he's not yet 21 years old and only played in like five games this past year for Michigan. There's a lot of upside here. This is a very worthwhile gamble. Even if he's a medical redshirt type of year, uh, a year one guy, obviously it's like IR for NFL. Yeah, whatever. not active on game. Yeah, day. but yeah. like not, he sits out a year. This could be a future start for them. This is a really good pick by New England. Historically, I don't like their drafts. I really like this one, though. They're, they're crushing it. It's crazy because Bill Belichick oftentimes doesn't do a great job of selecting players at points in the NFL but draft. But volume matters. But volume matters, and sometimes he just figures out a way to get guys in round five, like Cam McGrone out of Michigan, mm -hmm. pick number 177, and he puts them into his defensive system, and they're able to flourish. Honorable mention, all Big Ten in 2019, same with 2020. 11 tackles for loss over the course of his career, four sacks, mm -hmm. three and a half sacks back in 2019, one fumble force in his career as well. I could see this being like a sneaky good Bill Belichick pick where he just maybe wasn't utilized to his strengths. Just needs more time at to grow. Michigan under Don Brown, but Bill Belichick's about to get his hands on him and be like, hey, Cam McGrone, I got him. So let us know what you think of Cam McGrone going to the New England Patriots here at pick number 177 in round five. Great it for us. Hop into the comments and let us know A, B, C, D, or F. A lot of Michigan players going on day mm -hmm. two, a couple who have gone on day three here in the 2021 NFL Draft. Let's move ahead to the Green Bay Packers pick in round five, pick number 178. 
Shamar Jean Charles, cornerback out of Appalachian State. Nice. He's a nickel guy. Mm. I, I like him. He's a good nickel corner there. I think it's a good pick here by the Green Bay Packers. Cool. So Shamar Jean Charles going to the Packers in round five. The Dallas Cowboys pick here in round five, brought to you by our friends at Manscaped. You see how, like, I just don't have any hair on my face and Tom Downey's beard is looking great? That's all thanks to Manscaped and the Lawn Mower 3.0. We're able to stay fresh and look good. Go to manscaped.com slash chat. You get 20% off plus free shipping on the best male grooming products. And with the Dallas Cowboys fifth round pick, number 179 overall, Samai Fihoku? Did I Almost. say that right? Simi Fihoku out of Stanford. As you can tell on my board here, I love this pick. I, I am a big fan of this one. Out of Stanford, the wide receiver. He is a boom or bust player. Don't get me wrong on that one. I have a fourth round grade on him. You get him here in round five. He does turn 24 as a rookie, but there's a lot of stuff that you like here. Go watch the UCLA game. Now, there were some drops in that one. So that's not exactly ideal for, for him. He torched UCLA. I mean, he balled out in that game. It is a very small sample size here that you're looking at in terms of what you're, what you're trying to find an upside. Almost 6'4", 222 pounds, ran a 4'3", a sub 6'8", three cone. The size athletic ability is absolutely there. Final game for Stanford? School record 230 receiving yards included the game-winning touchdown. I'm a big fan of this pick. The traits are there. The size, the speed, all that stuff checks off the boxes. The skills, route running, the hands at times, the, even some of the ball tracking, it's not there yet. But as a developmental guy in year one who could potentially replace Michael Gallup down the road, that's a really good pick here. I love this one. Kellen Moore got to make probably his first actual pick in this year's draft. <laughs> Simi Fayoko is a fantastic pick here by the Dallas Cowboys. Jabril Cox and Fayoko and the shitty person, two good picks there so far. Good job there by the Dallas Cowboys. If he hits, and he's, he might not, it's day three, it's always risky. If he hits, I got Cortland Sutton vibes here. That okay. type of play He's style really yeah. is, is, is what Fayoko could end up being here. So if the Cowboys end up moving on from Michael Gallup or maybe even Amari Cooper next year, this could be your potential replacement. Simi Fayoko out of Stanford. Now, they're pretty set at the wide receiver position. You think this is BPA? I think this is a future need and probably some BPA as okay. well. Gallup and Cedric Wilson and Noah Brown are all on one-year deals on their contracts. They took their first skill guy on offense. This is a good pick. This is an A for me. I love this pick. So Tom Downey gives it an A. What grade are you going to give this pick for the Dallas Cowboys? A, B, C, D, or F? I think the Dallas Cowboys here on day three have redeemed themselves a little bit. Jabril Cox, really like that pick. We're not going to mention that one guy who got picked. Offensive tackle out Josh of Bell. Marshall. Yeah, we're not going to mention his name. We don't need to. Hey, it's all good. Still mad. But grade, grade this pick for us. A, B, C, D, or F. Hey, we're staying fresh here at Chat Sports. You know how we do that? Manscaped. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. You go to manscaped.com slash chat. You get 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code chat. Hold up the lawnmower 3.0. Now, so this is what I recommend. Dude, Dana White. You can, you can change, like, the guard and the blade a little bit. You can use that on Tom Downey's beard, Harrison Graham's beard. But also, if your lady thinks that it's really scary down below, you can also use the you lawnmower 3.0 downstairs. Makes and the good bigger. news is, if you use the promo code CHAT at that link, $63.99. Not quite $69. But $63.99 instead of we'll count it. $79.99. It's rechargeable. It's also waterproof. So if you're like squatting over the toilet and you drop the lawnmower 3.0 in the toilet, it's not like that's going to go down the drain and you can't use it again. It's waterproof. So that's one of the great uh, aspects of this product right here. So lawnmower 3.0 brought to you by Manscaped. So go to manscaped.com slash chat, enter the promo code chat, and you get 20% off plus free shipping. Another pick for the 49ers in round five, this back, time back 180 overall. And my goodness, I mean, not only are we shotgunning beers, we're taking shots, we're drinking here on the show, but these names have been really difficult to pronounce. And so... Do you want to try or do you want I, me to do it? I remember 
in Illinois when I worked there. I covered Albert Okwa Abenam, yeah, who great is name. now with the Denver Broncos, the guy who Sam Brown knows well. Great tight end at Missouri. That prepared me to pronounce some of these names correctly. I'm going to – let me let – me, let me, You're going to try it. Okay. I got it locked and loaded. Talanoa Hufanga. He nailed it. Look Bang. at that. Bang. Talanoa Bang. Hufanga. Niner gang. Mike Safety Bang. linebacker hybrid here at a USC. Good production in his time with, with the Trojans there. 21 starts in just three years of the short in 2020. I think he's going to fit with what the Niners have liked to do on defense there. He can blitz. Got to keep him near the line of scrimmage, okay? Further away from the line of scrimmage he gets, it's going to be more dicey there. I think medical caused him to drop without it. I was going to give him a fourth, maybe even a 3-4 grade here. The shoulders are concerns there. Broken right collarbone 2018 in 2019 as well. Had a steel plate installed. Then dislocated it again in 2019. And then had surgery after the year and then a concussion. So that right shoulder, I think, was flagged by some teams. But upside here, I like the pick by... Uh, the 49ers. Yeah, Jimmy Ward, Jaquiski Tart, getting a little bit longer in the tooth. This gives you a 21-year-old at the safety position. Decent value if he hits in round five. Continuing on in round five, pick number 181 for the Kansas City Chiefs, Cornell Powell, wide receiver out of Clemson. Hey, a lot of Clemson guys going in the draft, and, you know, that's, that's shout-out to Dabo Sweeney for developing a lot of these NFL prospects. Cornell Powell is another one. You know, good route runner. I mean, if you guys remember the Sean Wade falling all over himself against Clemson in the Ohio State game, that was Cornell Powell who put him in a, in a blender and broke his ankles there all together. Late bloomer, just the one year of production. Good hands. There's some slot and outside ability. I don't know if he's ever going to be more than a number three or maybe even a low end two, but probably more of a three, four guy. But guess what? You got Tyree Kill. You'll be okay there if you're Kansas City. I think so. Yes, and they also drafted a tight end, too, earlier on. Yeah, they so did. Noah Graham. They continue to uh, I like this address pick more. the offensive side of the football. So Cornell Powell, wide receiver out of Clemson, going to the Kansas City Chiefs in round five, pick number 181. I like his size. I mean, like, in terms of the height, average at six foot, but he is 200 four pounds. So he does have a little bit of sturdiness to him as well. And as we look at some of his pro day results, a reason why it's guys like good. slide back to this point is because yeah, he runs a four five forty. So mm -hmm. it's not great. The shuttle ain't great. 10 yard ain't great. Um, so that's why Cornell Powell shifts to uh, round five pick number 181. This is the first of two picks for the Atlanta Falcons because at pick number 182, they made this selection another crazy name. They're also uh, on the clock, pick number 183, as I'm looking at the screen here. Tom, I'm going to give you this one so, because I've been taking the heat here for all these names. We, he goes by a day. His first name is a day. It's much easier to say there. <laughs> nice. A day. Much easier. Ogan Deji. So it's actually not, once you get it going now, it's Next not hard. Level. A day Ogan Deji there. Freaky length, by the way, 35 and a half inch arms. He is still developing. He did not pick up football until he was in high school. So this is an, an underdeveloped but promising player. Good testing. The 4 7 8 40 was pretty solid there. Six forced fumbles. Does a good job to get that ball in there and knock it out there. Good strength. 26 bench prep preps was pretty solid for his size that there. Good. Coming off a seven tackle for loss, seven sack season. Now, he's not quite as good of an athlete as Dalen Hayes, his teammate, as Notre Dame is. You got to get him to play lower, got to get him to process better. But I like the upside here. The, 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 the leverage issues and not being a great bender are a red flag here. I had him as a fifth round grade, number 179. So we are right in the ballpark here in terms of where I thought he should go. It's a good pick by the Falcons. So they're throwing some picks now at defense. Uh, Taquan Graham and a day Ogundeji. Some tricky names, Falcons fans, <laughs> but some solid players none nonetheless. Yeah, thoughts and prayers out to the radio hosts and uh, those That's a who fun cover one, the though. Falcons, including Ogundeji. us, who have to say some of those names. Uh, yeah, like the Falcons throughout the draft, you know, I, I think they've made some pretty good picks. Ogundeji, the reason why a guy like this falls to round five, very upright. Right, yeah. very upright, doesn't have that bend to kind of get around the corner. So uh, in terms of his pass rush skills, a little bit limited in that regard, but a strong guy at that uh, going to the Falcons. Round five, pick number 182 as the round five continues here in the NFL draft in 2021, live here on Chat Sports with around 3,000 people watching us live. Thank you guys. So because it's day three of the NFL draft, we've been live 
since early this morning. We got in at 8.30. We probably got done work last night at like 2.30 a.m. So we haven't slept much, and we want to stay awake, and we want to drink a little bit more. How can we do that? Our Super Chat menu. So and because definitely. we're on day three of the NFL draft, uh, the Super Chat menu, 50% off. This is like when you go to a store, and you see a fresh pair of Jordans, and you're like, oh my gosh, they were originally $250. They're on sale for $100. Let me cop those, and I'll be looking good. I'll be looking fine. Look good, feel good. So our Super Chat menu, 50% off. $5 beer cheers. $10, and we'll talk about your team. $15 roulette wheel. $25 for a fireball shot. We are currently at $817.68 in Super Chats. I want to challenge everybody watching right now. Let's get to $1,000 in Super Chats. I will do another shotgun. This is evidence that I've already done one. You see the hole in the beer here. So let's get to $1,000 in Super Chats. And uh, we also have a drink or do game coming up at $1,000 as well because we like to ball out and have fun here at Chat Sports. Let's get to some more Super Chats. Cryptic chiming in. Clearly a Cowboys fan. Come on, Dallas Safety. Spam it. Send the energy. Send not, the energy, baby. Working. Send the energy. $5 from Shell Sharp. Tom, what are the chances sixth rounders and seventh rounders make the Cowboys team? Not that high, but it's crazy stuff happens. You're taking shots in the dark there in the end. Yeah. I mean, look, you got to perform in training camp. So that's what it comes down to. Jabralin Van Zandt. What is up with all these crazy names today? Baller Appreciate name, the $5 bro. super chat, though. That is a ballin' name. Do you go by Ja? Let us know in the comments. Let's see. Uh, Tom and Chase. Should the Texans go after Puka Williams if he's still on the board in the sixth nah, round? Nah, Puka was accused of domestic violence too, so like I'm, I'm out on those Tom's guys. out. I like, mean, and you should be I'm out. Like, look, you know, you deserve second chances in life for sure, but like if you Man, rough up a woman, I, I can't women. really that's forgive that. Hard. And I don't care if you're drunk, if you're feeling some emotions, don't put your hands on a female mm. in an aggressive manner. Maybe if you guys are, mm. you know, getting down and, uh, Trying to get down and have fun and have a good time. Sexual, but physically? Nah, come on. All right, so the Baltimore Ravens just made a pick at 184 mm. in the fifth round. Ben Mason, tight end in Michigan. Which we'll come back to. Okay, cool. Let's catch up on some picks right now. So Avery Williams, cornerback out of Boise State, going to the Falcons round five, pick number 183. Tom Downey is bouncing up and down. You I don't see it. him right now, but he's bouncing oh, up and down because he's really excited about this. This dude's pick. the best special teams player in the NFL draft. Hey. I gave him a six-round grade because I don't know what the hell you do with him. I, I took my shoes off, by the way, Producer Sam, so you're, you're fine. I'll just stand on my tippy toes here. My feet are killing me. Um, I don't know where the hell you play him. Like He's not a good cornerback, but – this is the best special teamer in this year's class. Fantastic athlete, even though he is undersized, 5'8", 187. Let me read this off for you. Nine career touchdowns on special teams, five on punt returns, three on kick returns, one was on a blocked punt on a scoop and score. He also blocked five kicks, three punts, a field goal, and an extra point, and a forced fumble on kickoff coverage. He honestly might be like a running back or receiver in the NFL, like two comps. You're like Jamal Agnew, corner wide receiver there in the end. Maybe he goes to offense. I don't know. This is a special teams pick, and I adore it. This is fun, man. I mean, is there anybody else that is breaking down the 183rd overall pick in round five to the degree that Tom Downey is breaking down Avery Williams and as excited to do so as Tom Downey? They made the pick, and Tom Downey's like this. Yes, I can't wait. This is awesome. Nerd I can't wait to break this teams, down. Baby. I'm so You'll excited. The best special teamer in the draft, according to Tom Downey, Avery Williams going to the Falcons. Let's get to pick number 184 to the Baltimore Ravens. Ben Mason, tight end out of Michigan. So another Michigan cat going in the NFL draft. So, hey, you can rip Jim Harbaugh for not picking up wins against Ohio State. Last year, they were a disaster in that six-game season in the Big Ten, COVID-shortened season. But you got to give him credit for churning out some NFL products, right? Of course Ben Mason goes from one Harbaugh to the other one here. This is, yeah. a, this is not a surprise. Now, some people had him viewed as, as a tight end here. I think this is truly Patrick Ricard 2.0, a potential three-way player in the NFL offense, defense, and special teams. He played fullback for Michigan, then they moved him over to defensive line. He bulked up to 270 and then came back and was like kind of sort of a, a tight end here. He's going to make your 53-man roster. He'll be special teamer. He'll be like the flex guy. They like fullbacks on that roster. Logical fit here for Ben, for ben Mason and, and the Baltimore Ravens here. 
that's a logical connection right there. Yeah, and I think too if you sense. can get guys this late in the draft who are going to contribute right away uh, on special teams, especially a guy who's strong, strong CEO too. James Yoder, uh, host of the Michigan Football Report, huge Michigan fan, give him a follow on Twitter. Uh, he continues to break down the Michigan football team, Michigan basketball team as well, and his sarcasm is just out of this world. It's awesome. Also a great boss. Uh, talking about Ben Mason's bench, really strong dude as well. So can contribute on special teams right away going from hardball to hardball. Let's take a look at some of your best players available right Draft now. Draft our Darius Washington, you coward. Top 100. Yeah. Come on. Ridiculous. Yeah. I know he's small. Played opposite of Trevon Merrick. not that great of an athlete. He's yeah. Good football player, man. Yeah, I thought Forsyth. I was going to be too low with him on a, a three, four round grade. I got four top 100 guys left. Yeah. Deontay Brown must have some medical. Trey Smith does have medical. Marvin Wilson, I think, has medical too. Washington Small, not sure what's up with Stone Forsyth or David Moore or Quincy Roche. Uh, Marlon Tuipolo too, I thought I was going to be low on compared to everybody else. Kay Johnson's underrated. Charles Snowden is kind of a tweener. And Shakir Brown didn't test very well, but has great ball skills. So. We're in a weird spot there as we get to around. We're in round six now, that right? Yeah. Round six? Uh, yeah, Pretty officially sure now. Six. Yeah. Round six, pick number, what, 195 as the Los Angeles, 185? Okay, I'm trying to look at it right here. Hey, we're reacting all to it live, so bear with us here. Uh, so, hey, we're trying to get to 250,000 subscribers, but, hey, let's, 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 let's. Incremental. Yeah, yeah, incrementally, okay, let's get to 246,000. And as Sam Brown just said in my ear, like, let's manage our expectations a little bit. Now, we like to shoot here at Chat Sports. Like, we go hard, we go in. We're trying to get to 246,000 subscribers, and we are 27 away. It's not far. 245,973. Uh, so smash that subscribe button down below if you haven't already done so. It's the big red button. Or if you want to make it harder for yourself, you go to youtube.com slash chatsportstv. If we get to 246,000 subscribers on the channel, Sam, Sam Brown will take a shot. I will join him in taking a shot. So 246,000 subscribers. We're shooting for it right now. Get us there in the next like minute or two. We have six more, so we're at 245,979. Get us to 246. Sam Brown will come on screen. He will do a shot. I will take a shot as well. And is anybody else out there doing what we are doing here at Chat Sports? Tom Downey, our resident draft expert, breaking down every single pick to a degree that nobody else is doing. And we also like to have fun because if we get to 246,000 subscribers, we drink. I just shotgunned a beer in like three plus seconds. I mean, we're killing it here. Another super chat coming in from Burning Spades, $15. Other than the shitty guy, which has been the worst pick so far. Also, top three running back and defensive line prospects left for Atlanta. How much longer till the Falcons channel gets a live show? I'd say the guy I didn't study, but I might just be wrong on him. So we'll give them the benefit of the doubt on that front. Uh, running backs, Dimitri Felton, kind of a tweener. I like Khalil Herbert, Elijah Mitchell, two possible sleepers for me at the running back position. Defensive line, you just spent some more picks on that, so I think you're okay there. Marvin Wilson, I'm a big Kyrus Tonga fan, by the way, as well, out of BYU if you want a run stopper nice. on that front. We just got to 246 there, Sam. Bang. There we go. Bang. You love to see it. All right, well, they get the shot set up here. Yes, Nick sir. Uh, Neiman is the pick here by the L.A. Chargers. This is, by the way, the younger brother of Ben Neiman, who hung around the NFL for a while. Very good athlete. You draft him to be an athletic linebacker and hope that he's able to grow in coverage. 167 on my board, a fifth-round grade, special teams value here. You draft the athlete without a doubt. The 44840 was juiced, but 234, even if you add 0.1, maybe 0.6 to juice the pro days there, that's impressive. He's bad coverage, though, not a good blitzer, so you got to develop him there. But in round six, I love the value here for the Chargers. Good pick as L.A. continues to draft pretty damn well. Let's get to another pick, this time for the New York Jets in round six. As Let's round go! Round six is underway live here on Chat Sports. Hamsa Nasruddin. Close. Nasruddin. Nasruddin. Huh? The, the, the S is kind of an R, and then they kind of skip the A. It becomes Nasruddin. Nasruddin. Okay, cool. Nasruddin Break here out of Florida us. State. Now, I am very surprised he fell. I get he's kind of skinny, but he's 6'3", 215 pounds, 34-inch arms. He was my best available player. 
72 overall, one of my last remaining pure third round grades here. Kind of that nickel dime safety. He's not great in coverage, but he's a great tackler. Only played two games this year. He tore his ACL in November of last year, 2019. And I'm going to guess here that something popped up medically and that caused him to slide down because he's fun. He, I, I love these tweener linebacker safety hybrids in today's NFL. Now, he's not great in coverage yet, but he has the traits too. And oh, by the way, he's a fantastic special teamer as well. Great tackler. I might bulk him up and make him into a linebacker. This is one of my favorite Jets picks so far here on day three. I'm a big, big fan of this pick by New York. Let's get to the Atlanta Falcons' recent pick, 187 overall hey. in the sixth round. Frank Darby, wide receiver out of Arizona State. All I right. see the smile I on your face. I like you this like one it? here. Yeah, Frank Darby's a fun football player. Uh, I gave him a sixth round grade, 207, so we're right in the sweet spot there. Yep. Disappointing 2020. Part A, part of the whole, the whole COVID opt-out stuff here. Only had 12 targets and six catches this past year, but was putting up 20 yards per catch over his first three years. He can be a vertical threat. That's what I think he's going to be in the NFL, an outside guy. Drops are a red flag there. Did not test great. 4.59 at 201 is not ideal, but he's a willing blocker. I think Arthur Smith will value that as well. Good locker room guy as well. You know, missed two games this year because of a, a rib issue. Had a, a family issue with his daughter in December. Cost him most of, of his 2020 campaign. There's some upside here. Solid pick by the Falcons. New England Patriots now on the clock. Frank Round Sam over six, here. pick 188. But before we do that, we got to 246,000 subscribers. That was the call to action. You all responded. Thank you to that as we try to get to 250,000 subscribers eventually. Sam, uh, you want to come over here and I can, or I'll, I'll no, give you the shot over here. Okay. I'd like to, and I wanted to say thank there you to go. the people. Yeah. There we go. Hey, appreciate Spit you guys. some truth, yeah. This is for you guys. Appreciate the 246,000 subs. The this youngest employee here at Chat Sports too. Sam we'll Brown. see how long until that's no longer the case. Absolutely killing the game. So thanks for getting us 246,000 subscribers. Bottoms up. You can come in, Tom. All right, I'm, I'm just uh, you know, stretching my knees out. Yeah, stop uh, doing some swat, uh, squats right now. Yeah, I, I got I got baseball I, catcher and golf knees. They're bad. Some, they're like, bad. They're bad as I age. Yeah. What'd uh, you play uh, baseball? Uh, you were a catcher? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Cool. You, I caught. How was your, uh, your pop time? Uh, I wasn't... I wasn't like the pop time guy. I was okay. the, okay, we got a wild pitcher in there. Get your ass in there and stop everything. Okay. So they, Hey, they let me call pitches in grade school, which was So fun. you were tough as hell. You dropped down to your knees and blocked balls if you yeah. had to. Yeah. I, nice. my, my junk's Some taking a beating. Take that the wrong my way, junk's but. taking a beating. Thank God for Manscaped making it look better. For sure. Lawnmower 3.0 yeah. right in front of yeah. you. Very thankful for those products as well. Very so, proud I got to call, call, call pitches as, <laughs> as, as a not even teenager. No doubt. Very, very no proud doubt. of that. So the New England Patriots on the clock right now. But I was slow, um, so, I, so it didn't last. So <laughs> You're fast with your analysis, though. That's yeah, all that matters just, nowadays. Yeah, I'm not, not athletic enough to make it or anything other than golf. Let's take a look at what the New England Patriots have done so far as we rave I about Tom it. Downey's athletic skills. He I'm also a is a rave. really good golfer. Are you quite a scratch golfer? No. No? Okay. I, if, if I like could quit my job and play every day, like maybe. I, I think I could do it. Those pants might get you to be a I scratch do golfer. It. They're like lime green. So. Nah, I can't. Anyway, <laughs> let's take a look at what the New England Patriots have done so far in the NFL draft. I like the pick mm -hmm. of Mac Jones. They didn't have to trade up to get – their potential future franchise quarterback, Christian Barmore, great value at number 38 in round two. Mm. Ronnie Perkins, Sam Brown let out an audible gasp. I think he was all horned up by that selection. Edge rusher out of Oklahoma. Ramondre Stevenson running back out of Oklahoma. So they go sooner, sooner in rounds three and four, pick number 96 and 120. And Cameron McGrone, linebacker out of Michigan in the fifth round. And the Patriots right now on the clock currently, so we'll see what New England will do. What do you think about what they have done? I like it. I mean, I'm not the biggest Mac Jones fan, but 15 was pretty solid value there. I agree. There are other picks, though. McGrone, Perkins, Barmore. I, I was pretty high on all those players, so I don't normally like New England's draft. I, I, I think in general they, they do some weird stuff. They got plenty of volume, but I like this for Cam McGrone, or, or, or for the New England. McGrone, all those guys, I like those a lot. Yeah, and like Bill Belichick, as we know, Tom Brady, six-round pick, New England Patriots on the board right now in the sixth round. Uh, they have been able to pick really quality players 
late in the NFL draft during Bill Belichick's around two-decade tenure, and they've been able to develop them into really good players. What's weird, mm. earlier on in the NFL draft, they haven't necessarily hit on as many NFL mm. draft prospects, yeah. but uh, we'll see what the Patriots do here with their pick because the pick is in, and as soon as we find out who it's going to be, we're going to break it down live on the show because it looks like the New England Patriots – are they going to go defense? They yes. do. Joshua Bledsoe, safety out of Missouri, going to New England at 188. Uh, the other Missouri safety is a willing hitter. I think he got a strong safety in the NFL. I don't love him in coverage. No testing due to a wrist injury this year, hence no 40-yard dash there. Slot nickel hybrid type of player. Got a fantastic frame. He's as muscular as all get out. I like that for New England here. Sixth round grade for me. We're right in the, in, the, in the sweet spot for it. A good selection by the Patriots. Probably a backup special teamer, but Belichick can't resist drafting a safety. He loves to do it almost every single year. Yeah, and likes to use his safeties in a variety of ways, uh, both in the box, back in coverage, in the run game as well. Blitzing gets very creative with some of those blitz packages as well. So Patriots go with Joshua Bledsoe, safety out of Missouri, pick number 188 in the sixth round of the draft. Looks like the Eagles are on the clock, I believe, at yes, pick number pick 189. In. Should have a couple we can get to here in a row. Yeah. What do you think about what, what the Eagles have done? I today? love it. Yeah. I think they've had a fantastic draft so far. Devonta Smith, Landon Dickerson, Milton Williams, Zach McPherson, Kenneth Gainwell. We're all about where they should go or even higher on my board. So they are they are doing a fantastic job so far in, in this year's draft, being able to find good players who fill needs and offer value as well. So the Philadelphia Eagles, their next pick is in round six, 189. Marlon Tiapolutu. Close. It's oh no, you got it right actually. Okay. This is, go, go again. Go again. Marlon Tiapolutu. Tui. Tui Pulutu. Oh, I, I, I thought you had it there. That's Tui my fault there. Yeah. We go Marlon T. Makes it a little bit easier. Marlon T. Uh, I thought I was going to be lower on Marlon Tui Pulutu than everyone else was. I had him 110 overall, fourth round grade. I I guess I was wrong. Um. He ends up going here all the way down in round six. The testing was average. I think he's a bit limited in the pass rush, but to get him all the way down here in round six, I wonder if there's something up at this point, but it's another fantastic pick here by the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, so they're continuing to try to address the interior of their defensive line. Now, they did sign Javon Hargrave to a monster contract yep. prior to last season, and he hurt his like bicep in training camp, yeah. so he wasn't that great in 2020. But so he figures to be in their future plans. But like I know Fletcher Cox has really been a good player, but mm -hmm. he's getting older, right? So you get Marvin Williams and you get uh, Marlon Tui Palutu nailed it uh, to try to stack that defensive line for the Eagles. I like the pick. Let's move on to pick number 190 for the Cincinnati Bengals. Really surprised Trey Hill fell this late. In the sixth round, center out of Georgia going I, to Cincinnati. I didn't like him very no? much. Okay. Uh, he, he's, he's a, he's a multi-year starter, mostly at, at center, played some guard as well. He tested horribly at okay. his pro day. Four, That's the reason five, why uh, or excuse me, five, four, five, 40 yard dash. The bench at 17 is bad. The eight, two, nine, three cone, Chase, you could do that. Now, you're, <laughs> you're not, you know, 319 pounds. There's been some bad weight on him. Yeah. What I think happened here, and this is why I had a seventh round grade on him because I, I, I had medical concerns. It was reported, oh, minor cleanup knee procedure. And that's why he missed the, the last two games. Torn both of his meniscuses in his knees. That was the minor cleanup procedure. So if, if the medical checks out and he gets back to the better athlete that I saw on film, okay, good power as well, but this might be a backup interior offensive lineman when it's all said and done. Yeah, so Trey Hill, I mean, Tom Downey's not high on him, but I understand the thought process here for Cincinnati. It's O-line, I can't complain too much. They're there. going O-line, O-line after taking Jamar Chase and not Penny Sewell in round one. Let's take a look at what the Bengals have done. I mean, I talked about Jamar Chase going number five overall. Jackson Carmen, another offensive lineman out of Clemson in round two. They go edge, Joseph Asai, edge rusher out of Texas with pick number 69, greatest pick number 69. Cameron Sample, True. edge out of two lanes, so back-to-back -back edge rushing picks. Tyler Shelvin, defensive line out of LSU. Uh, Deontay Smith, offensive tackle out of East Carolina. Evan McPherson, our first 
true special teamer at kicker in round five. Weird pick. And then Trey Hill. So looks as though the Cincinnati Bengals really addressing the interior offensive and defensive lines going to the lines back to back. Eagles picked again at pick number 191. And they select Taron Jackson, edge rusher out of Coastal Carolina. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Teron Jackson. Teron right? Jackson it looks yeah. like Taron, but it's yep. Teron here. Double I like R. the pick. I got a six-round grade on him. A touch earlier the first time relative to my board. It wasn't the best player there, Philadelphia, but this is still a good selection. I like him a lot. The, the athleticism wasn't great. I thought he struggled at the senior bowl, but 18.5 tackles for loss over the past two years is absolutely valuable. So it's a good pick here by Philadelphia. I've given like A's for everything else they've done. This is probably more of a B, but you're at pick number 191. So it's not like it's a bad selection by any means. It's a good one here for Philadelphia. They've had a fantastic draft so far. Yeah, so Taron Jackson, edge rusher out of Coastal Carolina to the Eagles. The next pick in the 2021 NFL Draft brought to you by Manscaped. Dallas Cowboys on the board right now, on the clock. And I know you've been up and down on, you know, what the Cowboys have done. And, of course, you know, manscaped.com slash chat. You enter the promo code chat. You get 20% off plus free shipping. Uh, where do you stand on what the Cowboys have done? Because uh, I know yesterday you were in shambles, kind of yeah. lost your mind a little bit. But it seems as though you've recovered a little bit. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of concerns with these picks. The, the, the risks involved here are very troubling for me. And that's that's a major red flag for me. Yeah. So we'll see what the Cowboys do with this pick in the sixth round. It is in, and we are about to break it down here live on the show. Chase Senior and Tom Downey here with you. Let's get to what the Dallas Cowboys have done in round six. The Dallas Cowboys pick here in round six is presented by Manscaped. NFL draft coverage, hey, right here on Chat Sports. It's all made possible because of Manscaped. So if you go to manscaped.com slash chat, you enter the promo code chat, you get 20% off plus free shipping on the best male grooming products. With their sixth round pick, number 192 overall, Tom. Fatties only lives, everybody. Hey. Quinn Bohannon, 327 pounds out of Kentucky. He is a classic nose tackle, 6'4", 327. He popped for me, not when I was just deliberately studying him, but rather when I was watching Damon Davis, There were, or Jamin Davis. There were several times I'm like, ooh, hey, I noticed that guy. Now, I don't think he's going to bring you a lot in terms of the pass rush, but here in round six slash round seven, where I have him graded, this is a solid pick here. The production was not great. I think he actually cut some weight for his pro day because he was listed at 350 by Kentucky and 6'4". He can carry that pretty decently here as well. A lot of couple splash films on, in moments there. If you want a run clogger, that is what Bohanna can do. I do have Kyrus Tonga above him here, but for years I have asked the Cowboys to to find a run clogger. And I got Marvin Wilson higher as well, but I am fine with this one. You find a potential run stopper in Quinton Bohanna. It's a solid pick. Not the best pick possible, but this is at least a B since we're here in round six, pick number 192, given I think there are medical concerns with Marvin Wilson as well. Yeah, so I, would you agree with me that the Cowboys have kind of like improved what they've done? Uh, Outside here? of Josh Bell, this day three has been much, much better. It's been a it's been a great day three outside of the Josh Ball pick. With it, it's it's been good. Yeah, because yesterday it was just really weird with what they were doing. I just didn't understand anything that they were doing. But uh, I see the thought process, there, process here uh, on day three of the NFL draft as they continue to kind of add depth to this team but also address areas av of need as well. So Quentin Bohanna, defensive lineman out of Kentucky, going to the Cowboys round six, number 192 overall here, as round six is moving very quickly. Can't believe that the 2021 NFL draft, as the minutes pass, continuing to get closer and closer mm -hmm. to ending. And of course, we're gonna be here live on Chat Sports, breaking down every single pick, and then we'll be live here with you after the draft is done taking all of your questions. So the NFL Draft live here on Chat Sports is presented by one of our great sponsors here at Chat Sports, Manscaped. 
Go to manscaped.com slash chat and you get 20% off plus free shipping on the best male grooming products. One of those products, the Lawnmower 3.0 that you see on your screen right now, and it in is my hand. also in Tom Downey's hand. So the technology on this thing is crazy. Yeah. Guaranteed to not nick you, make you bleed at all. And also the perfect package that you see on your screen, something that has changed my life. The toiletry bag, the travel bag, you can throw all of the products the in there. The boxer briefs, I run in them, and then my balls don't hurt because everything kind of stays in one place. So go to manscaped.com slash chat, enter the promo code chat, you get 20% off plus free shipping. Want to give some shout outs yeah. to the people right now. So reply with your area code to Tom Downey. That's Tom Downey right there. That's me. To his pin tweet at what going Downey. So reply with your area code and we will give you some shout outs here on the show. So at what going Downey, reply with your area code and we will give you a shout out right now live on the show. So Tom, as those come in, why don't you get to those because I'm trying to figure out my screen here. Yeah, you have an issue computer problems yeah. over there. Jeez, what are you, Mitch? Uh, <laughs> shout out David Lee Evans and Joe as well. We just put the link in there so we'll give you guys some chances here at what going Downey. Shout out your area code for me. And you know what? While you're there, if you want to hit the follow button just to make life a little bit easier as well, I'd greatly appreciate that there. Uh, maybe we'll get some help here for, for Chase to get his monitor figured out there. Looks like we're having some power connection issues potentially. Yeah. We'll so go, go hit that up. Again, I'll put that link in there. It's in there at what going Downey. We'll give you guys some time. I know it'll take a couple moments to go do it here. Uh, I do see Fabe Lincoln, 830. Thank you very much, my friend. Uh, again, we'll come back to this here probably in a little bit. I also see 262, 704, the 209, uh, the 328280 Town, 262, 972, 706, 559, which was repeated multiple times just to help make sure we saw it there. So one more refresh here, 510 from Neil, 702, the 303, and then oh, one got hidden by Twitter, which is always stupid, uh, a... 618 as well. So go hit me up, and we'll come back to this later on in the evening. So Deontay Brown is an offensive lineman out of Alabama who was projected by a lot of people to possibly go in the third round, the fourth round, maybe the fifth round. He slides all the way to the sixth round, pick number 193 to the Carolina Panthers. He's finally off the board. Tom, you mentioned some possible medical issues, but for a player of this caliber to slide this deep into the draft, it has to be that you would yeah, think, right? I think a lot of people watching know who Deontay Brown is, the Alabama offensive guard. And when someone of his caliber, who I had as a third round grade, slides all the way down to the sixth round, almost outside the top 200. That means something's going on. Something bad has happened here in terms of why this went down. So two potential reasons. Number one, a bunch of minor injuries over his career, a shoulder in 2020, turf toe in November amongst them. I wonder if something popped up at the medical checks in Indianapolis. And this is speculation, by the way. There was also a six-game suspension for a violation of team rules mandated by the NCAA, which in most cases in involves something drug-related, but maybe something popped up the teams were not comfortable with in the end. Now, he's not a good athlete. I mean, let's, he's a massive human being. He did not test very well. You know, he, he has some issues in terms of weight. He was 364 at the Senior Bowl, dropped 20 for his pro day. So, like, I don't like that type of weight issue. He's had it in the past there. So, Maybe there's something going on from that perspective. But talent-wise, this is a potential steal for the Carolina Panthers here in round six, pick number 193. This was one of my best players overall left on the board. I love this pick by Carolina. I think they're having a fantastic draft at this point. I'm very, very impressed by that from that perspective. Well done by Carolina. Didn't allow a sack at Alabama in any of his three years. He's going to struggle against Quicks. That's going to be the reality. I'd say move him to right guard. Damian Lewis here is my player comparison, but I like it for Carolina. In fact, I love it here. They've had a fantastic draft at this point. Yeah, maybe not the quickest feet 
of the guards here in the NFL draft, but just a massive human being who is a mauler, and he's going to beat you up at the line of scrimmage. There's no doubt about that. And as we take a look at what the Carolina Panthers have done, like the pick of J.C. Horn at eight, Terrace Marshall, I think he has the potential to be a really good starter, especially with the talent on that offense. Chuba Hubbard, a guy who, if he came out last year, might have gone in the second or third round. He slides to the fourth round. Davion Nixon, defensive lineman out of Iowa, going to the Panthers in round five. Keith Taylor in round five as well. And then Deontay Brown, offensive guard out of Alabama, 193 overall, finally gets picked by the Carolina Panthers. I like his potential in Carolina. Round six, pick number 194, this time for the San Francisco 49ers. They pick another running back. Earlier on, it. it was Trey Sermon. Oh, my God, I love now this. Now they go with Elijah Mitchell. Why do you like this pick? Uh, let me just read off verbatim from my notes here. Sleeper, classic zone runner with juice. He's not going to be a workhorse, but give him to a Shanahan scheme, and he's going to produce great. Nailed it, Simple folks. As that. Tevin Coleman, comp here in my notes. The dude's got the speed 5'10", 201. This was one of my favorite sleepers at the running back p p uh, position. An unreal 40 time at his size, which was certainly juice there. Some kick return experience as well. Lower level of competition. But this is an awesome pick by San Francisco. He is a perfect fit in this offense. He and Trey Sermon, it's a great one-two punch going forward. Yeah. Like, they, they could have just flat out not taken Trey Sermon, and I'd have been like, awesome, this is their new starting back. Yeah, I wonder what they're going to do with the running back spot because you have Raheem Mostert, you brought in Wayne Gallman, you draft Trey Sermon, now it's Elijah Mitchell, so it's going to be a crowded running back room, no doubt about that, for the San Francisco 49ers. Let's move ahead to what the Houston Texans did with their sixth-round pick at 195 overall. Roy Lopez, defensive lineman out of New Mexico State. Yeah, so I got a drink. Why is that? I didn't watch him. No? Uh, New yeah. Mexico State, Arizona transfer as well here. Played a little bit for Arizona. He was on my list of, if I've got time, I'm going to watch him, and I didn't. So, bottoms up. That's Drink two up. with a couple picks to go. You hate to see it. <laughs> so, hey, Roy Lopez, the good thing about Tom Downey. Houston's I mean, having a great draft, though. Don't get me wrong. Breaks down all of these draft prospects, like to a point where nobody else is doing it like Tom Downey, but sometimes you come across players probably, that probably, probably one gapping, watch much. Run yeah. gapping run clogger from what I watched live at Arizona. New, and, Mexico, and New Mexico State. State. Yeah. But you did say you like what the Texans have done. Oh, yeah. And why I, is Revin, that in addition to Roy Revin, Lopez? Jordan, Garrett, Wallow, Nico Collins. I like all three of those guys. And maybe Davis Mills is the future. Maybe he's not. But, you know, depending on what happens here with Deshaun Watson – We'll see what ends up happening in terms of maybe Davis Mills the chance to prove what he can be in the NFL, but it's, it's a good draft. As best as humanly possible given Houston was in such a terrible spot. Let's get to some more Super Chats here. This one coming in from DJ Giffles. Fun fact on the Fields haters, mm -hmm. Joe Burrow was at Ohio State before going to LSU. Just saying. That's a fact that uh, a lot of people know, but maybe for those who don't know, there you go. DJ Giffles coming couple in with the heat. A couple of the rapid-fire Super Chats here. Uh, Deontay Bell, thank you very much, with Thomas Graham. Don't know why he's there. Uh, Gail Chavez on the Cowboys because we're simulcasting. Thank you guys so much there. Uh, Michael Duft, uh, 97 Wishes, and Hector Arena. If I got that last name wrong, I'm, I'm terribly sorry there. But those are some of the Dallas Cowboys Super Chats that came in because we're simulcasting right now on both channels. When you talk about winners so far in the 2021 NFL Draft, has to be the Chicago Bears because of that maneuver up to take Justin Fields. I love the pick. You cannot move forward with Andy Dalton as your future starting quarterback. And I hated when they put out that tweet that said QB1 with a picture of Andy Dalton because Bears fans were already frustrated prior to that. They were mm -hmm. in on Russell Wilson before all the legal stuff happened. They wanted Deshaun Watson. And to go into the season in 2021 with mm. Andy Dalton as your QB1, Bears fans were just so depressed about that. Now there is a new level of hope because they moved up to take Justin Fields. But also in addition to that, they got Tevin Jenkins in the second round at 39th overall. Really like that pick because you provide him with some protection. And the good thing for Justin Fields is this. Like, if you want to sit him this year, because mm. maybe you can make the argument he's somewhat raw, although I kind of put that to bed because I, I do really like him. He was my number two quarterback. You can do that behind Andy Dalton because, hey, for whatever you want to say about Andy Dalton, 
pretty good veteran to learn behind, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. He's, he's going to be a good mentor for Fields, who I think is the future in the end. Let's get to the Giants pick, number 196. Gary Brightwell running back out of Arizona. So Saquon Barkley coming back from the torn ACL. They lost Wayne Gallman to the San Francisco 49ers, and they go with Gary Brightwell running back out of Arizona, and it looks like we have to drink again. No, we don't. I no? watched him hey. undrafted. I got everybody here. A singer. Uh, I, I don't get this pick. Um, <laughs> big guy. Battering ram, thick build. I like it from that perspective. Violent runner, bad hands. There's no pass catching value here. I've got like seven better backs on the board. The Giants have had a great draft so far. 245 carries. He is a stiff runner as well. He is a poor athlete overall at his size. I don't get it. Sorry, Giants fan. But hey, you know what? You're almost with like, you know, 70 picks left, 60 picks left. Like it's it's not that bad. You've drafted great overall. One bad pick won't kill you. Yeah, 196. Might as well take a chance. Try to get a running mm -hmm. back who can maybe be a third down, later down guy. I don't know what's up with Khalil Herbert. He would have been great behind Saquon Barkley. Yeah, come in relief for Saquon Barkley. Don't get that one. Who knows? Uh, yeah, so as we continue to look at Gary Brightwell, we're trying to get to 2,500 likes on today's show. And if we do that, we will do a free Roulette wheel spin. Now, the last time I did this, it was a an epic disaster because I got a mystery bag, and I'm not sure what Mitchell Renz did to me, but it was straight up disgusting. He's about to come in and relieve me. Do we I need to know what was Mitch, in that mystery what bag. What was in the damn mystery bag? I was in shambles. It was disgusting. I thought everybody in the chat sports office like might have like nutted into a bag or something. It was gross. Cream of mushroom soup. Oh my gosh. That explains like the brown Shame chunks in you. there. Uh, I gotta get you, back. Mitch. Before you come in here, get this shit out of here. Yeah. I don't. I don't want the mystery bag anymore. No, I'm not gonna eat that. It looks moldy as you hell. You walk to work, but if you drove to work you and go. your car was in the parking garage, it was gonna be on. It was gonna be on. Mm. Mm. Cool. All right. So what we're gonna do here, as your likes come in. Chase is going to step away for a little bit, and we're going to bring Mitchell Renz back on here. While Chase and Mitch swap out here, we do have the pick being made by the New England Patriots. William Sherman out of Colorado, kind of a offensive guard, offensive tackle, hybrid player out of Colorado. I do like this one. I, I, I like it quite a bit. I have a sixth-round grade on Sherman. I think there is some positional flex on the interior of the offensive line. He was 232 on my board, but we're in round six. So, like, you know, 190 to 230, there's, like, no difference. It's a six-round grade. You're just pick, picking, I think, you can make your roster potentially there. Big jump this year in terms of his production. He took a significant step forward of being reliable. He's allowed two sacks in each of the past three years. The difference is... He allowed, uh, let me do math here, 15 pressures in 2019, four pressures in 2020. He's played up all over the offensive line there, both offensive tackle spots. At his size, he might kick inside to the uh, offensive guard position. Hasn't played that before. He's gone left tackle, right tackle, left tackle, bounced around. So swing tackle ability, kind of built like Isaiah Wynn as a more undersized tackle, but I think could kick inside the guard if you want to. Better production, the penalties plummeted. 13 the past two years, only one this past year. So from that perspective, I like it a lot for the Patriots. I think they've had a very good draft class so far. Clearly medical stuff going on with the, 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 the likes of Trey Smith and maybe David Moore as well, but I like the pick here by Sherman. Decent value, fills some nice depth on the offensive line. The Patriots have had a pretty good job of finding some good value with offensive linemen given their track record previously. So Sherman is the pick here for the New England Patriots at number 197 overall as we welcome on Mitchell Renz once again. Welcome back to the live coverage, Mitch. What's up, brother? What's up, everyone watching the show? I'm glad to be back here. I was over on the Raiders report breaking a few things down. I was actually going to be for the Raiders at pick 200, but they had decided to trade up. Mm. Now they have only one more pick. So you know what? I'm going to hang out here for a little bit, and then I'll go back over there for the Raiders uh, last pick in the 2021 NFL draft. Mm. How's it been? We've been, you guys, been you guys have been seeing like you're having a lot of fun. Yeah, having a lot of fun. We always have fun here. Yeah. Hope, I, I, hope all you're having fun too. Oh, dude, we're, uh, we were doing a good job. I appreciate everyone over at the Raiders Report that's watching here because we do have a simulcast going on. But I, uh, I also want to apologize to, to Chase here because, unfortunately, you know, uh, made him put his fingers in some cream and mushroom shoe. Oh, all right, so we got a pick here on the board. Round six, 198 is Larry Roundtree. Um, I get that right? Yeah, round you three. Got it, you got it right. Uh, sixth slash seventh round grade for right, me. Relax. I, look, I just, 
I don't I don't like the athletic ability here. Okay. Uh, he was m- at his most efficient early in his career. My concern, he is draftable, and this is about the range I thought he'd end up going. My concern here is he doesn't have the traits that should covet in anything more than like just a safe backup runner. Athletic ability, tackle breaking, big plays. He can break some tackles. There's a lot of volume broken tackles involved okay. in there. I didn't see enough juice in either testing or the film study. It's maybe a it, good thing if a running back doesn't have juice. Mm, just calm down there, buddy. <laughs> already, already making jokes here. Um, he doesn't have, the, doesn't have the special traits. Didn't test, it, didn't test like it either. He can be, if you give him chances, he'll make some plays for you. I just don't think he's going to be special in the NFL. But round six, you're not going to find much special anyway. All right, y'all, if you're having a good time, go ahead and like the video. We would really appreciate it here at Chat Sports. We're still live. It's round six. We've given you analysis on every single pick. Tom Downing, the rest of the team, and I here, we got here bright and early this morning. We left literally at... Two, there's like 2, 2.30 at night last night. But you know what? We're dedicated to the craft, and I hope you're having a good time because the people that are watching right now, you're watching – think about this. You're the nerds like me. You're watching round six coverage of the NFL draft. Those are the type of people that I love. Those are the type of people that are watching the NFL draft, watching what's going on in the NFL in May, June, and July. Those are the people that we love here. So if you could, please go ahead and like the video. If we get to 2,500 likes, free roulette spin. So, how many? 2,600 people watching. Let's get a roulette spin going. We are 150 away. Not a math person, and I'm not good at pronouncing names either, apparently. So, if you could, go ahead and like the video. I would really appreciate it. <laughs> My boss back there, James Giuseppe, he would really appreciate it if you guys went ahead and liked the video right now. Come on, uh, let's go. Let's, let's get the party started because if you guys go to sleep, then we're going to go to sleep. You are our energy. You're the only reason why we're still here at this point. If you're having a good time, go ahead and like the video. With the 199th pick, better known as the Tom Brady pick, Jalen Twyman. You got it right. Defensive lineman from Pittsburgh. All right. This was a, this was <laughs> well, a really, really, really tough evaluation for me at Pitt before he opted out of 2020. 10.5 sacks, 12 tackles for loss. He wore uh, 97 at Pitt. He's undersized. He's Aaron Donald. No, he's not. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't have the juice. And here's what concerns me and then why I had a sixth-round grade and why despite someone who offers potential uh, production as a pass rusher from the three-technique spot, okay. why he fell down for me. At Pitt, the dude was like maybe 280. Like He was an undersized defensive tackle. And he was listed at 290. So he probably, let's just say he played at 290. At his pro day, he's up to 301. Gotcha. So he bulked up, and then he tests horribly, which tells me you, you can't carry the, the extra weight, which is fine. Not everybody can. He's undersized. Cut it back down. Be a disruptive three technique. At Indy for the medical checks, 319. Why have you added 30 pounds? When you are an undersized disruptive three technique, why are you now built like a 4-3-1 a technique? I, I don't get it. So okay. Twyman was a really difficult evaluation for me. I, I, this is about where I thought he should go because of, of the weight fluctuation there. He's going to hang around the NFL. I want to cut him, cut weight, get him back down to that undersized 3 technique mold there. That testing turned a lot of people off myself and clearly the NFL as well. Fun fact, by the way, his uncle – is Parnell Motley. You Bucks fans, Oklahoma fans know him too. His his uncle is Parnell Motley, the kid who was an undrafted free agent out of Oklahoma last year. Okay. Aren't families weird? Yeah. That's fun there. That's his uncle. All right, y'all. So we actually just got some two super chats that ended nice. up coming in. I saw somebody on our Raider stream said that I licked the video. If you're licking the video, that sounds like a you problem. If you want to like the video and help us get to 2,500 wait, 2,500 likes, we would really appreciate it. So a super chat here from somebody who I don't think has ever sent in a super chat before. <laughs> Burn in spades. Just curious. Does every 15 get a spin? If it does, this makes three. Laugh out loud. Only had one to make up for my first chase. Mitch spin twice. Mr. Revolver. Let's do it. What do we I got? I see why not. Spin the roulette wheel there. We'll uh, spin the roulette Mr. wheel. Mr. Irrelevant predict- Prediction. Uh, let's go with... Uh, I want to pick someone who's going to slide. Uh, off All right, so... Damar Hamlin from Pitt. Damar Hamlin from Pitt? Yeah, he might be gone soon, but that's All right, my, that's so my I need mystery bag three for Tom. No, no, you're doing this. I know what it is. Damn it, you're right. 
<laughs> I made it. So, so Tom gets mystery bag three, which makes me laugh because I gave uh, mystery bag two to Chase, and he thought it was something that I don't even know if I want to repeat again. But um, it was cream of mushroom soup. So now Tom gets mystery bag number three. Is he gonna get it right here? Spin the roulette wheel, by the way, Mitch. We're, we're doing three here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the bottom of the bag's a little wet. It's okay. It's just a little moist. What the hell are you throwing in here, dude? Don't look. You can't look. So we have a mystery bag here, and I don't know if you guys ever played the game where you put something in a bag, and then you got to try to guess what it is. So this has been in there for three days now at this point, so I don't yeah, know what it moldy. looks like. So this is – this. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm, well, it, it's got this, like – it's got the texture of, like – not pudding. What was the stuff you played out? <laughs> it feels like play doh. I, I just here, see Tom right? just in the bag like this, right here, it presented really by Manscaped. Like, just wiggle him like, around a little like bit. A pudding, How many a fingers is Tom using? One, two, or three? Throw it in the comment section. Go ahead and like the video. We're almost at 2,500. I'm shockering it right now. All right. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna go with. Uh, it's not, I'm gonna go with pudding. Pudding. It's, it's like a weird pudding here. It is a oh, it's an old banana. It's okay. an old banana. So that Tom, explains the texture. You okay. gotta take a drink. I was hoping it would feel like dog poop. Like that's what no, I was I going mean, for. It, it was too firm. It was too firm. Too to firm. Poop. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It, Fair it, enough. It kept the texture a little bit there. All right, y'all. We uh, we got another super chats coming in here. It's from Jeremy. Paul. What up, Paul? Appreciate you. Crappy Nelson cornerback pick aside, doesn't factor it in. How is the Cowboys draft grade A through F? So what's your grade here, Tom? Don't factor that one in. You're doing fine. Um. I'd say we're at about a C ish, C plus. You can maybe talk me into a B minus, but I'm not I'm not in love with it by any stretch of the imagination. It's fine, but not great necessarily. All right, y'all. So we hopefully it you guys are having a good time. I just came back up here on, on screen. So two thousand the roulette wheel again. Two thousand five hundred. How many yeah. likes? We're fifty this likes is the away. Second one from, from, from another. For okay. Yeah. Let's get us some picks here too. <laughs> rip, rip, rip. Roof, roof. You have to bark like a dog. Roof, roof. Why, why is your dog barking so high pitched? Roof, roof, roof. <laughs> yeah, I get it. You're a dog. You're acting like a dog. All right, yeah. That one's better roof. than putting the finger in the nasty roof, ass roof. banana. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, Came across good. dog. No, so I wasn't allowed to read oh, it out loud. Someone had to say dog in the chat. Somebody had to say dog it? until I could stop. That's funny. There we go. That's so really funny. Harrison like had to act one. like a cat, and he just went to licking himself. Mm. I think it was just an opportunity for Harrison to start licking his hand. I don't know. That's my personal mm. opinion. So appreciate everyone watching right now. We're at 2,400 something likes. So please go ahead and like the video right now. Round six, pick 200. Wow, I almost said Brandon Echoes, but Eagles? Yeah. Eccles. Eccles? Um, this is a very high upside pick. Kind of built like a nickel corner. Really great testing at his pro day. He plays tough. He's not that strong. I think ideally put him on the practice squad for a year. Give him some time to develop, but he's raw. Not that many plays on the football, but this is the type of athlete that you gamble on here late in day three. So no issues with that whatsoever for the New York Jets. All right, back-to-back -back cornerback picks here. Round 6, 201. The New York Giants, they are going to go with Rodarius Williams, cornerback from Oklahoma State. Rodarius Williams here. By the way, folks, this is not a typo here. This is the older brother of Greedy Williams, the former LSU, now Cleveland Brown corner. This is his older Interesting. brother. He is going to turn 25 as a rookie, got held back a year. He's an older prospect, but I actually think he's pretty good. The, 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 the Giants continue to love to throw picks at the cornerback position. He's 190 on my board, very experienced here. Major jump forward this year as a tackler. Broke the school record for most starts in a, in a row, 48. Beat some guy named Russell Okung. Maybe you've heard of him. Maybe you haven't here. Breakout age came late, but in either man or cover two, there's some upside here. So good pick by the Giants. I like this one quite a bit. All right, so we had a super chat coming from Burn and Spades, and he basically was like two for two. So, yes, every $15 super chat you send in, we will continue to spend the uh, roulette wheel here. So... Pretty, uh, pretty, pretty fun here, guys. So we got 2,566 people watching right now. If you could, please go ahead and like the video. At round six, pick 202, the Cincinnati Bengals are going to go with running back from Michigan, Chris Evans. It looked like early in his career 
that Chris Evans was going to be the next great Michigan running back. He was going to have such a fantastic year as a true freshman, or as a, as a sophomore, excuse me, 2017, 135 carries, six, almost 700 yards, eight, six touchdowns, a lot of pass catching value. He looked like he was going to be the next great runner. And then it all just kind of fell apart for him. Didn't play as much in 2018. 2019, there was an academic issue. Was forced to withdraw from the school. Came back in 2020. Only got to play a little bit. This is the modern day running back. When he was out of school at Michigan, he worked three jobs to stick around in Ann Arbor. Wow. That's some good dedication right there. Showed well at the Senior Bowl. Good athlete at his size. 4'5", 140 at 210 is pretty good there. I got a player comp for you, Mitch. You ready? It's, yep. It's one you know. Buck Allen. You remember him? Oh, Buck Allen. The, the, the Ravens, Ravens back. The Javorius Buck Allen, his actual name there. That same type of player where, like, he's a third down back. Okay. And you're going to allow him to be a pass catcher for you, which is exactly what the Bengals need. They lost Giovanni, Giovanni. Bernard. Yep. They chose to lose Giovanni Bernard. Evans could be that replacement here if he makes the roster. There is third down value here. you got to figure out just which version of Chris Evans you're getting because he is a little bit older. There is some concern his best days are behind him, given his position and the way he played the rest of, the, of his stretch at Michigan. I have a six-round grade on him, right where I thought he should go there. It's a solid pick here by the Cincinnati Bengals. I'll tell you what, I actually like what Cincinnati's been able to put together outside here. Outside of the kicker. Yeah, maybe outside of the kicker. I remember actually when I was over at the Raiders report, I was like, oh, wow, they went with a kicker. I was like, man, I wish I could just go right on it and see what Tom's doing right now. So the Bengals, they end up going running back from Michigan. Chris Evans, round six, pick number two. Zero, two. All right, Tom, what about some of the measurables? Maybe something that could like stick out to somebody who doesn't maybe recognize You it. see 451, you might go, oh, that's that's not fast. At 211, though, if we're factoring in size, if we're adjusting for that like all the NFL teams do, he's actually a really good athlete from that perspective. So I like that for Michigan, a, or for the Bengals, a lot here. Glad to see him get drafted. It's a quality pick right where I thought he should go in this year's NFL draft. So we hit 2,500 likes, which means do it. y'all get a free roulette spin. So Tom did the last one. I'm going to end up doing this one here. So what is it? What do we got? Do -do -do -do. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, it's Make Tom P. Okay, we can play the game. All right, so it's Make Tom P. So uh, we have a list to go in there. We also have a quote graphic. Sam, if you want to go to the quote first. It's a fun game. And then go to the list. So basically... Tom doesn't like to miss a single pick. So I I've decided, done it so I, I've been great this year. So I decided to been make dicey, a game where we're going to make Tom late. pee his pants. It's simple. Tom prides himself on being able to give analysis on every pick. Let's take away his pride. Make Tom drink as much as possible so he has to leave to pee. So here's the game. We are going to set a timer for 60 I seconds. I need water. Every $1 super chat you guys come in equals one sip of water from Tom. A $5 super chat equals a glass of water. $25 super chat. He's got to finish his beer. So the timer is going to start now in three, two, one. It's underway. 60 seconds. Let's make Tom pee. $1 super chat, sip of water. $5 super chat, glass of water. $25 super chat, finish your beer. Let's go. I want to see some pee running down his leg. That got, would make me we happy. Got well over an hour, by the way, Let's, before this draft ends. So. <laughs> oh, you're gonna. I don't think you're gonna make it. If we can get Tom I don't to think pee we here. Will either. I mean, if depending on how much water we you get here. Come on, let's go. Let's make Tom pee. Let's get some supers going in here. By uh, the way, this beer is full, just so we're clear. I don't so know. If we have 25, I'm in trouble here. All right, y'all. So we got 50 seconds remaining, and we are waiting for. There's five. That's one glass of water. Josh Klein, sip it up, Tom. Take it down. Two glasses of water. Burn Give me a second spades. one. We need another glass of water. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Uh -huh. And another glass of water. Vernon Spade said, best, best pick on scheme other than pits to my Falcons. I think Chase to Cincinnati, Chug Tom. No, I have to chug the beer. I, I get to just take my water casually. We, we need three in total, so let me finish this one, and I'll, and then I'll get back to you. <laughs> Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Jeremy, here. fill this shit up. <laughs> easy, easy, No, No easy. half glasses of water here. He's just trying to help you out. All right, so, and another $5 super. So you got 20 more seconds, if my math is correct, and a $25 super Damn chat. Damn it, there it is. Yes, let's go. Let's go. Tom's peeing. So we got four glasses of water and a beer. I think we're boned here, guys. Four Ugh. glasses of water and a beer. I right, We're going to get it. Damn it. What happened? Another 25. Another. And another one. And another one. Here we go. Oh, yes. 
Yes. Waters. I'm fine with water. It's the water, beer. It's the beer. Beer. Mm. All right. Oh, actually, we got a $25 super chat on our Raiders as well. So I, all I'm saying is this: <laughs> like another five. We uh, we got. Yeah, the timer's done. We're cutting it off here. So yeah, just put just put all, all three cups right here. All three cups right there. So the and timer is beer. done. So Robert, he sent in a 25 on Raiders as well. It said pissy pants chug bag. So you, <laughs> I don't know. So you owe definitely two beers. I'm going to take a beer as well because, you know what, I'm feeling pretty thirsty myself. So if we could go ahead and get me a beer, Chugs, I would appreciate that. And then we're going to go ahead and take one down. Spurn, Burn and Spade said shotgun right. time. I'll, I'll do a beer bong for a $25 and five super Five on chat. Cowboys. So we, we got – I'm so screwed. <laughs> Thanks, Poppy L. All right. Give, all me, right. give me another glass of water too. All right. So yeah, what's going to happen? Here, we're going right. to still give Three you beers. guys the analysis here, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to go through the picks. Uh, on down below, somebody said bladder problems. I need another glass if, of water too. If we get a twenty-five dollar super, I'll uh, I'll I'll do a, I'll do one. And we'll get to the picks here in just a second, boys. Alejandro Martinez Jr. on the Raiders report just sent in a fifty-dollar super chat. So um, so somebody go get me give me a, give me a Corona jugs. Give me a Corona. Oh, you get to do the small beers. I got to do the full size ones. Nobody knows that Corona. They do now. Uh, Marquez Stevenson, by the way, is the pick here for the Buffalo Bills. A, I had a fifth slash sixth round grade. I like this here. You might know his cousin, the Damian Washington, the receiver out of Missouri a couple years ago. Okay. Wide receiver three return guy here. Another good fit for Buffalo. This is, this is a solid day three pick as well. All right, all right. So I said I would do a beer bong, which I appreciate you guys. And I also owe you another beer chug, so... I'll take the Coors Light one first because I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, and also, shout out a $5 super from somebody on the Cowboys report. That was Poppy L. I appreciate that. Panthers pick is in as Mitch Chugs. Shy Smith. Carolina is friggin' killing this draft, man. I love the pick here of Shy Smith. I had a fourth slash fifth round grade on him, a top 150 player for me as a slot receiver with special teams value is, is undersized and not going to win contested catches. There's another water. Thank God I am so screwed. It's a great pick there by Carolina here at number 204. All right, y'all. So we're going to let Tom try to get some of these waters down. And if you guys have any other questions or comments, I'm going to do my best to keep you guys up to date. Okay. okay. Let me burp real quick. So Racy McCath, wide receiver from LSU. McMath, gosh, these, these beers are hitting me. Um, he is going to go to the Tennessee Titans here again in the sixth round pick, 205 overall. You see the height, 6'2", weight, 2'11". Pretty good arms there, but anytime you can find receivers, I do believe from a good school like LSU, it's at least pretty productive. This is special teams. Yeah. That's what this pick is here by the Tennessee Titans. That, that, that organization, that regime, comes from New England. My player comparison, Matthew Slater. Probably not going to be as good okay. as one of the best special teams players out there, but 507 career snaps there. Punt gunner specifically, only two drops. Hasn't done a played a ton of played a ton of receiver. This is a special teams pick here by the Tennessee Titans, and it's a good one here. This is about the right range he should go. I like it by Tennessee. They've had a fantastic draft so far. All right, y'all. We're almost in round seven, so like I'm ready to really get this party started. I know you got a lot of a lot of beers over there to go, Tom, and I know you got a lot of waters to go as well. I hope everyone's having a good time. We got 2,500 likes on our chat sports coverage. I don't know how many we have on Cowboys Report, but I know we almost got 1,000 on the Raiders Report as well, live stream. We've been at it for a lot, a lot of hours, it feels like, the last two days. And we appreciate everyone who's still watching. We hope everyone's having a good time at home. If you want to send in a super chat and drink with us, please, that's what these shows here at Chat Sports are all about. I can see the stomach right, starting to expand here's the here plan. for Tom. Uh, when the picks are in, I'll talk. Otherwise, I'm just going to drink beer and water here. That sounds I good. i got a lot to go yeah, through. Yes, so I'll handle everything. You drink the water and beers, Tom, and then when the picks come in, you can give the inside analysis because you're the guy. So the Saints, they're on the clock. They traded it. They traded up with the Colts to get to number 206. Yeah, they and then should the next draft Kate Johnson if they're smart. The Jets, the Bears, the Jags, and then the Arizona Cardinals, those are the teams next. So, Curious to see what New Orleans decides to do here. So you're saying that they should trade up and get a guy like Kay Johnson, who I actually like out of South Dakota State. Also thought he Same. looked pretty solid at the uh, Senior Bowl, especially in those one-on-one -on -one drills. I know a lot of other teams were potentially looking at him, but 
we'll uh we'll have to see what ultimately happens uh here so the saints they're on the clock if you guys are having a good time another super chat just came in over the raider sport mitch is back appreciate you ron stanley mark mulo threw in 25 dollars i'm not taking the shot one of you guys can i got enough alcohol to deal with here all right so sam said he's going to take a shot so get on specified fireball by the way fireball mm -hmm. okay I'm, a, I'm i'm about it so let's go let's get a let's get a shot going here Sam, when you're ready, you come on in, and we'll get the party started. I can't wait to see Tom P. He's going to be so – he made it almost the entire okay. draft. Almost the entire draft. You love to see it that you hate to All see right, it. We're two beers down and, and two waters down. All right, y'all, we are $25 away from Super Chats to getting to drink or do. So $1,000 in Supers. We are $25 away. Let's get there. Also, Nick Gilliam, position prediction for the Raiders' last pick. They've been going a lot of safety. They've been going some cornerbacks. I'm I mean, in trouble. I actually think offensive guard could be a potential uh, fit there. So, another guy's great show with the way. Fireball shot. Appreciate you, Mark. Appreciate you. So, Sam's going to come on and take that fireball shot. We got 2,480 people watching. This is basically instead of gone from chat sports to drinking sports. So, it's all good. We're, uh, we're here. We're having a good time. Tom's hurting. You all right? Now I just got a lot, of, a lot of liquid in my stomach, and it's just we're we're we're, we're not we're not doing great. <laughs> we're not doing. If you gotta great. go pee, go pee. No. All right, so I want everyone to yeah, give Sam some love. This is producer Sam on the show. Uh, as he does his shot, by the way, pick is in for the Saints. Landon Young has been taken. I got a sixth slash seventh round grade on him. Great athlete. All these Kentucky's guys tested so well this year. Interesting on that one there. <laughs> um, he hated Urban Meyer, by the way. He was a top Ohio recruit, and it went so bad with Urban Meyer that he refused to go to Ohio State. Wow. Appar allegedly, or at least according to Landon Young, Urban Meyer called him an insubstantial player during his visit with the team. So he knew the Jags weren't going to take him there. Uh, great athlete, needs a lot of technique work there, but a good gamble here by the Saints late. All right, let us drink. All right, you go. Ready? You keep talking, Tom. You do your thing. I, I, I got to drink more here. Bottoms up for you guys there. Appreciate it there. You guys were supposed to take the shot while I was talking, but it's fine. Uh, needed to hydrate. I had a nice, uh, had a nice lunch of Doritos and some popcorn. Feeling refreshed now. Uh, ready to tackle my day. I mean, I'll tell you what. My, my diet, my doctor would be proud of what I've eaten the last, we'll say, 48 to no, 72 would, hours. Pizza, Doritos, popcorn, beers, fireball, and vodka. I did have a Gatorade yesterday, so yeah, I want to. there we go. So we're doing pretty good here. You know, in hindsight, I should have just had Jeremy fill these up halfway. I wouldn't smart. Well, I mean, you yelled at him, so you know, if yeah, I was him, I, I would have put him at the tippy tippy top I next mean, time. Maybe did. even just dropped in a vodka shot in there. You wouldn't. Have oh, that was, I would have spit that out. Absolutely oh. no chance I'm doing that. That's mean. <laughs> that right. is mean. Uh, do you have a? Do you have a? Oh, and another <sighs> one. Drink or do to everyone. Okay, drink or do. You got it. What do we All got? Right, what Mark? do we got? What do we got? Thanks, brother. Bark like a dog every time someone talks to you until it's my turn to drink again. So that's how this game works. So basically, if you talk to me or if anybody in the chat sports talks Mitch. to me, I'm just going to bark like Mitch. a dog for the next 30 Mitch, seconds. Talking Roop. to you. There you go. <laughs> is that how a dog barks? <laughs> what is that that's animal? Rough. That's <laughs> not a dog. Roop, roop, roop. What is that? Roof. Like roof. some d demented chicken? Look at your slack. Like, what is that? Roof. Roof. Yeah. Roof. Absolutely incredible there. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. I'll take a drink too. And yeah. we hit a thousand, which is what a roulette spin. What is it? Yeah, spin it, Mitch. Yeah, spin it. We'll spin the we'll spin the roulette wheel. We'll spin the roulette wheel. Oh, I'm screwed. It's okay. No chance. I'm getting this down. And it's drink or do. So that's actually <laughs> <we're sitting pretty> <laughs> <good>. <laughs> that's funny. Take a shot of hot sauce or finish your drink. Let's go. Give me the hot sauce. Oh, he wants the hot sauce. I'll take the hot sauce. Wow, look at that. I'll take the sauce. Wow. I'll take one. Let's go. I'm ready for some hot sauce. He also says two drinker dues. Two drinker dues? Okay. Eat a spoonful of raw coffee grounds or finish your drink. <laughs> Let's go. Give me the coffee. I'm oh, he's eating the coffee grounds. That's I love so gross, Shit, dude. I love coffee. That's so <laughs> gross. Uh, pick is in the Jets. Jonathan Marshall. I actually kind of like this one. They're making some good athletic picks here. Uh, I had Marshall as a – let me get my notes up here. Uh, that's Adams. The other Jonathan. Marshall is – too many, like 10,000 pages of notes in here. Sixth round grade for me. Uh, age and production are not great. Older player with very limited ups in terms of production. Good. 1.5 sacks over the past two years. 
but he tested so, so well. That's a hot sauce shot. Oh, that's, dude, I can't believe you did that. It's Louisiana. Dude, it's so, hot sauce sauce is so gross. Uh, good pick here by the Jets. Back to this one. Um, athletic intrigue is fascinating here. That's where the Jets took him. I like what Joe like, Douglas is like doing. Sauce, He's taking chances and shots, if you will, on high upside players. I like that for, for the Jets there. I don't know if Marshall's going to work. I think he fits their defensive scheme pretty well. <laughs> I forgot this we is, even this had is, it. This is good value here. Good value Oh, here. man, that's funny. All right, so the other one we have to do is I can eat uh, some coffee. All right, so, you know, the best part of waking up is a spoonful of Folgers in your mouth. I think that's how the slogan that's goes. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. Wait, 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 bitch. Wait, 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 wait. There you go. I'll drink. All right, so I got to do a spoonful of coffee grounds because – we sent in a super. Um, I actually love coffee, All right. but I don't know the last time I did something Halfway like done. I bet he pukes. I bet he pukes. Wow, he's going he's gonna to swallow that. Do I have anything in my mouth? Dude, I can't believe you did that. Why would you put that in? Was, was that, that was drink or do, right? No. That's nasty. I can't believe you did that. And now you're washing it down with beer? That's not a Guinness. Yeah, you, you regret it there, don't you? Yeah, he regrets the beer chase. You should have gone with an IPA. That would have tasted so much better there. Wow. That's, that's gross, dude. I can't, believe, I can't can't believe he did it. Hang on a sec. He's got all these coffee. I just couldn't get it. I don't. Was this a trade, by the way? It's, see, Seattle just moved up to number 208, by the way. They make a deal with the, with the Chicago Bears to jump up. All Interesting right. move here. All right, they don't so have the picks to make this work, so I'm curious what the details. Are I know, I'm really, I'm really. What do they have? They had a second round pick, a fourth round pick, and a seventh. They, they had two fifty. So they jump. They're jumping up here. They're, they're moved, I think they're dealing a future pick here. Okay, interesting. So we're trying to get to two hundred and fifty thousand subs. I don't know too many channels out there that are live on day three. Basically, wow, good one. Round six of the 2021 NFL Draft. I don't know many channels out there that are drinking with their audience. That have the interaction that we do and have as good of a time as we do. So if you guys love the NFL, if you want to stay up to date on what's going on in the offseason, which I would make the argument might be one of the most important times to do it because it you don't want to be that fan that starts talking about a player in June or July when you're out for drinks with your buddies and you got some other guy like Tom. It's like, you realize he's not even on the team anymore. Don't be that guy. Hit that big red button that says subscribe. Tom Downey and I, the rest of the Chat Sports team, going live every single Monday, Wednesday during the entire offseason, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific. So go ahead, hit that big red button that says sub. And if you are already subbed to the channel, take the link below, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Spread the love. All right, y'all. So the Seattle Seahawks, they traded up here. I'm curious to see who they're going to end up getting. And then, like you uh, said. Looks like they gave up 217 and 250. I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, they traded down in round four, got 217 as part of the trade down, okay. and now they've packaged that up. So I'll keep that in mind here. So curious who the pick ends up being here. The Seattle Seahawks have traded up in the 2021 NFL Draft, and this pick is sponsored by Manscaped. I want you guys to go ahead and go to manscaped.com slash chat, where you can save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. So, Tom, the Seahawks, they traded up. They're going to go out here and get offensive tackle from Florida Stone for Forsyth. Forsyth. Forsyth, elite offensive tackle name here, folks. This could be for Seattle. Even though we're here in round six, I think this could be a future starting left tackle for them. So Forsyth, a bit of a late riser. I'm surprised he fell. Maybe we can figure out why. Maybe there was a, a medical thing that popped up or character that I don't have detailed on here. Six eight three oh seven over That's 34 four inch arms. That dude, if you if you look at the field and go, hey, which guy in the field is named Stone? That's that's the guy you're picking. Like it's very obvious which one is named Stone Forsyth right there. His dad, by the way, Ray, did briefly play in the NFL, Kent State, UCF, and then the Bengals there. He's almost too big, especially in, in, in leverage. When you're that size, can't get low. Edge rushers, you're right. You can't get low. Edge rushers can get under you, and that popped up at times on Florida here. He was almost in my top 100. So I love this pick okay. for Seattle. This is my favorite one that they have made so far. I got to double check. I'm pretty sure he's actually my highest graded player that they took in this year's draft all the way down here in round That's six. <laughs> I love getting aggressive here. 
for Seattle and finding someone who I do believe could potentially be a left tackle. I want to bulk him up more. He's okay. pretty skinny for his height there. Leverage, as I mentioned, is going to be an issue there. But he moves very, very well for his size. He's played left tackle and he's played right tackle. And oh, by the way, uh, yeah, he's a, a, gr a great athlete. He's better in pass protection, which helps Russell Wilson cook as well. All right, y'all. So here are the trade details that help Seattle get up to pick number 208. They traded with the Chicago Bears. So Chicago gets a sixth-round pick, 217, and a seventh-round pick, 250. If, you, if this guy's that high on your board and they were able to I get him in round it. six, this is a I very good this. trade here. So I'm curious, y'all. Go down in the comment section and let us know. Who won the trade? If it, you think it's the Seattle Seahawks, please type SEA. If you're going to go with the Chicago Bears, type CHI. If you think both sides won in this deal, which is actually kind of where I kind of lean in this one, Tom, then go ahead and type both. But anytime you're gonna, able to get a player in round six, close to Tom Downey's big board in terms of 100, that's great value to me. Who do you think ended up winning this trade? Seattle. In, historically speaking, I do not like what the Seahawks do. I love this move. This is an A-plus grade for me. Fantastic job, Seattle. To make sure you guys don't get traded, and then if you want to rock out with your Seattle Seacock, then you can go ahead and get the perfect package <laughs> for $71.99 with our promo code chat. It's manscaped.com slash chat. The reason why this is called the perfect package, it's simple. If you use the products that are available to you, you will have the perfect package. Tom, when was the last time you trimmed up down below? Uh, before the draft started. When was the last time you put deodorant on? Uh, this morning. Do you have deodorant on your balls? No, I don't because I showered this morning. So he showered this morning, but what I'm telling you all right now, if you put deodorant underneath your arms, you better put it on your balls too. Use the ball deodorant. Use the ball toner. The traveling case, if you plan on going anywhere, also comes available. And the most comfortable boxers you would could ever personally wear. Head on over to manscaped.com slash chat. 20% off and free shipping. Rock out with your hawk out. All right, let's go to now pick 209, Jalen Camp, wide receiver from Virginia Tech, or Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech. Uh, this is a very intriguing draft pick here by Jacksonville. I don't know if Jalen Camp is ever going to be a reliable wide receiver, but I did give him a draftable grade simply due to what he brings on special teams. All right, great athlete. He offers that ability, didn't play football through his late high school sophomore. The upside is here. The athletic ability is there. This is the type of player you gamble on late on day three. He's raw. He's going to need at least a year, but I like the upside pick here. All right, Bernard Spade, Super Chat. I already spun the wheel. Great show. Channel shout out, y'all. If you're in trouble, Tom, spin. What does the Falcons need left, and who could fill it? Uh, at this point, honestly... You're not drafting for need. Correct. You're like you're not going to find someone who fills an immediate need. You're looking for developmental guys, either a high ceiling guy who can help you on like special teams or, or, or help you be a depth guy, or you're swinging for the fences with upside. Those are your two routes that you go here. And for the Falcons, you're just looking to maybe get lucky with a particular player in the end. All right, so the one that I pulled was mystery bag number two. Now, obviously, I already know it's did a, number two. I know it's a number two, but I'm going to let Chase, if it's still available, if he wants me to put my fingers in the cream of mushroom soup, I'll go ahead and do it. Why don't we spin again, too? All right. Let's spin again here. Uh, by the way, I won't Victor, do it then. I, I the Mukaji is the pick here by the Arizona Cardinals, the edge rusher out of Duke. Fifth, sixth round grade for me. So I like this pick a lot for the Arizona Cardinals. I think this is fantastic value here as a potential 3-4 outside linebacker edge rusher. Just an okay athlete, but I think this could be a good rotation piece for Arizona. So quality pick right here by the Cardinals. I got, I got, to get, I got a lot of I don't here. know if we have a marker, but I have to draw a unibrow on my forehead until the next pick is made. I don't know if we have a marker. We should go multiple picks here. I mean... Do we uh, I got pens on my desk that are like kind of markers, so they should they should wipe I just off don't, pretty I well. I don't want it to stain my face. No, no marker. marker. All right, I'll finish my drink then. Cheers to y'all. Nah, we gave Appreciate you two. Hey, Chase, grab mystery bag number two. We'll, we'll make Mitch stick his hand in it too. Yeah. <sighs> All right. I know what they are. Appreciate the super chats there, guys. All right, I'm, I'm getting caught up here, Mitch. We need right, a lot so of picks. We're, we're doing make Tom P game, which is still going on. There from was like no time limit in terms of when I had to finish the, the, the drinks. So outside of like before the draft. So all right, so it. Chase is excited that I'm going to put my. I'm fingers. trying to win, Brett. 
Oh, God, this is I'm a, I'm a winner! All right, so mystery bag two is cream of mushroom soup that I made about a week ago. So you guys can see Why that. Why did you bring in week-old cream of mushroom soup? Well, well, tec well, technically, it was three days when I brought it in, and I knew I wasn't going to eat it, so I figured I'll put it in the mystery bag Why? instead. Now we're at a week. But there you go, cream of mushroom soup. You shouldn't give him a, a, a paper towel, Chase. That would have been funny. Mystery bag it. game, and I need to wipe my hand. You should have you just made him lick it off. We should probably throw this away. I'm just going to say Yeah, that. I think we should. <laughs> it's rancid. Oh, man. Actually, it's cream and mushroom soup. All right, yeah, let's get that going, Sam. Where's uh? Shout out to your favorite team. I want everyone watching right now, I want you to start spamming in the comments your team. Who's going to be the team that's repping in the comments the hardest? Who's got the best fans out there? I know we're live on the Raiders report. I know we're live on Cowboys, too, correct? Mm-hmm. So go ahead, Simulcasting. start spamming in the comments section your favorite team. I better see some people saying Raiders. I better see some Cowboys in there. Ooh. I want to see some comments flowing in right now. Who's the team that's repping the hardest down there in the chat? I see some Patriots. I see a Raiders from Everyday Jam, Bears from Space, Martin Milios, Mark Mulo says the Packers, Angel Guzman cards, Ronnie Butler's the Cowboys, Alvary says the Cowboys. We got Robert Harding is going to go with the Raiders. Alvary Cleveland. Inglorious P. Browns. Nick McLean. Cowboys. Kevin Cooper. Shout out to the Raiders. Vicious. What's up, my man? Appreciate you guys watching. Start spamming your uh, favorite NFL team. And look at the Browns. Yeah, uh, we'll get to that. I do want to shout out Deadshot5, his super chat. We'll mention Keo's super chat here, Ch uh, Sam, after the Browns pick. Let's go through the best available. Check in with where we're at there. I do want to break down the Demetric Felton pick. Receiver running back hybrid, I, I think Naheem Hines, who he ends up being, he did not test well, but I like this pick okay. by the Browns. Now, I, I think Ooh. receiver, <laughs> I kind of put him on uh, at the running back Let's position. Um, I see the super chat. We'll get to it here. I like this pick a lot by Cleveland. Like, I love what the Browns have done in play. recent years. Yeah. I, I really do it, with their draft process. Fourth slash fifth round value. I like this pick a lot by Cleveland. Browns fans, y'all crushing it again. Great job. <laughs> All right, let's look at Tom Downey's best available players. Trey Smith, Marvin Wilson, Ardarius Washington, and then Grambling State's Shakir Brown. So, Tom, Shakur. are you – which ones do you think all these are – I mean, which one's the most surprising? Is it obviously Smith or it is, is it – It is Ardarius Washington for me. It's just because he's small and NFL teams are stupid. Trey Smith, Marvin Wilson, I think they flunked the medical side of things. Okay. Which I feel horrible for those dudes. The same is true, I think, of guys like James Wiggins and Dylan Moses, a very much household name. Yeah. Excuse my language. His knee's messed up. Yeah. it's. I feel so bad for I mean, that was going to be probably a first-round pick. Dude, round he was going to be a first-round pick. His, knee, his knee's messed up. That's I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel so bad for these kids who are so talented, and they got medical problems. It, it absolutely breaks my heart for them, and I, it's, it's the horrible downside of, of just being a football player. He was going to be a first-round pick, and now we hear late, late sixth round. Just, just brutal. Also, I want to give a verbal shout out here to Keo Carrito. We appreciate the super chat, my man. Uh, talking about Seth Williams. You can't separate. Can't That's separate. That's the issue. That's why he's like, I had a fifth round grade on him, so I liked him. That's why he's there. I love this super chat here. So yeah. I need Tom to do a fireball shot. And P.S., you're invited to my family reunion. You got soul food there? I mean, like, where's where's the reunion? Where's at? that, baby? Let's ride. Let's go, dude. Soul food's the whole best. entire chat sports team coming to a family reunion after the draft. A little pretty bit. Sure, pretty sure it's just me. But whatever. I mean, I'll go. If there's food there, I'll go. Dude, we'll be there. I, I'll tell you what. Soul food is some of my favorite food of all time. Yeah? And this is not necessarily like exact See, soul here, food comparison. Here's the here, issue. Like, I've only had good soul food from one person. It was down here in, in the south. There's people who up north tried to make it. It wasn't soul quite the same. South. Soul food's It the wasn't south, quite the same. So if my, you know how to make it right. This is this is like a little weird for me as, as, as a white guy from, from Loveland, Ohio. Cajun food yeah. is the best. Best. <laughs> I I will eat Cajun food all day. It is fantastic. So Caleb, thank you very much as we add the shot to, to the alcohol and water consumption here. Bottoms Let's go. Up, Let's make Tom P. Come on. Let's make Tom P. I want to see it happen. We're we're almost in round seven. I got half a beer and two waters left. We're making progress, boys. Back to back picks for the Buffalo Bills. Ooh. First one safety from Pittsburgh, Damar Hamlin. I actually right. like this value. So here. Uh, he's he, he is a he is a better football player, at least in terms of the NFL, than his teammate Terry. 
Paris Ford is. DeMar Hamlin, his best attribute, he's freaking smart. Okay. He is a very intelligent player. The role that the Pitt Pit Panthers asked him to do with instincts in a split safety scheme is very difficult. I don't know if he keep in a split safety scheme. The athletic ability is, is okay, nothing special there. The, the production is okay, nothing special there. I like this pick by Buffalo. I actually had him graded as a fifth slash sixth round pick. Top 200 for me. I was higher on Hamlin than I thought he was going to be. I think he sticks around the NFL for quite a while. Great pick on that one. I also wanted to quickly shout out a super chat that came in from Deadshot. Will we get the safety of the Cowboys, meaning Darius Washington? I don't know why he's falling, man. It does not make sense to me. He's a good player. He is obviously good, a little bit man. undersized, but, I mean, at this point... Maybe, maybe there's a medical thing that popped up. Maybe maybe that's what it is, because he's... He definitely good. should go before this, right? So he's, he, he should have been gone 100 picks ago. 100 picks? 100 picks ago. Wow. All right, so we'll see who ends up getting our Darius I Washington. I know people that had him at, as, as safety one. As the number one as safety. The number one safety. I, I never agreed with that, but I know people who had him that high. Wow, that's, that's pretty wild there. So the Buffalo Bills back-to-back -back picks. We'll see who they end up going with here at pick number 213. What I want you guys to do right now is let us know where you're watching from. If you could, please go ahead, shout out your city. Tom Downey and I, were here in Dallas. We just got invited to go to a, uh, a family reunion. So I'm kind of curious where you guys are watching yeah. from right now. We're watching from all over the United States, all over the entire world, in fact. So if you could... Please go ahead, shout out your city. Let's start giving some love here. I got Danny Steiner says the 570. That's that's my old area code, so I'm curious with that about that one. I got Barry Harry. He says Vegas. We got a Chicago down there in the comments from Tareen White uh, Whitefield. Caught Brian Aldo says Ohio, Michigan from Ethan Stunk. Another Vegas from Juan Hernandez. I got a Denmark in there from Skillborg. Thomas Hoyer. Holy shit, we just got a $50 super chat Woo! over on, on Raiders. Oh, on Raiders, nice. It said, love Mitch and his energy for this live. Let's go. So a $50 super. <laughs> you in a shotgun? I got the the bong. So get, somebody get go get corona. me a corona. Somebody go get me a corona. Let's do the beer bong. Nice, I love it. You know what? I'll even make you guys a deal. Let's, let's get weird here. For every $50 super chat for the next minute is going to be a beer bong. Okay. I like Every it. $50 super chat for okay. the next minute gonna is going to be a beer bong. I'm going to get down some of this water here. All right. And Tom's still consuming the water from when we said make Tom pee. So I think that's uh, I think that's pretty fair. We're here. not even around seven yet. We're fine. That's true. That's true. Oh, We're God. I'm screwed. Why? You got to go? No, there's no way I can make it. You got to go? No, I'm good. I'm good right now. There's no way I make it. I think Tom's going to pee. Tom, I want everyone. Thank you. We got one. We got one. Every fifty dollars okay. super and for the next thirty seconds, I'll do uh, I'll do a beer bong. Why not? Let's get let's get weird here. We're getting to almost in round seven. The second pick here from back to back. Oh, round what six. a name! I had a wild goose. Yeah, that's his name. Rashad Wild Rashad. Goose. Rashad. Rashad, Rashad wild it, goose. it looks like Rashad. It, it's Rashad. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sam, zip it back there. Look, P for example, like P. <laughs> I am acutely aware of what other people think because I think it's important for you guys right, watching. Now thinking about it's bad. P PFF loves him. I, I, I don't see it. You don't see it? I don't see it. Rashad um, Wild Goose. I, I, I don't know what he does that's special. Look, we're in round six. Oh, yeah. So who cares? On a, especially once it's like beyond pick 200, you could draft me, and you're not getting a grade lower than a C. I disagree with that. I mean, okay, maybe a D. Yeah. Manscaped. Like, whatever. Like, <laughs> there you I, go. Opted out for two games. Shoulder issue. He's very grabby. Above average athlete. Definitely The Manscaped. Bills have done a pretty good job of developing some underrated corners, so I, I'm intrigued by that. I I didn't think he was that great in man coverage. I think maybe cover two. Short short zones could work for him. I just had him as an undrafted guy. But, again, we're at pick 213. Like, you're fine. Buffalo's had a great draft. All right, we got a super chat. By the way, speaking, speaking of Buffalo, you see what the uh, – oh, what's, what's his, his name? name? Did, uh, did, did, Spencer Brown, the table break? That's awesome. That's on brand, baby. That's I love that. That's him that doing is so what, great. That That's a marketing move there. That's his agent saying, hey, this, this Dude, is – But also Spencer Brown is that guy. Yeah. So, like, I don't know if his agent told him. I think Spencer Brown just did it. Okay. Like, I love that from, 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 his, from that perspective there. So, big time fan of it. So, the Bills draft, a, little bit, a bit awkward. Two edges, two tackles, but I, I like Spencer Brown a lot. I love Tommy Doyle. I like Carlos Basham. They've had a pretty good draft so far. So we, I all, it. we had a $5 super chat come in from Dominic Kane. 
Thoughts about the Saints draft so far? What are your personal opinions on the Saints draft? We'll break that down. <sighs> Tom's still weird. consuming his water. It's I, weird. I, I, got, I got like barely a cup left. Called half a beer and a cup of water left. And we got we got we got a lot of picks coming up here. I think we might have to play make Tom P again. Yeah. What do you think? I yeah. I think we might have oh, to. Oh God, if we do it again, I'm screwed. All right, There's no chance. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm hanging on by a thread here at this point. And another fifty dollar super channel. That's two beer bongs. Two beer bongs. All right, uh, you did you did the beer bong Saints stuff. I actually dig the Landon Young pick. A uh, lot of upside there. Sean Payne's a smart man. All right, I don't Griggs. Really I, get the, I don't really get the Ian Book selection. Um, C. Griggs B. 57. Keep that in mind there. Um, Ooh, uh, boy. Let's do this pick, and then we'll get to the super shot or super, super chat shot. Yes. or dead shot as well. Here we go. All right, I pick 214, Cole Van Lanen, offensive tackle from Wisconsin. Uh, this is not your historical Wisconsin offensive lineman. I'm listening. This is not the absolutely mean strength, power, like what you would think for a Wisconsin guy. Honestly, he went up against Ch Chase Young against Ohio State, and not to be rude, I don't think he ever recovered from it. Oh, really? Chase wow. Young abused him, and it, it just the hey, strength, Young abused the, the power, the balance issues were not there. He's draftable for me. I actually might try him at guard for okay. Wisconsin. He's a pretty decent athlete for, for Green Bay. Ooh. I like keeping the, the uh, local kid there. Fared better again, uh, for Wisconsin this past year, but their offense is kind of weird. All left tackle for, for Wisconsin. We're, we're, this is a seventh-round grade for me, so no complaints about it. But I'm glad I didn't go before this because that would have been eh, a little weird. All right, y'all, if you haven't already, please go ahead and like the video if you're having a good time. We're, we're here in round almost seven. This is where we can get a little bit wild, start the drink, and having a good time. And everyone out here at Chat Sports, we got people behind the scenes working really hard. I got... All right, Marshall wants a drink. So Marshall just said for a $20 super chat, he'll come in here and he'll take a shot. So thank you, Marshall, for the uh, volunteer. We really appreciate that. So if you guys could, if you're having a good time, please go ahead, like the video. Wow, he just said that he would do a beer bong and a shot for a $50 super. All right, Marsh, I see you. I see you working there. He wants to up it up even more. I don't know. He's getting cocky in there. If you're having a good time, go ahead and like the video. We got almost, what, 2,000, almost 2,600 people that like the video on our main chat sports channel. So please go ahead and like the vid if you are having a good time. And I'm being told 3,000 likes, drink or do game. I almost feel like we should make some other people in the background do some, do some yeah, games here. Yeah, keep likes coming. I do want to hit some quick rapid fire super chats here. Uh, first good. one, Cowboys, dead shot. Who do you think that house goes for? Send the energy for our Darius Washington. Something's up with him. Uh, I think special teams is going to be their next pick here. It's time for John Fossil to get his turn. Joshua Height, thoughts on the Seahawks draft? I love the Stone Forsyth pick. Pretty solid for very light draft capital there. Uh, Samuel McDonald threw in a $5 one. I know Dallas picked two linebackers. Uh, would you accept they picked Dylan Moses? Also, since no safety, sign Lee Cooker. I'm in, baby. Let's do it because they just – uh, I will say this. If Steven is, Jones made jokes about not drafting a safety, and I will never forgive him for it. If there is a team that I BS. want to now get Malik Cooker, I will. I it might sure. actually be the Cowboys because then somebody needs to figure out how to put Jabril Cox and Hooker together for a picture. <laughs> That's what I want. They'll stand by each other on the sidelines. That's what I need. And for then, that alone. Um, as for Dylan Moses, I, I feel horrible for him. I think it's pretty clear at this point the medical did not check out. Yeah, His knee is messed up. And at this point, I hope he does. I, I don't know if he's going to get drafted. Yeah. And we're talking about a, a potential first-round pick. Guy who was so hyped as a high school recruit because he just the, – the high school highlight reel is laughable. I, he's just so good. And then the knee's messed up. And I, I feel I am just absolutely heartbroken for Dylan Moses there. And All right, so Brady, Brady Breeze, safety for Morgan. He's uh, going to end up going here to the Tennessee Titans at pick 215. Not sure what's wrong with Thomas Graham. Like, I actually liked him quite a bit. Uh, Brady Breeze, once again, folks, special teams. That is the pick here for the Tennessee Titans. I have a player count for you. Oh, boy. You guys ready? Jeff Heath. Okay. That, and he's not quite the athlete that Jeff Heath was, but in terms of being a great special teamer, that's what I see here. A bit limited athletically. I, I wish he had tested a bit better. Special team safety. Be your backup. 
he was the they call it the, the torpedo roll on on uh, kick return blockers where you just kind of like I'm gonna run forward and take out the guys coming at me, which is like you got to be a special kind of crazy to do that stuff there in the NFL, man. They've kind of avoided that going forward. Uh, special teams coverage, 700 plus snaps. I like that a lot. I actually really like this pick here yeah, by too. the Pittsburgh Steelers, Quincy Roche, awesome. edge rusher from Miami. This is pretty good value. This is actually somebody that I thought could go in like round five ish area. And uh, I, had a, I had a fourth on him. And a fourth round grade, uh, even I, better. I don't know what what is up here with Roche. I am very surprised that he is on the board here. Um, I know the production dipped, Bruce but Bruce Wayne is wild in the comments. He still had four point five sacks and and fourteen point five tackles for loss at Miami. I, I know the athleticism was you know, average to above average and he's I don't know if he's gonna hope against the run, but as a sub package guy yep. and ability to, to to you know drop in coverage, I have as a borderline top one hundred player. I, I love this pick by Great Pittsburgh. Value. I mean Bud Dupree leaves, it's Alex Highsmith's turn, Roche is edge three. That's that that's one of my favorite pits by pick picks by Pittsburgh there so far. I mean I am kinda with you there. I was I actually when I saw the name come up I was like wow I can't really believe that he's still available. I and love this. This is awesome. I, I mean, I'll tell you what. I actually really like what Pittsburgh's been able to do here in this year's draft. I mean, you go out, you get a solid running back in Najee Harris, which still I'm not really know if I'm team drafting RB in round one. I'm but in trouble. You definitely could have said it was one of your bigger needs there. Pat Fryermuth is a tight end that I really like out of Pittsburgh. It takes me back to the days when Big Ben needed that true tight end option, which I definitely think is something Pittsburgh needs. Kendrick Green, we talked about him a lot. I don't know if he's going to be a guard or a center, but either way, you are able to read place Pouncey there. Dan Moore Jr., offensive tackle from Texas A&M. But then the Roche going mm. in round six. I mean, that is absolutely phenomenal value there. There's no doubt about that. All right, I'm going to take my beer bong here, Tom. You got it. I saw uh, it. C couple comments in here um, So about the about the about my big board, so let's discuss it here. And we'll also, Dominique Kane, I see your super chat. We'll discuss Kate Johnson here. Trey Smith, Marvin Wilson, there's medical. Uh, there, there are, There's blood clotting issues for Trey Smith. Dude is so talented. Marvin Wilson's knee and other stuff is all messed up there. I don't know what's up with our Darius Washington. I thought David Moore was going to be gone by now. That one confuses me quite a bit there too. Kay Johnson, I don't get it. Um, he's a great route runner. He didn't test very well. Uh, Dominique asked about the Saints moving up for him. My answer is yes. Ooh. I said him actually when they took uh, Landon Young. Charles Snowden is a tweener. Shakur Brown did not test well. I don't know what's up with Thomas Grand. That one's weird to me. So James I, Wiggins might have some medical. Dylan Moses has medical. Uh, Israel Mukwamu, I was just higher on. He's a tweener. Cleo Herbert, I, I don't get it. He, he should be gone. So I actually had a super chat, and you mentioned both these players. That's on Raiders Report for Rico. It says, Kay Johnson or David Moore, which player would you go with? Uh, do, you want, do you want a receiver or a guard more? Um, I guess for the Raiders, he's asking. Yeah, so what do you want? Um, personally, for me, I think Kay Johnson might actually be the better value, but I think guard's probably the bigger need. Take more. I, I like David Moore quite a bit. I'm a little surprised he's he's still on the board there. R Robert's saying, for a $50 Super Chat, will you teabag Tom? No. Unfortunately, that's never going to be an option here. Maybe maybe Sam will, but I, I personally won't. But it's all good. So new subs during the NFL Draft, 5,247. If you guys haven't already, please go ahead and hit that big red button. That says subscribe. The Chicago Bears are on the clock in the pick. It is in. Wow. We're in the seventh round. I like this here. We're in the seventh round. Not not yet. We're, we're still not in round, round six. We're still in round six. Oh, we're almost I... around seven. Holy shit. I just got a $100 super chat. Nice. We'll get to that here, but first the pick by Chicago. All right. Khalil Herbert, running back, Virginia Tech. Awesome pick by Chicago. Man, I love what they are doing this year, man. He's undersized. Almost 5'9", 210, above average as an athlete. Producer Brett, executive producer Brett's favorite school, Kansas to Virginia Tech. A transfer here. I'll get to the random fun fact at the end. Don't let me forget, Mitch. It's pretty unusual there. Tested pretty well. He was much better with Virginia Tech than he was Kansas because, you know, it's not Kansas. Yeah. The offensive line ends up being way better. Big play guy. I like his vision. He offers a ton of home run ability here. He doesn't have a lot of background in the in the passing game. There There is some, some medical stuff from hamstring injuries in particular, which are always a red flag there. He did bail on Kansas four games in 2019. I think that raised some issues in terms of how, how he was was viewed. I had a fourth-slash-fifth-round grade on him. I think he's got the vision to make it in the NFL. Zone scheme runner, 
let him go. He's going to have success. Also, the, the random fact was actually born with 12 fingers and 11 toes. Yes. 12 fingers, 11 toes. The two fingers were cut off. The left foot is, is webbed on three of them. Say that again. Yeah. Born with 12 fingers and 11 toes. Wow. They, it, it, just a weird genetic thing, whatever there. It's awesome for him. All right. We got Big Dog Wolf. Drink up, fellas. Should. That's all you. Move to safety because of his size. He played some safety for South Carolina, and I, I'm down to try that. He's kind of almost too big for a defensive back. You don't see that many guys there in that type of mold, but I am totally down to give Israel Mukwamu a chance to be a, a, a safety corner hybrid. I don't know if he gets drafted, but I liked him a lot previously. I think, I think corner is his best fit, but I'm on board with this one here. In the end, I like him a lot, a lot more than I thought I was going to, frankly. All right, I want to give a shout-out to the $100 Super Chat that we just got on the Raiders Report. Shout-out to Ron Stanley. Said, Mitch, take Tom down with a beer. Show him how the nation runs. So you know what, Ron? I appreciate your $100 Super Chat. What we're going to do here is uh, I'll, I'm going to do another beer bong, and I'm actually going to put a shot in that beer bong for that $100 Super. So I appreciate it. I will get to it, though, in just a second because – we got a fun little pick here coming up. Sam Ellinger. Sam Ellinger goes to the Indianapolis Colts. I think this is a potential long-term backup for him. The coaches, and you can ask Tom Herman, they love this kid. From an intangible perspective, this is one of the best guys. He's a fine athlete. He's more of a bigger, tougher runner than like the Lamar Jackson dynamic, rangy, like Lamar Jackson type there. He's, he's, he's a bit more of a, of a bruiser. In that perspective, which uh, I, there's enough of an arm here. He doesn't turn it over very much. He got better pretty much every single year. I thought he was at his best in 2019, though. Okay. The accuracy is okay. I don't think he's someone you ever want starting. I think he's limited. But as a long-term backup, I think he could be the guy here. So I had him as my quarterback 11. I don't mind him being quarterback 10, though, as the pick. So I think Sam Ellinger, though, is a good quarterback from top to bottom. So with... All right, so Ellinger, pick 218, good player, good football player. I think it's going to be a good fit here for the Indianapolis Colts. Denver Broncos are on the clock, and this pick is presented by Manscaped. Head on over to manscaped.com slash chat where you can save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products on the market. So if you're a diehard Broncos fan, if you're a diehard fan of the NFL, if you just want to make sure that your junk looks good and not like yeah. junk and it looks A-OK, -okay, head on over to manscaped.com slash chat. 20% off and free shipping. And you know what? I have my ball deodorant here. I might even start using it. And I also said this earlier, and I don't know if anyone knows this. I would shave my face, rock a mustache for a $100 super. So I'll make a deal. If we get another $100 super, the beard's gone, rocking a mustache, and I'll do it for an entire week. Uh, I, have, I have a, a good week? I have a good mustache. I'm not going to lie. Wait, wait, look over here. Yeah, you do. I have a good mustache. You, I did it. You don't have the gap here like I do. No, I, 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 don't, I don't grow hair. If, I if, can if, rock if, a or solid or mustache. I, I, don't, I don't have it. So if anybody wants me to look like kind of a uh, somebody who shouldn't walk within 100 feet of a school for the next week, I'll <sighs> shave my beard and I'll do it. If we get a $100 super, let's get weird here on day three. Let's get weird. So yeah, baby. where do you think the Denver Broncos could go with this pick here, Tom? You know, I'm just looking at my best available players because at this point, like, need goes right out the window here. Um, in terms of non-medical guys, God, you know who I'd love, actually, with a medical? Let's hear it. I would love Dylan Moses here. Okay. I, I want him to be drafted so bad. I feel I, I feel bad for him. I, I, I You know, it's dangerous to take the injured guy, but uh, I would love Dylan Moses here for Denver. So, Manscaped here, again, we want to give them a shout-out for the Denver Broncos pick. Tom, I'm going to let you take this one here because I want you to be able to handle it. Today's show is presented by Manscaped, this pick by the Denver Broncos here. Head over to manscaped.com slash, or just slash chat, excuse me. There you go. Promo code chat as well. 20% off and free shipping when you use manscaped.com slash chat. The pick is in. Seth Williams, round six, number 219 overall. I'm on board with this one for the Denver Broncos. I am a fan of this pick. Now, we'll start the positive. I think that's, that's more fun here. Get, get with the, the good stuff first. There's a lot to like here. Classic possession receiver with vertical threat ability. Now, he's actually an Alabama uh, kid growing up, a fan in Tuscaloosa's backyard, goes to Auburn. Was the sixth player, get this, the sixth player 
from Tuscaloosa County to sign with the Auburn Tigers and the second since 1976. You, you are in Tuscaloosa, Damn. and you go to Auburn. I respect the hell out of that there. <laughs> uh, he profiles as a contested catch monster. 6'3 and change, 33-inch arms. He wasn't productive in that role, though. He cut some bad weight in 2020. I like that. His production is limited because Bo Nix sucks, or at least sucked last year. And I will not apologize for that, Auburn fans. He's not good there. He got bullied by J.C. Horn. I mean, uh, but Horn's a first-round pick. Horn's right? a legit and there, there quarterback. Was one play, what, probably the best in the, the SEC. There, there was one play where Seth beat him, and Bo Nix missed him. And that's how it happens there. The hands are a bit of an issue. He's not a, 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 a good separator. <laughs> the agility testing was not great. But here in round six, I like this pick. I had a fifth-round grade on him, one of my best receivers. In fact, my second-best receiver left on the board here. As a potential vertical outside threat on the split out wide, not a slot guy, offering some vertical ability, deep threat given his size and ball tracking, there's a lot of traits to like here. He ain't Cortland Sutton, well, but as a Cortland Sutton backup, I am intrigued. Okay. I mean, if you're going to throw out a Cortland Sutton comparison, I mean, you could definitely see it in the, the size, the weight. But, I mean, this is a Broncos team that I it kind of pains me to say it, Tom, but their offseason – their free agency period, and I actually really like what they've even done in this year's draft. This is going to be a sneaky, sneaky team that's really just trying to get after a team like the Kansas mm -hmm. City Chiefs because Sertan, top cornerback in the board, in my personal opinion. Javonta Williams, also very solid. Quinn Miners, Baron Browning. I mean, you have to admit, this has been a very good oh, offseason for been Denver. an awesome offseason for Denver. I love what they've done. A lot of great defensive players. Jamar to help Johnson, hell, I didn't even know that. That's great value that's in round awesome five. awesome right there. I will throw out another player comparison here in terms of what he could be. Maybe kind of drafted similar range. Travis Fulgham. That's how I think you use him, and I think what he could end up being if he ends up hitting here. Love the value here in the sixth round for Denver. It's a fantastic pick. Hopefully you guys are in love with Manscaped as well. Head on over to manscaped.com slash chat. 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. The Lawn Mower 3.0 is absolutely phenomenal. It's going to fit great in your hand. It's got a little light on the edge in there, so you can get into those hard-to-reach places. The eight-hour battery life, you can see right now you can use this bad boy in the shower. I promise you one thing. Yes. Your balls will thank you for using it. Plus, part of the proceeds here of Manscaped actually go to help treating ball cancer, at least, you know, finding more research to testicular cancer. Your balls will thank you. Promo code chat, Manscaped. Dot com slash chat. Head on over to Manscape and support our sponsors. All right, Mark, what's up, my man? We got a hundred dollar. Okay, Mitch, start shaving, buddy. I can't believe I'm doing Look this. Look at you, Mark. Put him on the board. All right, for a hundred dollar super. Hell yeah, I'm ready I to go. I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, there. hang on, then I got to do this because I still owe a beer. I still owe a beer chug. So I had a hundred dollar super on Raiders from Ronnie Staley. So we're gonna we're gonna do this. I'm going to add a little bit of vodka to it. We're going to figure it. out the timing here, by the way, in terms of how this is going to work out in the end. So I had a $100 oh, super we got, on we got Raiders. the trash bag coming in. Hey, let's do it. Let's get that. weird. All right, uh, the pick is in as everything gets set up here. Thanks so much, Mark. MVP today, baby. Isaiah McDuffie is the pick here for Green Bay. <laughs> Mark, And wild. I love it. This is a fifth-round grade for me. I believe the best linebacker that I had left on my board outside of Dylan Moses Fifth round grade goes uh, 163 for me all the way down here at 220. <laughs> Special teams floor at minimum. I love it from that perspective. Fun fact, his first name is Stevenson. It's kind of a weird first name. It's kind of more of a last name there. But look, some people don't like him. PFF, for example, hated him. He is undersized, but he's a good athlete, a tackling machine. Good pick here by Green Bay. I like it from that perspective. Yeah. All right, y'all, so love Tom's uh, breakdown here. So, so for some of you that don't know, we got a $100 super chat, which means I'm going to shave my beard and I'm going to rock a mustache here. Yeah. So also Daz Newsome, you, you round go. 6, 221. Yeah. Uh, you take it. Uh, the Bears are killing it, baby. Shout out Ryan Pace for balling out in this year's draft. I got a sixth-round grade on him. Daz Newsome, a bit of a household name. He was 206 overall on my board, so we are – right in the sweet spot there. He is a slot receiver. I don't think you can play him on the outside. He did not test very well at his pro day. That's why he's down here. But with Matt Nagy, who's shown some ability to create touches for various players, Daz Newsome, 
after the catch, we the deadly baby. He dangerous in that area. The testing hurts. The drops are a bit of an issue. The Phil Longo offense was stupid in terms of a route tree, but he also offers punt return value. So with Cordero Patterson gone, there's some intrigue here in terms of return value. Yep. Six round grade for me, a good pick by Daz News or for Daz Newsome heading over to the Chicago Bears here in round six. By the way, Mitch. I do. I got a I got a quarter of a beer and a, and a water left. I'm in trouble. I'm not gonna lie. When you said quarter, I thought you were gonna say something else. Um, um, I'm in trouble here in terms of. I thought you were gonna go quarter everything. chub personally, but my lawnmower uh, 3.0 is out there somewhere. I don't know if it's is it in here. It might be in here. I have no idea where no, I put it. I don't it. see it. I don't see it either. Is it is it in the other studio? Or I this, know I have this unopened one. I know I have the lawnmower 3.0 somewhere laying around here. Somebody look in the chat sports studio. It's somewhere laying around. It's all good. So basically, this is what's going to happen. So I'm going to shave my face live on air because we got a $100 super chat from Mark. Oh, no. What? Get to the next pick. What happened? Get it in. What happened? Oh, my goodness. Is it a wild this, one? This is, just, this is just me being a nerd. That's all it is. I'm sorry. I probably reacted there. Probably. Oh, my goodness. It's a long snapper. It's a long snapper. That's why Tom's excited. Thomas only, Fletcher. Only Tom gets excited about a long snapper. Oh, my God. I'm not going to lie. It looks like your second cousin. We don't even have measurables for him. <laughs> it looks like your second cousin. Shout out to Thomas I, I Fletcher. I got him saved somewhere. Hold on. Oh, my God. The long snapper to the, in, to the Carolina Panthers. Hey. A long snapper. It's all good. Well, it's I mean, all we good. got the picture. We have he's it. Zero inches tall. Uh, he's six one two thirty seven. He is like I didn't scout long snappers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking pay attention to them. All right, y'all. So this is what's gonna oh happen now. Oh my god, the long snapper Thomas Fletcher to Carolina. We uh we got a hundred dollar super oh. chat. <laughs> And I'm going to show you how well the Lawnmower 3.0 works on air. So I actually have already done this before where I shaved my face. It might have actually been last year during the draft. I actually think it was. I shaved my face last year. So I'm going to try to do my best that I can do to see what happens. And I might try to clean it up a little bit later on. So we got a $100 super chat. So I'm going to shave my face. Yeah. Tom, you keep talking the and I'm going to trim up here. The Panthers their long snapper who's been there for 13 years in like March. It's round six. There's no such thing as a bad pick, but oh my God, a long snapper. Absolutely hysterical there. He's the pick for Carolina. Arizona's got a pick here coming up that I'm actually very intrigued by as I'll let Mitch handle this here all by himself, full good. screen. You keep, you keep I'll keep talking off screen. You guys know what's up. This is not easy to do. But you guys can see, I mean, this is smooth. I mean, yeah. That's just, that's just coming right off there. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to show up tonight, and my girlfriend's going to be like, what the hell? Yeah, she'll be so confused about what actually happened there. It's all right. You're yeah. Doing good. How are you doing good there? Uh, I'll, I'll verbalize. Oh, did Sam go to the bathroom? Yeah, Sam's gone. Oh, oh he's eating some food. Okay. I'm about, I'm, 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 I'm about to call him a coward. Um, the pick here for Arizona, by the way, as I just voiced over Mitchell Wren's getting a mustache going, Tay Gowan who's one of my sleepers in this year's class, the cornerback out of Central Florida, has barely played one, one year, by the way, out of Central Florida, but as a potential sleeper, upside pick, I love this one, by, uh, by Arizona. 215 overall on my board, six-round grade. Exactly where I thought he should go. Arizona's been kind of weird in the draft. Yep. There's a really good upside pick right here by Arizona, taking Tay Gowan in the sixth round here. So I like that pick a lot. I know a lot of people like Tay Gowan as well. That's a good. That's a good pick right there. Here's, so guys, what I did for a hundred dollar super chat, I said I'd shave my face. So I said, you know what, F it, let's do it. So that's what you're seeing right now. The guy that you hear in the background, that's Tom Downey. So I got to rock this mustache for an entire week. And uh, if somebody from Chat Sports could actually come here and see the spots that I missed because I'm just too far away to see where I haven't been yet. So I need you to like, I want you to literally put the lawnmower in your hand and I want you to get the rest of what I missed. That would be phenomenal. I would really greatly appreciate the that. The hand that I hold my pizza with? Yes. This uh, is producer Sam, by the way. Shout out to Sam. You're good. Go, go ahead. And we ran out of battery. I should have charged it before I came here. But... That's part wow. of it. It's okay. No, you know what? You get to live with an incomplete day. 
You've never charged that thing though, Mitch. That's been your that's been your lawnmower for like a year and a half. It lasts eight hours. Like the the battery life on a manscaped like lawnmower, it literally lasts three hours. So, well, here we go. We're just gonna be rocking uh, a mustache from here on out. And it looks. Let me look over here. There's one spot, like, uh, we'll right get it. here. I'll get it after the show. It's it looks fine. fine. It's fine. fine. Record your, I think I did pretty good. Because I think it died. That was funny as hell. So, it's all good. It's all good. I'm a little hairy, though. Little uh, little Harrison, Harrison Graham going here. on. But uh, if you guys could see, though, I don't know if you could tell how easy and smooth that was. Now, obviously, I can't show you how easy it is to shave my balls on camera because, That's believe it or gross. not, see that stuff. I actually like doing what I do for a job, and I don't want to have to lose my job. So we were able to show you how easy it worked, and it's super smooth. You won't cut yourself. Super awesome products there over there at Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com slash chat where you can save 20% off and get free shipping. Yeah, on there we go. Good the or bad? How does Mitch look? I'll tell you what. I personally believe everyone here at Chat Sports, I rock a mustache the best. Okay, that's fair. It's it's not me. Well, I'm, I'm not gonna volunteer. It's all good. I'm gonna I'm gonna rock a mustache from here on out. So, um, yeah, Omar says he shaved. Yep, yes I did. I'm a little little furry right now, but yeah, it's okay. It's all good. It's okay. So good or bad? Throw it in the comment section. What do you guys think? And I gotta keep this for an entire week. And if you guys like it, who knows? Maybe I'll keep it around a little bit longer. But uh, I'm curious to know if Alex is watching or not because I'll probably get a text here pretty shortly. But all right, y'all. So what's going to happen, I believe, is am I going to be leaving here soon? I or? think that's the plan. Yeah, you're going to step away here in a little bit, and yep. then we'll figure I'm gonna stuff out. I'm going to head on here. over to the Raiders report, and then we're going to be breaking down the Raiders pick, who's coming up at 2.30, and then Tom yep. and the rest once, of the team are going to be hanging out. Once this Eagles pick is in and we have it for you guys, you're going to step away. I will anchor, and i got to go to the bathroom. You got to pee? i got to pee. Tom's got to pee. Tom's got to pee. Let's I'm go. It. I still got a whole glass of water. And you got to finish gotta, the gotta, water, Tom. Pee. Everyone type chug in the comments for Tom to finish the water. Chug. Chugs. Jeremy. Chugs. Chug. 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 Jeremy. Chugs. 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 Come on, Tom. You can do it. Let's go. Let's get a popping. Come on, Tom. What happened? Who's laughing out there? All I heard was school effing something, and I don't know what's happening out there in the chat sports. We got people just going absolutely crazy out there. Okay, we're done. I just saw the new guy Jack do a freaking keg stand on his hands. It's getting wild out there. It's getting wild. Oh, man. So I just shaved my face for a $100 super chat. Tom just drank like eight glasses of water and two beers, and we're playing beers and we're five glasses we're of water. playing a game where we were trying to make Tom Six pee. Six glasses, actually. There's an extra one. We're we trying to make back. Tom pee. That was the game. If you guys I could see. I think you guys are going to win. If you guys could see my desk right now, it's an absolute shit show. I mean, we got like five, six, seven, eight beers over here, some vodka, a roulette wheel. My hair is just laying everywhere. I don't know what the hell's going on. We're off the walls. It's day three here. You're watching NFL <laughs> live chat sports. I don't even know. What are we doing? You all right? I'm okay. You okay? I'm okay. I'm okay. Eagles pick is about to be in, so Mitch, you're going to step away. I'm going to head over to the Raiders. He's going to head over to the Raiders report, which we are simulcasting on right now, along with our Cowboys report channel. But the Eagles pick is in right now. Jacoby Stevens is the selection as the Philadelphia Eagles continue to, I would argue, dominate this year's NFL draft. I think they've had a fantastic job so far. Stevens was a sixth round pick for me, but I'm very intrigued in terms of how he is deployed. I don't know if he's going to be a linebacker or a strong safety. Maybe a little bit of both when everything is all said and done from that perspective. So I like it from that, from that point uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for the Philadelphia Eagles here. Jacoby Stevens, the pick, round six, number 224. Tested quite well at what unquestionably was a juiced LSU Pro Day. I would probably bet, uh, bulk him up and play him at linebacker, but sixth round, despite the tweener traits, absolutely worth trying here for Philadelphia. I have been a very big fan of what they've done this year in the NFL draft. I think the Eagles are absolutely crushing it, at least based on my board, and that's all we can really do here. So he's a tweener, safety, linebacker hybrid, did test better than expected. 
Uh, there was some alleged effort issues as a senior, but honestly, LSU kind of fell apart this past year, so I don't want to dock, dock him too much there. If you get lucky, I think you might have a situation where Jacoby Stevens could develop into your tight end stopper, something I love to see in the NFL. I think tight end stoppers are very underused, especially when there's Evan Ingram and Logan Thomas, good athletes lined up elsewhere in this division. So Stevens, the pick here for Philadelphia, and it is absolutely fantastic. So the Eagles pick is in. They take Jacoby Stevens here for uh, at pick number 224 overall. As now we got a couple NFC East runs coming up here, by the way, with Washington now on the clock here. At number 225 overall as we get the other side set up here with Chase Sr. set to come on in the not-too-distant future with Washington now on the clock here, which I'm very intrigued to see how they end up going. I think they've had a pretty good draft there. Washington, Kansas City, Dallas, Chicago, and Indiana. The next couple picks coming up here. Bears have crushed this draft, by the way. Very, very impressed with how things have gone from that perspective. I love what Philadelphia's done, man. Smith. Dickerson, Milton Williams, Zach Mc or Zach McPherson, excuse me, Kenneth Gainwell, Marlon Tuipulotu, Taron Jackson, and Jacoby Stevens. This is a really good draft by Philadelphia. So if you are an Eagles fan out there, well done. This has been very, very impressive for Philadelphia. Might be a bit of a reset year in 2021, but this draft class, I believe, is pretty darn solid. So good job, Philadelphia as now we await the Washington football team here. I'm going to shout out some Super Chats here. We're simulcasting right now as we ask this question. But we'll go into it. Most overrated draft prospect. Get your votes in right now. Some Cowboys Report Super Chats. We are simulcasting right now. $10 in Taco Man. We need Washington right now. I'm content with the D. By the way, drink. I'm out of beer at $10. I got, I got Red Bull. I, I got a piece so bad. Bottoms up, folks. I think I'm going to lose here. Um, $10 from Taco Man. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate that one. If you're watching the Cowboys Report, send the energy for our Darius Washington because I love that pick so far. Waiting for Washington. Waiting for Kansas City as well. 225 uh, and then KC coming up here in the not-too-distant future. Got to adjust my shoe here. Uh, oh, my goodness. Back-to-back. -back, not back-to-back. -back, another long snapper. Cameron Cheeseman, the Michigan long snapper. He's the pick to Washington 225. Why are we taking long snappers here? Again, we didn't even put the – we got the photo. We got, we got the photo. He exists. I know who he is. I'm not doing a shot. My God, Cameron Cheeseman. Absolutely wild here as Washington takes him. Elite name, folks. He went. He, just, he turned pro early? Oh, no, wait. wait he was a senior, though. He, he had the red shirt opt-out year? Oh, so Michigan was not going to give Cheeseman a scholarship because he had graduated, but that's pretty fascinating on that one there. Um, we're going to welcome in Chase Sr. here. So you're going to hear his voice as he takes over hosting duties with the Kansas City Chiefs pick in as well, Chase. Yeah, so... Chiefs! <laughs> Look, Trey Smith fell because of medical issues. That is why, unfortunately for Trey Smith, who I really like as a prospect, guys with his size and strength and power and all those things absolutely get drafted. He's still got some room to grow. Blood clotting issues. Blood clotting issues nearly ended his career at Tennessee. February 2018, they pop back up in October 2018. He lost some weight as a result, has not quite fully recovered, but from that perspective, this is a well worth the risk pick by Kansas City. I love this one. I absolutely adore it. Yeah, this is an all SEC caliber player, but as you talked about, I mean, those blood clot issues caused him to miss some time. And during the evaluation process, uh, a lot of teams didn't know 
uh, what was going to go on uh, with his medical issues. Did you say there's an audio issue here? Are we no, good to go? Good. All right, cool. Yeah, we're good to go. Uh, so Trey Smith, I actually really like this value pick uh, in the sixth round here for the mm. Kansas City Chiefs. If he was fully healthy, like I think he could have been, what, a day two guy, Tom, potentially, maybe? Uh, yeah, Early I had him as, as a round three player. Yeah, cool. So Trey Smith to the Chiefs at 226. And on the clock right now, it's the uh, the Dallas Cowboys for Tom Downey. So Dallas Cowboys getting ready to pick once again at 227. Uh, I have a Trey confession to make after this pick I, I have, right, I have you to You seem like you're really struggling. Like I haven't seen so you much in this condition and water. before. Mm -hmm. uh, you are. You have a bladder of steel, but is that uh, bladder about to? It's explode? not the same anymore, folks. It's not the same. Yeah. It's it's simply not. So Tom Downey, he might have to step away after the Cowboys make this pick, but that's okay because I can handle it. Um, you know, we can do our thing here. It'll be quick. Sports, it'll be quick. And it'll be very quick. So let's get to this Cowboys pick. The Dallas Cowboys pick is in at two twenty-seven, and they go with cornerback out of South Carolina. Tom, you all right? So you good? I listed him as a corner, <laughs> but I think for the Cowboys folks, send the energy in the comment section. I got him as a safety. I think that's what he's going to be. He played corner. He played safety for the, for South Carolina. I like this pick a lot. Now, Mukwamo is very much a developmental player. He is not prepared to play in year one. I have a fourth slash fifth round grade on him. The teammate of J.C. Horn, I think potential-wise, this could be a chess piece for Dan Quinn. Can be a tight end stopper. Can play cover three outside. Can even play some safety as well. So in round six, real chance these guys don't make the, the roster here. But I like him a lot. When he's able to be physical, there's a lot of upside here. Now his completion percentage was, was pretty bad this past year, where they played him a lot more at safety. So is he a safety? Is he a corner? I don't know, but I love the pick here in round six. Upside wise, I had him graded way higher than Deshaun Wright from that perspective here. It's ironic, he was in coverage per PFF, four, or 12 of 14. Both were picked off. That's some Madden coverage stuff right there in terms of where things were at there. Six interceptions in the past two years. The South Carolina coaches have said that he and J.C. Horn led the culture change after some character concern picks earlier. I like this one quite a bit. He's not like agile by any stretch of the imagination. He's more of a straight line athlete, not a great tackler, but I had him as a day three pick here. I love this one for the Dallas Cowboys. Israel Mukwamu, who I'm pretty sure in my final Cowboys mock draft, the full seven rounder, I took him at some point. So I like this for Dallas here. Uh, his dad, by the way, immigrated to the U.S. from Congo in 1995. If you can use him correctly, I'm saying chess piece on defense. So I like this pick a lot. I'm going to pretend they flipped McQuamu and Deshaun Wright, and I feel a lot better about this draft class for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, I like the versatility, too, because this is a guy that can kind of play all around. He can play in the box. He can play a little cornerback, almost as defenses kind of change, as the NFL game kind of revolutionizes. Mm -hmm. You can play him almost as like a, a linebacker is kind of what you're saying. And Israel, how do you say the last name? Mukwamu. Mukwamu. So Nailed a lot of it. Cowboys fans wondering, how the hell do you say that name? There you go, Israel Mukwamu. Pick us in for the Chicago Bears at 228 here in the sixth round as we are inching closer and closer to the seventh round of the 2021 NFL Draft. Mm. And the Bears go with Thomas Graham Jr., cornerback out of Oregon. Awesome pick here by Chicago. I'm going to say it right now. This is the best draft class this year. The Chicago Bears and Ryan Pace have absolutely crushed this draft. I thought Thomas Graham should have been a fourth-round pick. Now, for those of you watching on the Raiders report, we're going to kick it over to Mitchell Renz. They're coming up on the clock, so get ready for that momentarily. Watching on the Raiders report, Mitchell Renz about to step in right now. Tell me I'm a Raider. Ain't shit you can tell me I'm so nation. No matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Ain't shit you can tell me I'm a Raider. 
patient. You can tell me I'm so nation. No matter the location. It's got the 83 feel. It's time to run it back. We struck gold with in gold and our running back. Josh Jacobs, Jack, he a specialist. He personifies commitment to excellence. He our next bogo. He our next talent. I watch him receive us drown on Molden Island. <laughs> yeah, y'all know the trail was built in. in the middle. This shit just got real. Look, we super bold bound. I'm just the honest man. Chuck you back to return us to the promised land. Rest in peace, Al. You the go broke in the field. Had Jerry West, you the logo. And I'm on her. I pledge allegiance to Old Coat, LA Coliseum, and the Legion. And I'm on her. I pledge allegiance to Old Coat, LA Coliseum, and the Legion. From OAK, LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Ain't shit you can tell me, I'm a Raider. Ain't shit you can tell me, I'm so nice. Raider Nation, what is going on? You are watching the Raiders Report, and we are getting close down to the final pick of the 2021 NFL Draft by the Las Vegas Raiders. Today's show presented by Manscaped. Head on over to manscaped.com slash Raiders, where you can use promo code Raiders to save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. If you're wondering why I look a little bit different, I told everyone on the Main Chat Sports YouTube channel where we got all of our live coverage going on right now that, hey, if y'all send in a $100 Super Chat, I'm going to shave my face and rock a mustache for the entire week. So that's what I'm going to be dealing with. It's not the most even mustache as I'm looking at it right now, but I had to do it real quick live on the show, and uh, that's what you're looking at right now. So the Raiders Report presented by Manscaped. Well, everyone out there is doing well. Let me know down in the comments section what you think the Raiders should end up doing here in terms of a player that they should pick. And uh, if you're curious about who the Raiders could get, please go ahead and let me know down in the comment section. It actually looks like the Raiders could go out and grab a center from people that I'm personally talking to right now. If the Raiders were to go ahead and do that, I would be actually a little bit surprised simply because he's a good player. But uh, center, I don't know if it's the, the biggest need here for this team. And wow, we're going to go with... Uh, Jimmy Morrissey from Pittsburgh. So once we get all that loaded in here, remember it's round seven. You're just looking for a little bit of extra depth here and there. So I know some people are going to be like, who the heck is this guy? I'll be able to weigh in, tell you what I personally think about him overall. It's probably just a B type of a grade here personally for me because, again, you're sitting here in round seven. You're looking for some players that you can add a little bit more versatility. Maybe they believe that a guy like Jimmy can go inside. It's uh, Jimis, Jimmy Morrissey. So Jimmy Morrissey is the name here. And uh, I'm going to try to pull up some notes here from, from Tom and I when we went through, looked at a whole bunch of different types of players here. But the Raiders, I'm curious what you guys have to say about it. Please go ahead and comment below your reaction. And we are, again, live here on the Las Vegas Raiders Report. And the way that this show is going to work over the next, let's say, 15, 20, 30 minutes, it's up to you. The more Super Chats we get, the longer I can stay live. The more we can drink, the more we can have a good time. If you want me to head on out of here and get my weekend started, well, you're definitely also in the wrong place here. So, again, the Raiders... Wow, that burp is because of y'all making me drink all the time. So let's just uh, let's go out and say that right now. So basically what's going to end up happening here, we're going to break it down for like four minutes, and then we're going to get into like a, probably a full-on cut of like some of the Raiders draft grades thus far. So again, the Raiders' final pick is in. Once Jeremy gives me the thumbs up, we're going to get things rocking and rolling here. So no rush, Jim. No rush, man. We're, we got it going on. I appreciate everyone tuning in right now. If you want to start using hashtag Raiders or you can super chat to get your questions or comments featured here on the Raiders report, we're going to be breaking breaking down the entire NFL draft by the Las Vegas Raiders. Round seven, pick number 230. The Las Vegas Raiders have selected Jimmy Morrissey, center from Pittsburgh. In terms of overall grades, this is the 25th center rated by Tom Downey, NFL draft expert here at Chat Sports. Overall, 257, grade seventh overall. He allowed three sacks in 2020. You can see the height on board, 6'3", 303 pounds. So for the Raiders to take him here, they maybe see a little bit of versatility. When you look at the overall measurables, what I'm looking for at a center, this point in the draft is somebody that not only can you put as a center, but somebody that maybe you could also potentially put as an offensive guard. For the Raiders, you went out and paid Andre James a lot of money, a three-year, $12 million extension. I'm a personal believer that he is going to be the starting center of this football team. You also went out and signed Nick Martin to a one-year kind of prove-it, deal-ish type of move in terms of if Andre James is 100% ready. For any 
anybody right now. If you're going to judge a seventh round pick, I really question what the hell you're ultimately doing with yourself. But let's look at some of the numbers here in 2020. He had three sacks allowed. And for Pittsburgh, remember, guys, I mean, this is a shortened season. Normally at the center position, you don't really want to see a lot of hurries or pressures allowed. And it's obviously, uh, for college football, it's hard to determine sometimes how good a center is because if your two guards next to you aren't really able to get the job done, it can actually make you look a lot worse than what you personally are. And then your numbers normally aren't as good. But four hits allowed, which... Okay, and then 19 pressures. So if I'm being real, these numbers aren't that spectacular, but then again, we're sitting here in round seven. So it's funny, the entire Raiders draft has basically been defense, 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 but it started with an offensive lineman, and now it ends with an offensive lineman. So the Raiders started in round one, pick number 17 with Alex Leatherwood. Then you went on and took Trevon Merrick, who you ended up trading up for, probably the best pick here for the Raiders thus far. Malcolm Kuntz. Pretty solid player from top to bottom. Divine Diablo, another player that I like a lot, a lot. Uh, Tyree, round four, pick 143. Another player that they turned, uh, traded up for, Gillespie from Missouri. Round five, 167, Nate Hobbs. Thought that was a little bit of a reach. And then at round seven, pick number 230, Jimmy Morrissey, center from Pittsburgh. So if y'all are wondering, wait a minute, Mitch, what happened to pick 162? What happened to pick 200? The Raiders traded up from 162, and they gave up 200 to go up and take Tyree Gillespie there. Round four, pick number 143. So grade the pick, A, B, C, D, or F. If you want to give it a C because he plays center, hey, that's totally okay with me. But when you really think about it, you're, you're starting to get into this point now of the draft where – if you don't know certain guys, that's okay because at the end of the day, if you're drafting guys in the seventh round, you're looking for depth. And if you can find somebody realistically that can stick around on your football team for like two, three years, that's actually pretty good value in the seventh round. So go down in the comment section right now. Let me know. Grade the Morrissey pick A, B, C, D, or F. If you're curious about what I have to say, I'm going to give it a B minus. C plus, great. It's an average move, but that's exactly kind of what you're going to get here from top to bottom. So go ahead. Grade the Morrissey pick A, B, C, D, or F. Please go ahead and let me know. I also want to give a special shout out. No, let's not do that one, Jeremy. Um, so No, it's not. So if we can, please, I uh, appreciate everyone watching the show. And uh, I see Owl Super Chat. We, which we'll get to here. My computer, unfortunately, is loading up. So if you could please get that off screen, I'd really appreciate that. Just go back to a normal comment. Um, what we have going on is I want to give a shout-out to Autumn Abyss, which when we'll have to get a brand-new cut now. And uh, Raiders Report, we got a lot of different things going on. So get it off screen. So we have uh, Jimmy Morrissey, who's a pretty solid player from top to bottom and uh, pretty solid center from Pittsburgh. So what's going to happen now on today's show is we're going to be breaking down a few different things here. And we'll, uh, we'll, what's going to happen is I want to be able to go ahead and give you my cuts. So we're, we're going to go ahead and give you the, uh, the entire draft. Yep, that's fine. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to give you our grade picks, grade picks here for all seven, or what is it, seven picks in the Las Vegas Raiders draft. So unfortunately, I lost a little bit of connection here. My computer is just kind of... Uh, Loading up as it stands right now, and um, we see everything going on. Cool, cool, cool. But um, I see what you're looking at, so that's my bad for not keeping you in the loop here. But so from the Raiders standpoint, you got a lot of solid players. I actually like what the Raiders ended up doing here in this mock draft. But what's going to happen now is we're going to be breaking down all the Raiders draft grades. And Jeremy, when I think about the overall grade, if we could actually go ahead in the L3s and update this, I think from top to bottom, the Raiders grade is probably somewhere around like an 87. I think that's probably where I'd stand here. If you guys could go down in the comments section right now, let me know how you think. The uh, <laughs> Somebody said, Mitch, what's with the bootleg version of you on Chat Sports Channel? So remember, guys, only part of my job is the Raiders Report, and it's like 30% of what I do here. I mean, I make a lot of NFL videos over on Chat Sports, and if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do what I do over here for the Raiders Report. And if you're wondering why I have a mustache, it's because I shave my face for a $100 Super Chat, which we got during our live coverage here. So what's coming up right now on the Raiders Report? We're going to be probably doing this cut for like, I don't know, I'll say like 10 minutes or so. 
And it's going to be, you know, we're going to give some love to the Manscaped. I want to give a love to uh, Autumn Abyss, which is where this t-shirt is from right here. So that's what I want to be able to do on today's show. And we're going to be doing this for maybe like 10 to 12 minutes. And then I'm going to go ahead and answer your questions. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever, you can go ahead and use hashtag Raiders. Or you can go ahead and super chat. Raider Nation, what's going on? You are watching the Raiders Report. Today's show and this mustache is provided by Manscaped. Head on over to manscaped.com slash Raiders where you can save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. I was live on Chat Sports. Somebody said, hey, 100 bucks, you can shave your entire face and rock a mustache. I was like, you know what, man? Hell yeah, free mustache rides from here on out. Coming up here on today's show, we're going to be breaking down the entire Raiders draft from the 2021 class, and I'm going to give you my grades on it. The first overall pick, number 17 overall by the Las Vegas Raiders, was Alex Leatherwood. When I first saw this pick, and I know a lot of people out there were like, oh, man, I don't know. I'll be honest with you all. I panicked. I didn't really like it in the beginning. He was my number six offensive tackle. I thought he was the 32 overall prize prospect for the Raiders to take him where they did I was like man I think it's a little bit of a reach I'm just going to tell y'all right now the way that the rest of this draft ended up falling I am way more okay with this pick for the simple fact of this. He is a good offensive lineman with a lot of abilities, a strong run blocker, which is why when you see a guy like Tom Cable, which is why he ended up going with something like this. 6'4", 312 pounds. He's a national champion. He is a captain on his team, one of the players that a lot of people look towards in that Alabama locker room. Three sacks allowed in 2020. So when I think about why the Raiders decided to go this way, it was one of the big biggest needs here. So what I'm curious about is go down in the comments section and I want you to get your grades in. How did you feel about Alex Leatherwood? So if you could go down in the comments, let me know right now how y'all feel about Alex Leatherwood and overall this pick for the Las Vegas Raiders because when I think about it from top to bottom, A, B, C, D, or F, please go down in the comments section right now and let me know. Leatherwood's a good player, and I know a lot of people kind of overreacted at first, but when I think about this from now standpoint, because now I can cheat a little bit. I can say, okay, I saw how the entire draft board fell, and I'm going to tip my cap to a guy like Mike Mack. I'm going to tip my cap to John Gruden for saying, you know what? You rolled the dice, and if Leatherwood's the guy that you wanted, you went out and got him because I'm okay because the guy that you got in second round – even more okay. And I don't know if Leatherwood would have been around for the Raiders' second round pick. So go down to the comment section right now. A, B, C, D, or F. I'm going to give this a B minus grade. Remember, I am a tough grader. A is it's a great pick. B is it's a good pick. C, it's an average pick. This is an above average pick in round one. I saw a lot of people saying it reminds me of Cleveland Furl. Not quite in terms of Cleveland Furl is a very good player. Alex Otherwood, very good player. Did they reach on him a little bit? Sure, they did. It kind of reminds me a lot of Colt Miller. Leatherwood might not be the best tackle year one. That's okay. If we're looking here two, three years down the road, and he's as good as what Colt Miller is right now, you have Colt Miller, Alex Otherwood, yeah, I'm okay with that. All right, y'all, so if you want to know everything going on with the Las Vegas Raiders, hit that big red button that says subscribe. Make sure you don't miss a video. Turn on those notifications. The diehard Raider fans that are watching the Raiders sport in the offseason, those are the dudes that I like to get down with. So if you bleed silver and black, if it's in your veins, if you got a tattooed on your arm, go ahead and subscribe. Once we get to 100,000 subscribers, there's a little birdie. I'm going to give it two chalky heads. I might get a Raiders tattoo. All right, let's go to round two, pick number 43 here. The Las Vegas Raiders had to trade up to get Trevon Merrig, the top safety in this year's draft. I was surprised at Trevon Holland. I was surprised at Richie Grant right in front of him. Y'all can see, Merrick, I thought it should go number 29 overall. I had him higher than Alex Leatherwood, which is kind of why I'm, I'm okay now. Because if you were to tell me about a week ago that we get Merrick and Alex Leatherwood on our first two picks, but you just swap first and second round, dude, I am absolutely loving the start of this draft. He is going to be the free safety. I know Mike Mayock said that he's going to compete with Jeff Heath. What do you expect him to say? Merrick is the better player. He's the guy that they drafted, they traded up for. He is going to be your free safety, your starter on week one. So go ahead and grade the pick A, B, C, D, or F. And what I want you guys to do, because I'm going to ask you to grade A, B, C, D, or F on every single one of these. Put the player's last name, which I've spelled for you on screen, and then put the grade that you have next to it, because that's the important thing here. Not only do I love this pick, not only do I think this is the best pick by the Raiders in this year's draft, 
I'm going to say this is actually probably one of the top five picks in the entire NFL draft. The fact that the top safety on the board, who a lot of experts thought would go top 20, ended up falling to 43, and he fell because he had some back concerns. I'm telling you right now, he's going to be 100% okay. I'm giving this an A+. Plus grade. The number one safety went third in terms of safety prospects. Goes exactly to the team that he needed to go to. I know for Merrick, he already has tweeted out, just win, baby. What more could you possibly want from your player? Absolutely love this kid. I'm excited to see what he's going to do as the Las Vegas Raider. Let's go to round three now. Pick number 79, Malcolm Kuntz, edge rusher from Buffalo, 6'2", 249 pounds. I saw the phone call, John Gruden, Mike Mack, when they ended up calling this kid. They were like, hey, man, you know the last time we took an edge rusher from Buffalo, he was pretty damn good. Are you ready to live up to that hype? Kuntz's answer was, hell yeah, man, I'm ready to rock and roll. You see the grade at round four. That's okay. The reason why I like this pick a lot is because Mayock said that he reminds me a lot of Yannick Ngakwe. I personally believe that the reason why they went out and got Koontz, and if you remember, Yannick Ngakwe was also drafted in round three out of Maryland. You put him underneath Ngakwe's wing and said, hey, this is what I did to really succeed. You can't deny the athletic ability. You can't deny his overall talent. If he can just live up to the hype a little bit, the other thing that I love about him, his bend. Max Crosby had a great bend. That's one of the reasons why he can really get underneath the tackles. I really like the pick here in Koontz. So grade the pick, A, B, C, D, or F. What I want you to do down in the comments, if you're watching us live right now, type Koontz, K-O-O-N-C-E, and then throw in your grade there. I'm not going to give this an A. I've kind of gone back and forth how I thought about this pick. Was it my favorite third-round pick that the Raiders had? No, it wasn't, but I am still going to give this a B- minus grade. This is an above average pick. Was edge rusher the biggest need for this team? No. But one of the biggest reasons why the Raiders decided to move on from Arden Key is because not only could you save over $2 million, and sure, you got another weakness in Carl Nassib. That's why all the trade rumors are around him. But I really like Kuntz because now you have somebody that can probably fill in as like a Benson Mayoa style of role. Like the Raiders have really missed Benny Mayoa, a player who's going to play 30% of the snaps. He's going to be able to come in on third down, pin his ears back, use that athletic ability, and really get after the quarterback. Now today's show is presented by Manscaped. I shaved my face with a lawnmower 3.0 a little bit earlier on the show. And if you want to be able to save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products out there, Head on over to manscaped.com slash Raiders and make sure you use promo code Raiders where, again, 20% off free shipping. The Lawnmower 3.0 fits great in your ham. You can see the light on the end there, which I think I can get to it. Yep, right there. Get those hard to reach places. If you're trying to shave your black hole, if you're sitting there in the shower and you're like, oh, man, I'm going to get electrocuted. No, you're not. This thing's waterproof. An eight-hour battery life. There is not a better tool to use than the Lawnmower 3.0. If you don't believe me, I will send you the video myself of me shaving my face with this bad boy on Chat Sports. Head on over to manscaped.com slash Raiders. 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. Who wants some double Ds? You want some double Ds? I got it for you. Divine Diablo safety from Virginia Tech at 6'3", 226. Wow, that's a big safety, but you see that grade right there? Second and third rounder, number 69 overall. I want everyone right now to start spamming nice in the comments section. This is a player that when he got drafted by the Raiders, Tom literally just shouted, wow, that is an absolutely phenomenal pick. 55 tackles, four interceptions, four pass breakups for Diablo. Now, the reason why I'm really excited about him is because of the fit here. You see the size, 6'3", 226 pounds, the 4.44 40-yard dash. He is a big dude who's really able to get after it. Now, the comp that I'm going to throw out there, I don't see him being a Cam, Cam Chancellor in terms of the right athletic ability and comp, but Gus Bradley, when that defense, the Legion of Boom for the Seattle Seahawks was at its best, it's when it had a guy like Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor, Richard Sherman. I don't think they have their Richard Sherman, and I don't really know if they have their Earl Thomas, even though I love Merrick a lot. But the guy that the way that I think they're going to use somebody like Diablo is a lot like the same way that they use somebody like Cam Chancellor, where he's going to play safety, he's going to play a little bit of a linebacker hybrid. Plus, this is going to allow a guy like Jonathan Abram to really come up and just plow through that box. Giggity. So grade the pick here of Diablo, and it's spelled D-E-A-B-L-O, I believe is the, the correct way to spell it. I was trying to put things together quick. I was excited. So go down in the comments right now. Let me know A, B, C, D, or F. I want you to grade the pick here for De Divine Diablo. I'm going to give it an A-grade. minus I mean, this is a 
above average pick. It's above a good pick. I would almost say it's a great pick. I know this hasn't been a player that I've talked a lot about on the Raiders report. And for that, I apologize, right? We were talking a lot about a, other, a bunch of other safeties because I thought the Raiders were going to go with like a nickel cornerback safety hybrid slash somebody that they could just put at free safety. And the guys at free safety that we talked about were Merrick. You know, we talked about Merrick. We talked about Richie Grant, who ended up going in front of him. Divine Diablo was a name that I wish I would have brought up a little bit more. Maybe once or twice I did. However, it's a really good pick here for the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, the Raiders also traded up for another safety, Tyree Gillespie, safety from Missouri. Gillespie, round four, pick 143, number nine safety overall. So it's pretty interesting the fact that they ended up taking, realistically, three safeties with, well, their top five picks. 5'11", 207 pounds, a number 11, wait, 111 overall, a fourth round grade. The fact that he fell to 143, the Raiders were really excited. That's why they ended up trading pick number 162. They also traded pick number 200, 46 tackles, didn't have any interceptions his entire career, four pass breakups. But what I want you to do, go down in the comments right now again and let me know what you're thinking. He's not really going to be a free safety in this, off, in this defense. That's not how he's going to end up being. But he also played a little bit of free safety. He played some slot as well. He lined up in the nickel. But he's really going to be somebody who's really going to try to just like play a just get after the quarterback type role. He's a good run stopper. I am curious to see how he fits. I do think that the fact that they went out and drafted Divine and a guy like um, you know Tyree Gillespie is bad news for somebody like a uh, Tanner Muse. It's bad news for somebody like an Isaiah Johnson. But A, B, C, D, or F, let me know down in the comment section what you're feeling. This is an A- minus grade for me. Again, another player that I liked a lot. I like the value here. I am normally team trade back, but I've always said I am a man of value. If you think that you can get some solid value here, you go ahead and do it. And if a player that you have ranked is like 110 and he falls down to 143, dude, <coughs> I don't know about you, that spells out value to me. Now, this next pick wasn't as crazy about cornerback from Illinois, Nate Hobbs, round five, pick 167. As you all can see, he was our 40th ranked cornerback. Overall value of 278. The grade is the seventh overall pick. He had 31 tackles, one interception, two pass breakups, but... This is one of those players that I'm actually not too crazy about. Now, did he test well? Yes, he absolutely did. I loved his vertical. I loved his uh, short run. I, I mean, I, I love what he brings from an athletic standpoint. And if you just look at his pro day numbers, which maybe Mayock, Gruden, and Gus Bradley did, you're going to be excited. But if you go watch the tape, he gets burnt way too much. And he's, I believe, given up a completion percentage of like 86%. That does scare me a lot because I think we are all – realize we're sick and tired of seeing cornerbacks get burnt here by the Las Vegas Raiders. So grade the Hobbs pick, A, B, C, D, or F. I think I've actually done a pretty good job so far. I don't know if I've given a single C, and no, I haven't given a single C grade yet. However, here's going to be my first C grade, and I don't really like to be the guy that gives a C grade on round five, but when you take somebody that I believe is a little bit below average of where he should have gone, that's what's going to happen. Does he actually have some high upside, though? Yes, I do. Is he going to be a pretty solid a special teams player? That's where I believe he makes his biggest impact because when you look at his speed, when you look at his ability to really be able to get after you know the people or the quarterback or whatnot, especially going down the field, that would be great. Also, Jeremy, if you could fix the lower third that you're about to show real quick, it's literally just Autumn Abyss, no code. So if you get rid of that real quick, that would be uh, greatly, greatly appreciated there. And uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get that one together. But for grade the Hobbs pick, a, B, C, D, or F, if you guys please could, go down in the comments section and uh, let me know. If you guys like the shirt that I am wearing, it is from Autumn Abyss. So head on over to AutumnAbyss.com where you can get some high quality gear. Now, the deal, unfortunately, it ended maybe, just maybe I can sweet talk them to getting you guys some 30% off. But head on over to Autumn Abyss and if you join the Abyss, so basically this is the way I can get you guys your deal, okay? If you join the Abyss by going to AutumnAbyss.com, you click the very first button that you see. It says, I believe it says, Join the Abyss. You can get 20% off and get you guys hooked up on deals. The reason why I love this company is because if you guys like shirts that feel like Nike Dry Fit, it's the highest quality shirt that I've ever worn in terms of a Raiders t-shirt. Plus, they also give back the foundation. So if you want a Tom Flores hoodie, you can get a Tom Flores hoodie plus all the uh, money the proceeds also goes to help the Tom Flores Foundation. They also have a proceed in terms of like helping kids in Oakland. The Bojack, like they have so many different awesome quality t-shirts. Please go ahead and check them out. AutumnAbyss.com. 
Dot-com and tell Mitch sent you. All right, the last pick here, round seven, pick 230 overall. Jimmy Morrissey, center from Pittsburgh. He's 6'3", 303 pounds. He's my 25th overall center, 257, grade seventh round pick. So again, this is basically exactly where I saw a player like him going. He's a smart football player, which happens a lot from the guys from Pittsburgh. Three sacks allowed in 2020. What I want you to do is go down in the comments section again and let me know, pass or fail, grade the pick, A, B, C, D, or F, type Morrissey, and then go ahead and type the grade in there. I mean, again, when you when you get to this point in the draft, you're looking for versatility. You're looking for somebody that could potentially actually be just a player that makes your roster. So I'm going to give it a B minus grade. He's a good player. He's a smart player. And it actually makes a lot of sense for me why Gruden would actually like him. He was a big time leader in the locker room from a lot of the things that his coaches were saying about him. And if that's the type of dude that you're looking for that can be a Gruden grinder, then go ahead. And take that guy. All right, y'all, so we're getting ready to wrap up this bad boy right here. I want you to go ahead and rate the Raiders draft, okay? Zero to 100. So zero to 100. So go down in the comments section and let me know. If you're thinking like, man, this was 100 greatest, best draft the Raiders have had in a long time, go ahead and type 100. But we've all been to school, right? Would you be proud of a test grade of 80? Maybe some people would. Would you be proud of a test grade of a 90? When I remember my, my days, I was never a good student. I'm just going to be honest with you all right now. I was always the, the class clown, having a good time, joking around here and there. But what I want you to do, let me know how you feel about the Raiders draft, 0 to 100. My grade is an 87 overall, which is a good grade. It's a it's a above above good, right? It'd be like a B plus, if you will. It didn't quite hit an A because even though the Alex Leatherwood pick was I'm okay with it now, you still could have gone a lot of different options, in my personal opinion. There's still some other better tackles out there. And realistically, that's probably one of the biggest reasons why it's not an A, because remember, the most important pick of the draft is that round one pick. The Raiders, though, they didn't quite go the right direction. They also went a very, very heavy in that defensive backfield, which it explains exactly how a guy like Gus Bradley feels about a lot of the players that the Raiders drafted last year and the year before that. You're going to see a lot of competition, which I am very, very excited to see. So it's just another reason to subscribe to the Raiders report because we're going to be breaking a lot of stuff down in May, in June, and July, just because it's the off season, we're still going to be keeping you guys updated on videos every single day. Raider Nation, go ahead, type down your grades in the comment section below. All right, y'all, so we're going to go through all the picks that ended up happening here, and then if you guys want to get your questions on the show, if you want to super chat, you can use hashtag Raiders, or you can go ahead and... Uh, you super chat. So, Larnell Coleman is actually an offensive attack from UMass. That's the route that I thought the Raiders were going to go with because he had a video chat with uh, with Las Vegas. Phil Hoskins, defensive lineman from Kentucky. Off the board, we had Jake Funk. All right, let's get the Funk started here. Absolutely love it. Patrick Johnson, Wyatt Hubert, Jack Anderson. Those were the next picks there. We're going to keep it rolling here. Kerry Vincent Jr., Matt. F wow. Farnick? Did I get that right? I have no idea. Forniuk, uh, Jonathan Cooper, William Bradley King, and then Mark Webb, safety from Georgia. This is exactly where we are at now. Pick 242. So this is how this is going to go here. Basically what's going to happen is... We're going to be able to answer questions. We're going to break things down here on the Raiders report. So if you guys have a question that you want to get answered, you can go ahead and super chat. You can use hashtag Raiders. And if you want me to drink a little bit, hey, let's uh, let's get the party started. My dad just sent me a picture, and he just sent me. So my dad right now is big time Mets fan. He just sent me a picture of uh, him at the Mets game right now, and he's right behind home plate. So he said, if you see a right-handed batter, he's going to be waving. So. You guys could go check out the Mets. Uh, he's he's going to be waving at you. All right, so we had a super chat coming from Ron Stanley, and let's just say this. Ron Staley has been the MVP of today's Raiders show. Sent in a hundred dollar super chat, which when I did this, uh, when I did the beer chug, I was live on Chat Sports, so I poured a little bit of vodka in my beer, and I ended up taking down a beer bong. But I'll tell you what, man, I'll make you guys a deal right now. I want to. Uh, so Jeremy said that he will take a hot sauce and vodka shot for 100. And you know what? I'm all about deals here. If anybody sends in another, if anybody sends in a $50 super chat, he's going to go ahead and take a hot sauce and vodka shot. And you know what? If you send in a $75 super chat, you're going to get Jeremy. You're going to get me. We're going to do both a vodka and uh, 
Nice little hot sauce. I don't even know where we're going with here. But uh, I appreciate everyone watching. If you could, go ahead, get your questions here on the show. What up, Al? I just went to the zoo and saw like three people with Raider hats. The fan base runs strong. There's not a better fan base out there. I can promise you that. Every $20 super chat that we get from here on out, all the shot glasses, by the way, guys, they're dirty. Um, they're, they're over there. They're dirty. So I'm just going to take fireball. Oh, wait. Oh, Jeremy Chugg's coming up clutch here. Nice. Here we go. We're classy. We're classy people here at Chatsport. So every single $20 super, we're going to take some fireball shots. Let's, let's get the party started. Ah. Ow, or ow, I don't know. All right, so we got, I think this draft was great. Great, this is a stretch. Good, very good, I'm with very good. I gave it an 87 grade, and I'm happy with a lot of the picks. Do I think there was opportunities for the Raiders to get better picks? Yes, I do. Now, I think the Raiders were pretty smart in the way that they maneuvered this draft when there were certain players that ended up falling down their board. They ended up in pounce. Do I wish to pick number 167? Hobbs was a little bit of a different pick. Yes, I do. And then their last pick as well is a little bit questionable to me as well. But, like, to give it an A grade is a little bit of a stretch. However, I am pretty excited about the Raiders draft class this year. So, who is your favorite Raider on the team right now? And you know what I want you to do? I want you to only pick the rookies, okay? And it's fun now that I can finally say the rookies and not talk about guys like Ruggs, Arnett, you know, somebody like Brian Edwards. Out of the picks this year, who is your favorite rookie? I'm going to change up the question a little bit because this is the 2021 NFL draft here. And um, Carlos Avila says, Raider fans just need to imagine the first two picks were swapped. Carlos, you are 100% right because, again, if I would have told you all that Merrick was 17 and Leather was at 48 or whatever, you all would have been like, yo, this is a great draft. Instead, people are so set on Leather would go on 17 and not really realizing that I really think because the amount of offensive tackles that went after Leatherwood, the Raiders might not have gotten the guy that they wanted. I mean, even Tevin Jenkins, the Bears traded up for him, and they got him before the Raiders would have picked at 48. So I like the way that the draft fell the first two picks. I, I really, really do. No surprise here. A lot of people going with uh, Merrick, which uh, does not surprise me. I messaged Merrick on Twitter. I also messaged him on Instagram. If you guys want Javon Merrick to come here on the Raiders Report, I'm going to ask a little bit of help. I want you to tweet at him, message him, be like, hey, man, go on the Raiders report. I would love to be able to do an interview with him. Trevon, if you end up seeing this video and you want to come on the video, uh, you know, just let me know, man, at Ren 365 All right, y'all, so if you bleed silver and black, if you're a diehard Raider fan, I want you to go ahead and smash that like button, plus all the picks that are happening in the NFL draft, you can see them down below. So James Wiggins, safety from Cincinnati, he just ended up going to the Arizona Cardinals. But I'm just going to be real with you all. I study a lot of players, okay? I study about, we'll say, 150 players every year. It's about how much time I get. We're into the point now where I don't know a bunch of these guys. Maybe one or two players will get drafted. Like, okay, I know that dude. This is where Tom Downey excels. So if you guys want more draft coverage, go to our main chat sports channel, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. If you want to hang out with me and the rest of the nation here, go ahead, give us a like, smash that button. All right, y'all. So if you want to keep this chat going, it's pretty simple. You got a super chat or use hashtag Raiders. If we don't get any super chats, then I'm going to head on out of here. I'm going to... I'm going to get out of here, and then we'll just, uh, you know, get the rest of our day started. Jeremy says that he's thirsty, so we got 577 people watching, 1,084 likes right now. Since we did hit 1,000 likes, I'll make you guys a deal. I'm going to spin the roulette wheel right now, so give me a sec. We'll let that spin. We'll see what ends up coming across here, but the next uh, super chat is this. Sergio Macias, did I get that right? Solid 85 draft, okay. Would have traded down in round one. I'm with you. Could have got better value at in round five. Any potential UDFAs? Let me say this. So tomorrow is usually my off day, but I said, no, we're going to come in. We're going to work tomorrow, and we're going to be doing a whole bunch of UDFA stuff tomorrow, so stay tuned on that. Now, in terms of some other players that I might have been a little bit lower on, I mean, Jeremy, can you pull up Tom Downey's best available players for me? And then we'll go through those 12 players probably, and I'll tell you which guys are still available. I mean, I know I don't really like Dylan Moses in terms of a prospect, but this is perfect. But, I mean, Marvin Wilson would be a good UDFA because as a UDFA, you got to work your tail off to make the roster. If you can get a motivated Marvin Wilson, that's the type of player I want. Our Darius Washington... He should have gone, I'm not kidding you when I say this, 150 picks ago. Why not bring in Trevon Merrick's old teammate at TCU? That, I like that value a lot there. 
Kate Johnson is kind of like a Hunter Renfro type of player, so I don't think they go that route. Um, Charles Snowden, Dylan Moses, I know a lot of you are like, I've told you I don't like Moses. I thought he'd go in round five, round six, but the knee injury must scared of, scared off a lot of teams. He'd be somebody that I would bring in as a UDFA because if he is healthy, he's going to be a damn good football player. JV and Hawkins could actually be a pretty interesting name if the Raiders do decide to move on from Jalen Rashard. Hawkins was one of the only running backs that the Raiders did a video chat with, and no disrespect to Rashard in terms of who's a better player right now. I do think Jalen Rashard is a better player than Hawkins, but if I can save $3.5 million, I'm going to go ahead and do it, especially when you consider the fact that he's just an RB3. Let's go to Joe Jobadas123. Mitch, what rookie are you most excited for? Keep up the good work. It's got to be Merrick. I mean, I want to see. I think he's going to make the biggest impact in year one. Obviously, I want to see what Alex Leatherwood could do because he's a nasty dude. He beats up people on the offensive line. He's a good leader. Now, I know I saw somebody say that, like, there were two players in the NFL draft that had the most, like, I don't know, like, TikTok things. There's two, there, one of the concerns about Leatherwood is that he's too immature. And uh, I've talked to a few scouts personally. They said Leatherwood's a very good player. He's a nasty, but he needs to grow up a little bit. Anytime I hear that a player needs to grow up a little bit and then being in Vegas does scare me a little, especially because, let's face it, I mean, if I was 21, had millions of dollars, I would be, you know, doing maybe things that I shouldn't be doing. I'm just being real with you. But I need Leatherwood to grow up a little bit. That's why I'm a little bit worried, but I'm excited about both of those young players. Let's go to Oakland Raiders 1. Man, I miss saying Oakland Raiders. If anybody else misses saying Oakland, I want you to start spamming some O's in the comments. Let's give a big shout-out to the O. There will be nothing quite like it. I mean, in terms of a tailgating experience, don't get me wrong. I am so excited for Vegas. Like, I can't wait to be able to hang out with some fans, be able to have a good time, you know, have a few beers, have some food, because there's nothing like a Raiders tailgate. But with all that being said, I am so happy that I was able to experience an Oakland tailgate because, man, I've been to a lot of parties. I've been to some crazy things going on. There, there's nothing like a tailgate in Oakland, and I want you all to be able to realize that. So spam O's in the comments. I got Don, Brendan, Hank Mir, Java, Revere, Manuel, Miguel Alvarez, Joan Estier, Manuel Creative. We got Dennis, Black Lion Supreme, all spam and O's down there in the comment section. All right, look at the Raiders offensive line depth chart here. When you think about it, the only other pick that you got to slot in here is the Raiders' seventh-round pick, who's going to be behind Nick Martin at center because when you have Alex Otherwood, he's going to be your starting right tackle, which I obviously we all know is going to happen. But then the other pick in round seven for the Raiders, he's going to end up being that backup center role, probably to a guy like Nick Martin. You're just looking for depth. And as a reminder, just because you are picked in the NFL draft, it does not mean that you are going to make the final 53-man roster. Most of the time it is that way. But the Raiders have been a team that – the Raiders have definitely been a team that have shown that, hey, if you can produce and you can be a solid player, even if you're a UDFA, Javen White, Keelan Doss, Alec Ingold, you have a chance to make the roster. So if y'all want to shout out right now, I want you to go retweet my pin tweet at MitchellRens365. I know a lot of times I'm always telling y'all, hey, go ahead, go to Twitter, go to this or that. But you know what? We uh, I got a pin tweet, and uh, it's uh, Manscaped is sponsored in that, and they're like tagged in this. And most of the comments right now are balls. And I don't know what happened exactly. I think they did some little thing on our chat sports channel. So if you guys could go retweet my pin tweet, at MitchellRens365, I'll give you guys some shout-outs here. We'll be able to continue to spread the love of Raider Nation on Twitter. But I will say, if there's a place that some people don't really like me all that much, it is probably Raiders Twitter. But I think we all know it's probably just because some people are maybe a little bit jealous of the connections that we've all been able to build here. All right, so if you guys look down below, Jared Dokes, running back from Cincinnati, he went to the Miami Dolphins. Trey Norwood, safety from Oklahoma, he ended up going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then Shaka Tony, the most recent pick, 246 overall to the Washington football team. Actually, like a lot of the stuff that the Washington football team was able to do. All right, so I'm going to my pinned tweet right now on Twitter, at Mitchell Ryan 365 and if you guys retweeted it, I'll give you a shout out. So we got Miss Y Audiobook slash book review. Shout out to you. And then Bill. Much love, uh, much love to Bill. Appreciate you guys watching right now. Another one just came in from Todd Shaw. If you guys haven't already, please go retweet my pinned tweet. We would greatly, greatly appreciate it. It helps us out here because again, Twitter's a good way for more people to come across the show, and more people to see what we're doing, and the more people that see what we're doing, the more videos we can eventually do. Once we get to 100,000 views, no, 100,000 videos, then we can, uh, you know, I think really crank up the, the volume of shows that we do around here. 
All right, y'all. So this is what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to super chat or uh, you guys can use hashtag Raiders. But if we don't get any other supers, then I'm probably going to head on out of here. Uh, I'm going to get ready to start all our videos that we got to do here at Chat Sports. So if you could rep your city, let me know where you're watching from right now in the draft. I would greatly appreciate that. If you want me to take a shot of Fireball, we're doing like $20 super chats for Fireball. Uh, may, might even... I'm listening. Yeah. All right. So Jeremy just said for twenty-five dollars, we're gonna take a shot. So if you guys want, we'll get it going. Zornell Malone, we've got two supers in there, real quick. Zornell says, "Do Henry Rubber the third? I think you mean Henry Ruggs, have fifty to seventy catches, eight hundred yards?" So that's still a little bit of a stretch for me. I like Ruggs a lot. I think he's gonna be able to add a lot more versatility to this offense. The issue with Ruggs is, I, th I am a big believer that he reminds me a lot in terms of like Cliff Branch, where it might take him a year or two to kind of fill into his body a little bit, add on some solid NFL weight in terms of muscle. 50 catches, though, is probably a little bit more realistic. If he only if he has 70 catches, 800 yards, that's not good because for Ruggs, man, you want him to be able to stretch the field. I want him to be around that 15, 16 yards per catch type of range. Now, sure. You can use them in a lot more different avenues, maybe hand them off the football a little bit more. But if I'm Ruggs, if I can get to 700 yards and like 45 catches, that's probably where I'm thinking he's going to be this upcoming season. Let's go to Sergio Macias. What up, my dude? I would have to go linebacker, defensive lineman on round five. Would love Wallow. I'm with you, Garrett Wallow, uh, linebacker from TCU. Or Hayes, another solid player there from Notre Dame. Not sold on Hob, looking good uh, at that stash. So I appreciate it. I do think that I rock a mustache at least halfway decent. I know some people that can't do it, but I'm luckily fortunate enough that my dad's Italian and he's a one hairy dude. But I am also lucky that I'm not hairy really anywhere else. All right, Dan, what up, my man? Do you think we will play Carl like Seattle plays Adams? No, I think you're going to play Jonathan Abram the way that um, Seattle plays Jamal Adams. Like Carl Joseph, not going to start. I really don't think he even gets, I'll say, too much time because if I'm the Raiders, I'll play Divine Diablo over Carl Joseph because at this point, you have more invested in Diablo than you do Carl Joseph. So if I'm really trying to get more rep for my safeties, Joseph to me is probably the fifth safety on the roster. Now, that might not start like that day one, but if that's the route I'm going, like Diablo is more of your future than Carl Joseph. Joseph to me is a little bit more of just insurance just in case somebody like Jamal Adams goes down who has, in fact, not Jamal Abs, who uh, Jonathan Abram, who in fact has you know gone down before. All right, let's go to National Raider. We got 526 people watching. I'm gonna set a timer right now, Jeremy. Where this is what's gonna happen. If we don't get any more super chats, we're basically gonna either simulcast the chat sports for the remainder of the draft, and then we're gonna you know say bon voyage. And I appreciate everyone else watching. But uh, if you want me to stay live here on the Raiders report. Got to get some supers coming in or else my boss would tell me I got to go out and do some other stuff here. So, National underscore Raider. Mitch, I wasn't necessarily shooting for Sha Shakir Brown, but when he was available at 203, I was kind of hoping that we'd grab him. What do you think uh, why he slid? I, so, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if he slid all that much. This is another player that I wasn't all too high on, but the biggest reason why you saw so many players slide is because 2020 was a crazy year. Not as much film on guys. And without an NFL combine... A lot of scouts don't trust Pro Day. So if they had an opportunity to watch a guy in person or if they were able to talk to certain coaches and do certain meetings with certain people, they probably trust their gut in that regard. That's why you saw a lot, a lot of players this year end up sliding down draft boards. Let's go to Sean Kennedy. Would you trade back into round seven for Ardarius Washington so he doesn't sign somewhere else? Here's the thing. If I'm Ardarius Washington, I don't want to get drafted in round seven. And for some of you are like, wait a minute, why not? Because now as a UDFA, you actually have the opportunity to pick where you go. Because there's going to be like 10, 11, 12 teams that say, hey, Ardarius, we want you on the roster. If you are Darius Washington, this is where you say, okay, where am I going to potentially go that gives me the best place to stick around on an NFL team? I don't know if something medical popped up for him, but if I'm an NFL player right now, obviously everybody likes to hear their name called. But I'd rather actually be a UDFA. Yes, I make a little bit less money. But I have a better chance of having a longer NFL career because I can say, like, okay, I'm going to try to stick around in this regard. All right, we got Philip Hurl here. Is Mitch hammered yet? I'm not hammered yet. I actually feel pretty good. I was absolutely trashed in round one because y'all kicked my ass. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. Today, I'm okay. I definitely drank a lot more today than I did yesterday, but... I see the finish line. I mean, we are so close to wrapping up this 2021 NFL draft, and I know everyone here at Chat Sports is, you know, a little bit worn down, which is to be expected. 
we've probably worked close to 45 hours over these last three days and but it's because we're a smaller channel we're a smaller show we're still trying to be able to build and give you guys the uh, the love that you deserve so all right so we're uh, we're not gonna simulcast all right, we're staying alive to the end of the draft. That's what I like to see. So if you want a shout out, I want you to go give producer Jeremy a follow on Twitter. Hit him up at J.I. Beadling on Twitter. And so what I'm going to make him do is I'm actually going to make him give some shout outs here. So what I want you to do, Jeremy, everybody that follows you on Twitter, excuse me, and I, I had to burp, man. That was a, that was a hell of a burp. Whew. A little bit worried about that one. So if you go give Jeremy a follow on Twitter, he's going to give you a shout-out. So the voice you're about to hear in the background is Jeremy. It's not me. All right, nobody yet, but... Nobody yet. <laughs> we got to keep it Go rolling. get my man. Oh, wait. I, I, I bet you I have an easier way here. So we're going to stay live until the end of the draft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Jeremy's Twitter in the... Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. In the live chat... Well, I almost put it in Slack. That's embarrassing. So that's Jeremy's Twitter. I want you to go click that link, and I want you to go give my man Jeremy a follow for working so hard behind the scenes here. If you guys want to see Marshall... I'm, I'm 12 away. I want you to go ahead and spam M. What, 12 away from what? Or 11 away 11 from, away from what? 1,200. All right, so he's 11 away from 1,200. If we can get Jeremy to 1,200 followers on Twitter, Jeremy's going to come on here and take a shot. And Marshall, who just randomly walked into the studio, I'm going to make him take a shot. So if we can get Jeremy Chugs to 1,200 followers on Twitter, I will put the link in there one more time. He's going to come on here and take a shot. So go ahead, give oh. my man a follow on Twitter. He is at J.I. Beadling. And I'm going to give some shout-outs to some of the people that have most recently <coughs> followed him. Where are we at? Uh, he's nine away. Yes. Nine away. What do you got? Go. This name is amazing. Miss Y slash audiobook slash book reviewer slash one dose to go. Wow. Thank you for the follow. Peter Chavez, Alexander Rene as well. Todd Shaw. Y'all are all real ones. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> go give my man a follow on Twitter at J.I. Beadling. I'll put oh, the another link. one. Another, another one, one rolling in. Bleeding. J another one. I'm not going to lie. When we, uh, when we hired Jeremy, uh, James goes, yeah, we hired Jared Beadling. I was like. We heard a guy with the last name of Bleeding. I don't think that's a very good thing to do, but he's, uh, he's what, one of the best what is here. That, what is that I hear? Ma Marshall wants to come and take a shot? Marshall wants to take a shot. I mean, at this point, I mean, we can get wild here. Why not? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Marsh. Come on, Marshy Marsh. So Marshall's like the guy who does a lot of stuff in our live chat. He does a lot of the behind-the-scenes work as well. Here's the thing, though. He's a Giants fan. So I want everyone right now to boo Marshall because he's a Giants fan. But he does, a, he does do a lot of work for us, and if it wasn't for him, we actually wouldn't be able to do a lot of the videos that we, uh, we do here at Chat Sports. So, everyone, say hi to Marshall. Uh, DJ Gusto says porn stash. Yeah, this is uh, – I'm excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually excited to go home and see Alex because she's going to be like – if she's not watching the live show, I don't know how <laughs> she's going to react. Because the other, actually, I'm going to be honest. So, last night – um, I go home, and a lot of times, like, she'll play the show as background noise when she's, like, trying to do work. She is, like, passed out on the couch, like, literally in this position here. My dog Chuck's laying on her lap, and Chuck woke up. She didn't when I came home. So I got really close to her face, and Chuck, he gets really excited. So he'll, like, start licking. It was just licking her face, and she's like, what? Like, I could literally see her, like, freaking out. But when she sleeps, you almost have to literally yell in her face to wake her up because she just, like, is unconscious. But, babe, if you're watching, you know I love you. All right, let's go to Champ Style Sports. We've got a super chat in here right now. Can move that we uh, got, fireball. Um, sign Casey Hayward. Our Brian Pohl start in the slot ASAP. It's hard to uh, play. Don't need rookies there. Too sure we can run anymore. Need vets that can still play. In terms of, like, who I still think is a better player, I actually still think Richard Sherman is better than Casey Hayward. But... Casey Hayward, I believe it would be half the price of Richard Sherman. But in terms of Brian Poole, dude, I am 100% with you. I, if I could still figure out a way to get Brian Poole on a good contract, I would be 100% willing to do it. Like, if you're telling me right now, if we could figure out a way to get rid of Carl Nassib, let's say trade him away, you save about $3.85 million. You cut Jalen Richard, save $3.5 million. Use that $7 million and go get yourself a player like Brian Poole. 
absolutely. He's been a top five slot corner the last, not top five is a stretch, probably top 15 slot corner the last three years in the National Football League. Champ Style Sports, I appreciate you. I'm out of beer. Um, so how about this? I'm just going to start drinking some Fireball for Super Chats that we get. Let's go to Dude. <laughs> That's a good name. That's a high-quality Raiders name right there. Dude, where's my car? Mitch, great job this weekend. How disappointed are you not to get that Hooker jersey? There's still time. There's still time to get a Malik Hooker jersey. Now, I've actually thought about getting my own Raiders jersey, and if you guys want to help me out, decide, because I'm not normally somebody that likes to get a you know custom-made jersey. It's not really normally what I do, but here's the thing. I've been kind of wanting to just get a jersey that's like Wren's, but I can't get one that's 365, and I feel like, like that's what I should do. My college number was 9. I also played baseball. I was number 17. Should I get like Wren's 69? Should I get my birth year 93? If I was to get a Raiders jersey with Wren's on my back, which number should I get? I want you guys to go down in the comment section. I want you to start spamming what jersey number I should get. See, like 69, though, is taken. And I feel bad taking somebody else's number, which is, I know, a weird thing to, to think, but, like, that's not my number. So what number do you think I should get? If I get a custom Raiders jersey, which number should I get? Tony Cruz has, like, a whole bunch of ones in there, so. Why 34? See, Jeremy says 34, but I know, like, here's the other issue. When I think of certain numbers, I think of my old college teammates. So 34 is my catcher, Dave, who's going to be one of the best men in my wedding. Bo Jackson was 34, but that's the thing. Like, I'm not Bo Jackson. I'm not trying to be Bo. Nobody can be Bo. See, Schlock, see, Schlock says 365, which is how I feel as well, but I can't find a place where I can get a jersey that says 365. Sergio says 75. Hank Moore is going to go with 69. 93 from Ryan Perez. Double zero from Dungeon. Sloak's going to go with 96. Wren's double zero. Like, what? So, I don't, that's the thing. I'm not Jim Otto either. You know what I mean? Like, That actually be interesting. If I get six on the front, 35 on the back, I've actually thought about just getting a jersey that says, like, four and then Chucky heads. But if something happens to Gruden, then what do I do? You know what I mean? Like, I'm, uh, I'm curious what I should do. So, again, like, my, my decisions are, somebody said 666. I ain't doing that. My birthday is February 20, so 220. I thought about getting 20. And the issue is, though, like, I'm not a big Damon Ornette fan, so I don't know if I want to do that. Roy said 007. See, if I'm going to get three numbers, it's 365, but I can't find a place that I can get a Raiders jersey with three numbers on it. So maybe you guys could help me out here. Somebody said 84. If I got an 84 jersey, here's the thing, though. I'll make you guys a deal. I would get Wren's 84 if then everybody who owns an Antonio Brown jersey takes Brown off their name tag and slaps Wren's on there. But I also don't know. Spam FAB in the comments, as always. We got a Federico says 17 plus 9 equals 29. That's a pretty good idea, or 26, which I kind of like. But here's the other thing. I know I just mentioned my other friend Dave, my uh, one of my other best men who's going to be in my wedding, Joe, who's my roommate in college. He was 26 in baseball. So when I think of the number 26, I think of my man Joe Forcellini. Uh 99 from Fudge, 0 2 from Dominic, 74 from Zornell. Um, yep, do it. I want to get a Raiders jersey. I just don't know what to get. All right, let's go to Raiden. Do you think Nick Bolton will give Jacobs problems when we play Kansas City? I'm not too worried about one player in particular, if I'm being real with you all. Like, Nick Bolton's a good player, and I actually did like what the Chiefs were able to do in the uh, in the draft. I thought they also had a pretty good, you know, um, offseason as well. But when I realistically think about everything that the Chiefs did, one player is not just going to slow down a running back. Like, it's more of a scheme fit from top to bottom. I don't know what is going on out there, but they are getting wild. Let's go to Infine. Did Marvin Wilson get drafted? If not, could we get him in UDFA? Same thing for Dylan Moses. So if you want, uh, Chugs, can we go through the latest picks that we haven't like recapped? If you guys haven't noticed, the, the picks are right underneath me here. So if you want me to talk more about the NFL draft, I can do that. If you want me to just, you know, talk about Raiders, that I can also do. So let's go to 241 was Mark Webb. Trey Nixon, James Wiggins, uh, Jared Dokes was a player, and then Trey Norwood, Shaka Tony, Michael Manette, Will Fries, best fries, comment below. Ben Skorinek, uh, Tonga, Chris Wilcox, Giggity, and then Chris Garrett. Those are the most recent picks, so still no Marvin Wilson. Three picks remaining, really? That's it? 
Wow, three picks remaining, and then we're done. That's that's wild to me. So, um, so yeah, Marvin Wilson would be a pretty good option. I also think Dylan Moses would be a good option. Those would be both players that I would like. We're also going to be working tomorrow. Keep, keep in mind there. So in terms of, like, best players available and in terms of who the Raiders should go out and get, I still like a guy like Ardarius Washington, Marvin Wilson again. But if you're certain players, you're like, where can I go and have the most success? Marvin Wilson, I do think, would be a pretty good, pretty good option here for, for the Raiders. But if you guys want to throw in the comments what you guys think in terms of, like, who are some UDFAs you'd like the Raiders to get, please go down in the comments and let me know. I see a comment down there from Hank Moore. Who is a better corner, Sean Wade or Damon Arnett? If you look at the round grade value, I, I will say Arnett. But if you also look at the tape at Ohio State, Sean Wade was better than Arnett, and Arnett was behind Wade. So it does scare me a little bit that uh, Wade ended up going in round five. But he had some injuries. He had a pretty rough year himself. But I'm, uh, I'm actually still going to go with Damon Arnett as it stands right now. But both players are buried, I think, depending on scheme. All right, y'all, so 473 people watching right now. 1,120 likes. I've actually run out of water, so we're just drinking Fireball at this point to stay hydrated, which maybe is not the best move, but you know what? It's okay. Let's go to Real Steve Daly. Who do you think we should have taken in round one? I understand Jeremiah will score more if fell down the board a lot, and apparently there's some medical issues there that a lot of people didn't know. However, if I could still have Jeremiah and then a guy like, I don't know, if I could get Merrick, Jeremiah will score more both my first two picks and then figure out a way maybe to trade up for somebody like a Liam Eichenberg. I mean, that would have been a nice round pick there, but like, I'm not too upset how the draft felt because if you were to swap Merrick and Leatherwood, I'm okay. And if us, the way that the draft board fell, I mean, maybe Tevin Jenkins would have been a player that I would have been a little bit more higher on, but I'm, a, I'm actually... I'm, I'm okay with the way that the draft board fell. All right, Anthony, FAB and FTB. If you had to pick one, if you only say FAB or FTB, which route would you go? So F Antonio Brown, F Trent Brown. I mean, I'll say this. I'm going to type FTB because Trent Brown took a lot more money away from the Raiders than Antonio Brown did. Sure, AB kind of threw us through a loop and screwed us over a little bit, no doubt about that. But Antonio Brown, we didn't give any money to. We gave Trent Brown about $36 million, and all he did was didn't want to show up, and he was fat and lazy. So this might surprise some people. I am more Team FTB than I am Team FAB because $36 million went into Trent Brown's pocket, and he literally said he never wanted to be a Raider. He literally got fat and lazy, over 400 pounds, didn't want to play, paid him $76,000 per snap. So, uh, yeah, I'm actually Team FTB. And somebody said F both. That's fine as well. All right, we got Schluke Shush. Do you think Devine will play linebacker? I do not. I think Devine is actually going to play this, like, hybrid role in terms of a safety linebacker where he can come up and play. Go back and watch the tape of how Gus Bradley used Cam Chancellor. That's the way that I anticipate the Raiders using somebody like Devine Diablo. What up, Julian? Much love to you, my man. Why did we not get a cornerback? I mean, we, we kind of did. Uh, you got Hobbs, uh, cornerback from Illinois in round five. He was more of a seventh-round grade on me. So to me, this says this, right? The Raiders went out and signed Rasul Douglas a little bit before the draft. So you had Arnett, you have Rasul Douglas. I know we don't have an updated depth chart. I don't know if we actually have it moved over, so I'm actually not even going to ask you to do that. You have it? So if we could actually go to the, the DB depth chart, I'll kind of walk you through it. Now, again, I don't have the rookies on screen, so you just got to try to imagine where the rookies are. But the reason why they didn't do this is because they like Rasul Douglas. You have Damon Arnett. They have Amik Robertson. They like what they have in Isaiah Johnson. Yeah, perfect. So you also added a lot of players at safety. For the Raiders here, though, they want to add a veteran corner. And I actually still believe that they will. I don't know if it's going to be a Casey Hayward. Maybe it's going to be a Richard Sherman. I'm still going to bet that it's a Hayward type of player. But... That's why I don't think they went out and drafted another cornerback. Now, sure, they drafted Hobbs, but I'm telling you all right now, he might not even be a lock to make the team because I think once he gets into camp, people are going to be like, all right, he's a good athlete, but he can't really do too much on the field. But uh, I am curious to see what happens with somebody like Nevin Lawson because the fact that he's suspended the first two games, uh, we just get rid of that guy. So, um, And uh, I'm also a believer that Merrick's going to be the starter at free safety over Jeff Heath. And then you could probably throw 
Carl Joseph behind the starting strong safety in Jonathan Abram. So let's continue to go through here some of these super chats and questions on the Raiders report. If you're wondering why the hell I shaved my mustache, it's because I had to because of Manscaped. But how about this? I do want to give another shout out to Autumn Abyss who is uh, the clothing sponsor of today's live broadcast, at least in the, the seventh round. Autumn Abyss has a lot of high-quality shirts. If you guys want shirts that feel like dry fit, Autumn Abyss is the place for you. So please go to autumnabyss.com, and if you guys go ahead and get started there, you can get some really, really high-quality shirts. The other thing that I love about these guys, they want to give back to the nation. So this is a company for Raider Nation made by Raider Nation. And if you go ahead and get a Tom Flores hoodie, part of the proceeds go to the Tom Flores Foundation. If you go ahead and get a uh, Las Vegas t-shirt, part of those proceeds go to help kids in Oakland. If you get a Bo Jackson jersey, all the shirts, every single purchase that you can make there, they go to a certain proceed to help people around Raider Nation. So I love what Autumn Abyss does. AutumnAbyss.com. You can see down below how to spell it. AutumnAbyss.com. Let's go to Sergio. What up, my man? We have... Uh, can we wrap up this offseason by signing Casey Hayward or Brian Poole? If I had to pick between one or two, I'd actually rather go Brian Poole. And you all know that I like Hayward, but Poole to me is more of a primetime player. There's going to be a lot of these other players that sign with certain teams. And the fact that the Raiders didn't sign a cornerback, not sign, draft a cornerback, I'm still a believer that they could go out and get somebody at least a little bit higher up. All right, so I uh, got a super chat coming in from Zornell Malone. Which 2020 pick will get cut this year? That's a good question. Um, if I'm a betting man, and if I have to pick one player, I'd say the most likely guy that ends up getting cut is actually Tanner Muse. Now, again, you can't really cut many guys because it's going to cost you some money, but Muse is a good special teams player, and I know they like him in that role, but I don't see them moving on from Ruggs. Arnett, you definitely can't move on from him because of the, the amount of money, and uh, you're not moving on from Edwards. You're not going to move on from Amit because he's probably one of the better nickel corners there, but... If I had to make a bet, I'd, I'd say Tanner Muse, but I don't really think any of them get cut. All right, y'all, so go ahead. Give me a follow on Instagram, at MitchellRen365. We're going to give some shout-outs here to the people that are still watching. we got 482 live viewers. I'm going to go to my IG right now, and if you give me a follow on Instagram, MitchellRen365, I will give you a shout-out. So shout-out to 702J, Timothy Granda, Blind Diver, Fuzzy underscore Dunlop1, underscore Sebastian Bello, Adam underscore Xavier09. I am on IG at Mitchell Ryan 365 And if you want to ask me anything going on around the Las Vegas Raiders, you can always slide in my DMs. I'll be looking over the next few days. I know I haven't been in my DMs recently, but I'm telling you this. like We've been working a lot here. I will get to them over the next few days. If you want producer Jeremy to come on here and take a shot with me, He's got to get he's got to get three more followers on Twitter. So what I'm going to do is this. I am going to put Jeremy's Twitter in the chat. Can three people follow him? That way we can come up here and take a shot. We've been working hard all day, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you guys gave my man a follow. Shout out to Ryan Castaneto, and then shout out to underscore blackass510. That's a hell of an IG name. Appreciate the follows on IG. Go give Jeremy a follow on Twitter. Come on, J.I. Beadling. Three people. Three people need to give him a follow, and then we're going to rip some shots here. I just, I need something to drink. I'm, I'm getting a little bit thirsty. Where, where are we at, Chugs? Where are we at? Uh, I, I didn't All right, hang on. So uh, go ahead and give some shout-outs. I see that you're four away, by the way. non p Fixion. Okay. Peter Stump. Nice abs. And then... <laughs> Profile pic. Uh, let's see, what is this? Uh, Blacass 51 Oh, I see what you did there. So he also gave me a follow on uh, on Instagram. Yeah, I don't think that's it. So, All right, y'all, go ahead. Give Jeremy a follow on Twitter. We said once he gets to 2,000 followers, he's going to come on here and uh, take some shots of Fireball. Or, one away. One away? Yeah. One away. Come on. One away. We can get there. We can get there. Shout out to Dominic and Jose Chavez. So you guys here in the background, producer Jeremy, give him a shout out to people that follow him on Twitter. We've uh, we've been live for man, I mean we've we're probably on like what 44, 45th hour in the last three days. Um, we're getting to that point, man. Like we're starting to get a little bit delusional. Not gonna lie to you, and I can't wait to eat. I haven't eaten. I, the only thing is I've eaten the last three days: popcorn, Doritos, had some pizza. My the only thing I've eaten today: I had two donuts for breakfast and I had some chips. 
uh, when I took a little bit of a break. Got another super chat coming in from Zornell. Which UDA, UDFA quarterback signs tomorrow? I know the Raiders won't sign a UDFA quarterback. I mean, there's no need for us because you have Nathan Peterman. He's going to be your practice QB. And then you got uh, Marcus Mariota. And then you also have, you know, um, Derek Carr, obviously. So it's not going to happen. So we hit 1,200, which means Jeremy and I, we're going to take a shot here. We, as promised, once we hit 1,200 followers on Twitter, we <laughs> <laughs> Drew Valenzuela. <laughs> He's so excited right now. I almost wish that we had. So we used to have a camera at Chat Sports called Producer Cam, where you could see what the producers are doing. And uh, he was just like full on Rocky, just winning like his last bout, just like running down. He's just super hype. So Jeremy, come on up here. Let's take a shot. Jeremy's gonna put us full screen. Okay, I like it. What do you want, Fireball or vodka? Vodka. Okay, I got gotcha. you. It's ballsy. There you go. That's all you. So, again, guys, vodka, not for me. I mean, it's fresh. <laughs> I bought it. I just bought it. So, I'm not a Grey Goose guy, but here's the thing. Like, we have so many of these big bottles laying around, and they're hard to be able to put around the office. So, I was like, what's the smallest bottle of vodka I can find? And that was it. So, not a sponsor, but it's rough stuff. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I owe you one. This is soft. It's dry fit. Oh, what? It's Autumn Abyss? Autumn Abyss. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is a soft t-shirt. I'm telling you, it's dry fit. It's, it's by far the most comfortable Raider shirts on the market right now. Cheers, man. Cheers to Autumn Abyss. Cheers to Raider Nation. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, y'all. So, I don't know if we're, we're – we're, the Washington pick is in. We are so close to Mr. of Irrelevant. So, what I want you to do right now is go down in the comments section and let me know – who is going to be Mr. Irrelevant? Because Dax Milan, I have no idea how to pronounce it. He a wide receiver from BYU. Milani, he just went to the Washington football team, which means the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They are on the clock. The final pick of the 2021 NFL Draft. Yo, I am so excited right now. Come on. Come on, Tampa Bay. Make the pick already. Oh, man. So who's the best available left here on the board? Let me know who Mr. Irrelevant is going to be. If anybody guesses it right, and I mean this, if anybody guesses Mr. Irrelevant right, I'm going to take a shot. So if everybody right now goes down in the live chat, start start just throwing some names in. Start throwing some names in. The Buccaneers pick is already in. So if you guys get it right, I am going to take a shot. Who is the final pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, Mr. Irrelevant? I'm going to let all the votes come in here before I see the pick. So if you get the votes in and you get it right, then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to rip a shot. So I don't see it yet. So the fact that I don't see it yet, I see a Dave and Moore. I got a Dylan in there. I don't know who Davis Cheeks is. I think that's a troll job because <laughs> I don't even see that name. We got Dylan Moses, David Moore. Continue to get these votes in here. No, that ain't it. Uh, Kylan Hill, Drake Jackson. Get your votes in. Who is going to be the final pick here in the 2021 NFL Draft? If anybody guesses it correctly, I will go ahead and I will take a shot of Fireball. I'm trying to load my computer, but at this point, man, it's just it ain't it ain't working. Um, so I have the pick, and I'm looking if anybody has it correct right now. I don't see anybody that got it. So. The final pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, Mr. Irrelevant, Grant Stewart. I don't even know who Grant Stewart is. So I appreciate everyone that watched the Raiders Report and watched Chat Sports. If you could, if you want to know everything that's going on with the Las Vegas Raiders, then please go ahead and subscribe. Hit that big red button down below. The next time we're going to be live is on Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. If you have any more questions, if you want to know anything else going on, you can always hit me up on Instagram. I'm at MitchellRents365. I will be back tomorrow for uh, keeping track of all the UDFAs that the Raiders end up signing. And also, Davis Cheek is a real QB, so uh, shout out to you on uh, on that one. I didn't think that was a real one. So, Davis Cheek's right there, but... <laughs> I don't want to, so we used to in baseball, we say that guy's cheeks, which always meant like he wasn't very good. But that was the final pick. 
I'm going to be back tomorrow doing some UDFA trackers. I don't know if we're going to go live, but I will keep you guys updated. To make sure you don't miss anything going on around the Las Vegas Raiders the entire offseason, hit that big red button that says subscribe. I love you all. It's been a hell of a ride here from the Raiders Report. From me and from the rest of the chat sports team, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And uh, 